walking. Hi and welcome to PJ Maybe's Let's Talk Geeky with Windology, Darren Who and Jim the Viking. We should maybe have a couple others joining us later on. So hi guys. Hello. Hi, Hello PJ. everyone. Good evening. So a fun week for me. I had a busy week family visiting, so my I was sitting with my headphones on, so I my head was pounding because of the amount of you I was doing. I was sitting with my headphones on going, ah! It's, I'm not a fun one when I've got my headphones in because I can't hear anybody shouting at me, which is unfortunate because my wife shouts at me all the time because it's too loud. You're speaking too loud because when I've got my headphones in, course, I shout. Yeah. <laughs> you and everybody else. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else. Yes, uh -huh. so what have what you guys been up to this week? Nothing too exciting. Uh, long hours at work, but finally it's Saturday. We're here again. Yeah, and that's the main thing. We're here again, which yeah. I must admit, I enjoy my Saturdays because, as my wife says, it's the first time I get to talk a load of rubbish to people who actually don't think it's rubbish. That's right. <laughs> so I'm okay with that. She? Likewise. Likewise. Uh, so... But it's good that the fact is my wife actually now she says good I don't need to listen to you, but that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually just checking it setting up my systems just to make sure everything's actually viewing and it is actually live. I like to check that just to make sure. That's always so, a good one. Yep. So, what have we all been watching this week? Anyone? Um, well. Me and Darren have been watching uh, Classic Twilight Zone again. We're going back oh. through. Mm. We'd started it and then dumped, jumped out of that, dipped into original Trek, finished the original Trek, and now we've gone back to the classic, to finish the classic um, Twilight Zone. Oh, super. Yeah, we've oh, yeah, yeah. got a complete Blu-ray set of the classic episodes, remastered, etc. cetera. Oh, and it's been, it's been great rediscovering them because I was – I yep, it's, you're, watching you're watching going quiet, and then so you are every so often you're going very quiet. Yeah, it sounds like the mic's actually it's not got a full connection. Yeah, it's, there we are. Uh, yep, I can't, I can't hear anybody else. Yeah. Nope, that didn't work at all. No, it didn't work. Nope. Right. I'll let when I'll let when take over then while I uh, try and reverse the polarity here. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. Yes. No, yeah. <laughs> Don't cross the streams. I'll try not to. Yep. And don't think of the state park marshmallow. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So Yay. Twilight Zone. I've not seen the original Twilight Zone for years. I must admit. See the occasional one here and there when I managed to get come across it somewhere on YouTube yeah. or, but it's very rare that I get a you hold of an original one. Yeah, what we've noticed about it is it just aged so well. They still hold up every yeah. story. Um, it just, they're, they're just amazing. And what's really trippy as well is they have the original ad breaks not the oh, ad breaks themselves, but they have like the little um, ident things where they'll have like a little mini advert and then they show Rod Serling introducing the following week's episode at the end of the one you've just watched as it would have gone out. I so do. It's cool. It's definitely really cool to see. Excellent. And the see, that reminds me of the, oh, what was that I was watching? Sapphire and Steel. Mm. I was watching a couple of episodes of that two, three weeks ago. And to me, it's the same idea. That holds up very well. There's one or two. It's a wee bit clunky. But that's mm. all to do with the, when they try and do the special effects or anything like that. But I think the stories in that hold up very well. Because they yeah, can they still, after all this time, they can still be spooky. I suppose mm -hmm. it's like the William Shatner um, terror at is it 20,000 feet? 20,000 feet, I believe. Yeah. yeah. 
and I loved that one. I've seen the remake of it. Wasn't as keen on it. It no. was a whole key story because they did the, all the the better animation, the CGI, but it just didn't have that William Shatner overacting type oh, thing. No, it's nothing like Bill Shatner. Did you know he is in a second Twilight Zone episode? Yes, there was two. It was um, I'm trying to even remember the other one because I knew he wasn't two. He was in that one, and it was an earlier one. It wasn't after that one. It was, it was one before that. It was before he was as well known. Yeah, was he a lawyer or something in it? Um, no, he, he was in a he was in like a little diner, and there was one of these fortune telling machines. Yes, that's right. Uh, it's yeah. basically, uh -huh, I remember it now, and it was the um, whatever happened in that the fortune. Actually happened to him. Happened, yeah. You know, uh, I, rem I vaguely remember that. No, seen that one since it first aired. Well, first I saw it in the UK. Yeah. When I say first aired, I'm not that old. But uh, when it first aired in the UK, because obviously we got a lot of repeats, uh, something like 15, 20 years later. <laughs> yeah. When the channel started actually coming in, they wanted content. But yeah, I remember seeing it, but it was so long ago. Whereas the, the one at 20,000 feet, I've seen two or three times over the years. Oh, am I getting an echo? Me? Sorry, that was me. I'm just pausing this now because I just wanted to have the chat open. Yeah, I do that. I have the chat and I forget you actually sometimes mute. <laughs> When I'm especially when I'm on the, the father stream or I'm on another one because you can't chat. I can chat in StreamYard, but nobody else can. So you have to have another window open and see. Sometimes it's a case of you forgetting it's a and it seems yeah. out of sync. It's a, yeah. It's that. You think they would allow anybody that's in it would be able to chat in StreamYard? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wish I they would do that, that cause especially people who are in the in the actual panel to be able to interact in the chat within StreamYard. Yes, uh -huh. it would be a lot better because there is that aspect of it. Like when I'm in the father's stream, I literally have to either open my iPad and do it from there, which is a pest, mm. um, or open another window to do it. And it's I, don't, I, I prefer, like with me hosting it, I can chat straight away, but other people, it's just a, something you think they would actually add to it. They do have StreamYard um, town hall um, lives where you can actually um, come on and actually discuss with them, you know, what your issues are and ask them questions and things or just put it in the chat. So, yeah, that, those are worthwhile. Oh, definitely, especially considering I'm actually paying for it now, so it's not a free one I'm using. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, it's on the StreamYard YouTube channel and it's called Town Hall. Oh, definitely need to check into that. Yeah. So I've got tomorrow because I'm not doing anything tomorrow. I'm getting to relax and just watch a couple of the movies. Sounds I have like got plans time. for a couple of movies to watch before I start my Red Dwarf final book at me and Sadako's doing Wednesday. And here he comes. Hey, Sadako. We're just actually hey, just you, hey. and you Hello. <laughs> Good evening. Hi, yeah. So I was just saying that um, before I start my oh. last human. For Wednesday right. stream, I've got a couple of movies I want to watch, so <laughs> that's tomorrow's viewing for tomorrow. So, oh, did you work? You didn't catch the end of our um, backwards review, did you? Or did you? Who me? Or when when Dolly done? Um, I don't think I've caught the end of it. All oh, right. Yeah, as we found out that the books and the audibles, even though. The, they're out there, they're completely different aspects of it, the bit different ends. So the Audible Books doesn't have the Gunman and Apocalypse at, bit in it, and the end of the story is slightly different. Interesting. So we, we checked into it, and The Last Human is the similar idea, so we're going to have to discuss the difference between the book and the Audible, because I can't find my books. I think I gave them to my nephew, and I need to get them back. Uh, Sorry, loaned them to my nephew. I've mm -hmm. probably said here, I've got fancy reading these books, and I've not actually put a stipulation that I want them back because <laughs> I had them in Audible. So I thought, nah, probably I've just said here, I've got them in Audible, you have these, but I'll just tell them, no, I meant loaned, I want them back. So I need to check that out. <laughs> but well, it should be interesting. I want to see the difference between the Audible and the actual physical book. Right. 
So I will. And that's what we're going to discuss. Wednesday, we're on our last Red Dwarf on Wednesday. That's the 13th season, four books. Yep. So, I was one of, and I was the one who suggested that we do the books, wasn't I? Yes, and I'm, I must admit, the books have been interesting because it'd been years since the last time I'd actually read them. Mm-hmm. It's It feels new. Like Last Humans, I've read it once, and that was when I first got it. So I remember wee bits of it, but it's very small bits. I know it's about the Gelfs and stuff, but I can't remember a lot of the story. So it'll be all new again. Red Dwarf, new stuff. Yay! So I'm looking forward to that. And that'll be fun because the backwards, I'd watched um, the, the TV show, obviously, and I'd read the book a couple of times over the years. So I had a good idea about the story. However... Last Human is going to be almost fresh for me, so I'm so mm. looking forward to that. Yeah. I have to say, yeah. um, I met uh, Rob Grant and he did a, um, a, li- a live reading of um, the first few chapters of Backwards at uh, Waterstones when I was back in 1996. I was 14. Yeah, so I, that, that's what I was saying. Um, the only one I've actually met that did that was Terry Pratchett. Oh, uh, when, wonderful. When, Wendell, have you yeah. met any, anyone from Red Dwarf? No, no. I never really got drawn in so much to Red Dwarf until I came over here, even though it did used to air. I'm pretty sure oh. it used to air, but at really oddball times in the oh, States. What, what was your first episode? Do you remember? Oh, my God. I can't really remember. Other I than could... watching it here, yeah. the very first episode. Mm-hmm. See, I can remember my first episode, and it was literally the very first episode, the end, because I mine... had literally been watching it from the beginning. So, yeah, it's it's weird. I, I've got like snippets of memories of seeing bits of it in the states, but nothing that I would say like an entire episode. For me, it was um, justice. I remember that because I remember list of waking up with the big space mumps. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I I remember watching it. It's only because I would used to be I used to any new sci-fi stuff that was coming up. I always used to sit and watch it. Yeah. And we, at we, six o'clock on um, midweek, um, they were always on. It was always the stuff. So I got the TV from after dinner till my mum's program started at half past seven. So I got the hour and a half of watching whatever I wanted to watch. Well, and then it was usually it? nine o'clock after that. I got half an hour before my dad's program started to watch because his was all the historical stuff, and it usually started about 10 o'clock. So I got usually between nine and 10, but it was only usually something on at nine o'clock to half nine, and it up was Red Dwarf. I remember us watching Demon, the episode Demons and Angels with my dad, and um, like every single moment was like, oh, he's going to turn this off. He's going to, because he was like, he was grumpy about having it on anyway and was watching it. It was like, so you had the bit with the maggots and the strawberry. You had um, the bit with the torturing Lister. And yes. I was like, is it, he's going to turn this off at some point. He's like, yeah, no. the, the, um, <laughs> I'm going to whip you for a sleep and then I'm going to have you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can't imagine watching that with my mum or dad. I must admit, when I was a, I was a lot younger. Yeah. You got away with a PG on video for some reason. I know. <laughs> but then again, it was basically, I suppose, harmless fun. It was basically, it wasn't over-the-top gratuitous. It was just silly fun, although it was, yes, if you knew what it was, it can be. But same again, a lot of the times it was a case of kids wouldn't understand it. We'd just see them dressed silly. Yeah. And I think they get away with it for that. But I'm so looking forward to Last Human Wednesday because that's the Red Dwarf and then I'm going to do a, a Judge Dread one and I'm going oh. to invite the rabbi because the rabbi says he would do a Judge Dread one with us. So Oh, that would be fantastic. Uh-huh. So, yeah, that should be fun because he's a big Dread fan as well. Cool. So, yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Well, as you can imagine, this week I caught Tomorrow's War because I did a review of it and... I watched it twice. The first time I watched it, I just watched it to see what it was like. And I thought, entertaining, until I started thinking about it. And then when I rewatched <laughs> it, I actually was thinking about it. And I'm sitting there thinking, huh? Ah, 
that makes it's, sense. It's definitely <laughs> not a film for the, the, the people that can think. Yes. No, no, no. It's good, it's, solid action. It it is, solid. Right. It, see if you just want it, something in the background, you don't, need, you don't want to actually think about it. So if you're doing something else and you've just got something to watch in the background, it's great can I, because can you ask, can just catch that. Can I just ask, did Russell D. Davis write it or something? <laughs> 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 oh, flash, knee bang. That's what it is. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, it's basically watching it. There's good set piece stuff in there, and there's good action, good CGI. The the creatures are, look great and stuff like that. The battles look great. But once you start thinking about the actual cohesive story, you realize there isn't one. No. There isn't one. And effectively, they're turning around as saying, We know there's not one, but just forget about it because we're not going to tell you. Yeah. And I still say, that if you don't see it as time travel, it works a lot better. Yeah. If you see it as dimension jump, it works better because they've got the two timelines working in unison. Mm. And then that way, if they're taking the people, they're taking people who died before the their time line is interfered, which you could say, well, is that means they're not going to meet themselves, which means it's not going to cause any paradox. Of maybe the two people meet themselves, you know some of these dimension jumps. If two people meet themselves, they touch and they blow uh, because of the paradox of the two people occupying the same space. But so that's the way I look at it. Head can and take it as a dimension which is thirty years ahead rather than a time jump, and I think it works a lot better. So you don't need to think; it, it makes a bit more sense. It doesn't make a lot more sense, but it does make a bit more sense. Is a dimension jump rather than a time jump, but so in that way, the the other dimensions screwed anyway because they're already beat. <laughs> I was um I was going to watch uh, Black Widow this week, but never got around to it. Uh, just um I might have to put it off another week or two. Yeah, well, um, Big T Moore has suggested that I watch the um, boss level. I know Jim's watched that and he says it's actually a good movie, so I'm going to give that a go. Uh, probably Thursday. I'll watch it Thursday and then I'll review it Friday and get the review uploaded for the weekend. But I'll see because I've never even heard of that one. So, and it's on Amazon. I've got an Amazon subscription, so it's perfect. So, um, give that a go. how's my mic coming through? Oh, it's fine. I can, no, no problems at all. I, I can hear myself echoing a bit. No, anybody else getting an echo from Sadako? Jim? Jim, you getting an echo from Sadako? Are you hearing him okay? Sadako's okay. I think Darren is the one that had a little bit of um, like yeah. line fuss. Yeah, but um, okay, fair enough. Okay. Yeah, so you, if you're getting echo, you're getting echo at your side, so it's definitely not coming through. All right. And there's uh, Darren going. He's obviously tried to reverse the polarity, and it's actually skipped. <laughs> He's bounced. <laughs> so that was my viewing this week. I've not watched a lot because I had family visiting, so I was not on. I even I'm still trying to catch up with Friday Night Tights because obviously I'm so far behind this week on my viewing. So. Sorry, 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 sorry. No problem. It's just I was getting the echo. The, um, but so I'm behind with my viewing. Normally I've watched a few bits and pieces here and there but I've not had a chance so the only thing I really got to watch which was Tomorrow's War which I had watched it the week before and I thought it was actually a good entertaining movie without thought and then I re-watched it with the view of sitting down and review it and that's when I realised <laughs> that makes no sense at all but it is, I suppose it's a typical um, action movie don't think about it and then it all just be entertaining so so I was actually quite sparse in my viewing and stuff like that mm. what about yourself Jim what have you been watching it was the same here from my side it was a long week uh, long hours at work but I did manage to catch boss level um, you may already have seen the trailer or seen or heard something about this I will try to not spoil no, I've not even heard about it. I've not even heard the name of it. That's why I'm saying it should be fun because I've not heard any reviews, nothing. So it should be 
going into it. I'm going. I'm going into it um, fresh, as it were. But I'm okay with spoilers because it's not a review you're giving. Well, yeah. no, exactly. Uh, exactly. I'll, I'll try and keep some of the part secret, but it is a Groundhog uh, Day kind of film. The uh, yeah. poor guy is stuck in a time loop. Uh-huh. And I'm trying to remember, it's is it 6.47 every single day he dies. Mm-hmm. And it starts all over again. And he's a special forces agent, so he's fit. He He's the action type. He's... He knows how to try and defend himself, but he never gets past that particular minute in the day, and then it just restarts. But we'll give this, without spoiling anything, out of all the time loop, stuck in time loop films that I've seen, this hero does the best creative use of the time he has available. So it's slightly better than the uh, Tom Cruise one? Much better. I, I do like, uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow, edge. Uh, the edge, yeah. of edge, edge of Tomorrow. Edge of Tomorrow, yeah. Uh, live, die, uh, live, Die, Repeat or something like that. It was called a de- different, two different names. Yeah, I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that is a really good time loop film. This it's one, in my movie, mind, is much one. better. I don't like the, Tom Cruise, but it was a good action movie. Yeah, and it was the boss level movie. is definitely an action movie. And it's it's definitely yeah well, I would say it's it, it it's ranking at uh, eighteen and above is definitely something it should be or is it fifteen it's fifteen but uh, there's some gory stuff going on in there I'm okay with gory but I'm so looking forward to it and I'm glad um, Big T Moore actually recommended it it just because I had never even heard of it I thought. That's good because I've not got any preconceptions of it. Because obviously, I'd heard um, some people had talked about the Tomorrow War and things like Friday Night Tights and other streams. So I'd heard bits and pieces about it. So I, had, I knew roughly what to expect. But I went in and it basically was very level like that. But this one I hadn't even heard of. So I thought that is perfect because I've got no preconceptions. And Big T Moore recommended it. I thought, perfect. Somebody will put in with preconceptions of it, so perfect. Yep. I, I just went in as blind as you did. It was like, it looks like a funny name. It's got Mel Gibson in it. So, <laughs> could, could be a little bit quirky, could be a little bit of humor. And it does have that, even though Mel Gibson is very much in the background. There's. He's a name to the film. He is not the biggest thing in the yeah. film. Which is unusual for Mel Gibson. <laughs> he's usually larger than life. When yes, he's in a uh, film. Yeah, definitely. But I, I will say I'm not disappointed by the acting or the capability of lifting the film from any of the actors in it. Good. I'm so looking forward to it, definitely. And when you you and Darren had watched the Twilight Zone, I'm so jealous because I've missed oh, it for a long time. It's so worth it to go back through those. They're just amazing. Yeah, definitely. So, Sadako, you've been watching anything this week? Um, I've been watching season three of Line of Duty, which I know you're not a fan of, but I know. Yeah, I uh, um, you've been doing it with uh, you've been watching uh, Daniel's channel with these reviews of it. I have, and he kind of, um, him and Charlotte's reviews got me interested in the show, and now I'm basically, I, I've skipped ahead um, a whole season. <laughs> See, my wife liked it. She said she really enjoyed it, so she did. Yeah. And I was telling her that um, Darren had, uh, uh, Daniel had been reviewing it, and she told me, check it out, because you might like it. And I says, but it's new stuff. She says, I know you're a money face, I'll get. Wait, wait, but- wait. Okay. Again, like you like how I spend your grave. Yes, but, but that is basically—it's just an old sla- It's an old slasher movie, and I know what the premise of that thing is. It's right. not the any violence or anything like that. It puts me off. It's just the genres. Just no matter a genre, I don't want. To see, I don't care about corrupt cops. As soon as I see a corrupt cop, I don't care how good they might try and turn out to be. I just think jail them all. Don't care, and that's the problem. <laughs> These of movie, uh, TV shows and stuff like that, I lose interest as soon as somebody looks as if they're corrupt. 
I just don't care about the character, so I don't pay attention to what's happening to that character. It's that that's it's just one of those wee quirks I've got. So if I go into a movie which is a slasher movie, it's that I'm looking at. I'm not looking at the other parts of it. So there is where I'm looking at is typical genre. I'm very particular with that. I can watch a western where the sheriff is corrupt because it's the western aspect I like. Mm-hmm. But if I'm looking at a cop show, and as soon as one of the cops is corrupt, I don't care enough about it to actually be interested in his or her backstory. I just mm-hmm. think. Every time I see them, should be in a prison, should be in prison, should be sacked, should be... And that's... I I just basically... My head just goes, no, 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 no. And that's the problem I've got with these type Ah, of programs. Yeah, but the thing about Line of Duty is about the meticulous process of getting them in jail. Like, it it shows what a laborious presence it is. Because that's the entire point of the show. It's not just just that there's corrupt crops. It's about this organisation that deals in... Weeding out corruption. We're dealing people. with the corrupt cops, yeah. No, yeah. see, they should have the SGS. Somebody just goes in and says, you, jail. End of story. Judge Dredd. Clunk. Jail. <laughs> and that's the problem. It's just because I, I, the, the interest in how they're trying to get it, how they're trying to weed out of it and stuff like that, I just don't care about the story. All I just want to... It's like watching Breaking Bad. People told me Breaking Bad, watch that, it's really good. See, by the end of it, I just thought that was five seasons completely not have wasted my life never get it back because see every single character, I wanted them all to die and I didn't care enough about their story to actually feel good or bad or indifferent about them. Mm-hmm. Didn't care. All I thought was, why am I watching this junk? And I know a lot of people really liked it, but in my head, I just could not get around to actually even any single one of the characters uh, um sympathetic or anything about them I just was quite happy when they died to me I was smiling because yes they're out of it now and I, yeah, no, I, I don't I, think I, I got I, past uh, what was it episode 5 first season of it but the problem yeah. is it's the typical people were saying it gets better it gets better it gets better and it never did and I'm sitting there thinking when does it get better but typical it was just it was that mindset that somebody was telling us try it keep going it gets better it didn't Whereas other people have said to me things like, I've watched The Almighty Johnson, the one I reviewed the other week. The other week. First four season, episodes, I could not get into it. They said, stick to episode five. If you don't like it by episode five, just leave it. As soon as I got to episode five and Thor turned up, I was already hooked because I'd gone that extra episode or two by where I'd normally go. And it got me. So that, I'm okay. But when somebody's telling me, it gets better. And then it looks as if it's going to be about this big plane crash. And then that comes to nothing. You're sitting there thinking, really? And then they say, I bet it gets better. Now, when people actually tell me that, I just say, bugger it. If I don't like it from the first or second or third episode, I ain't going to watch it because I don't trust their, their recommendations the, anymore. The, the thing is, even with those that have a really slow start, you get the feeling that they, they, they are starting to build something. Mm-hmm. There is something to start hooking into, but if by f- episode five you have no interest in, in any of the characters, you have no interest in the story they're trying to tell, no interest in the setting, Yeah, it will not get better. Yeah, I'm, I'm usually the same at episode three because the first episode is usually introducing the characters. Second episode is introducing the premise of the show and the third episode is usually in, in mixing the two of them together and by that time if they've not got the story act in place I usually go nah, it's not going to work for me I did that for Almighty Johnson's one of my friends who she says stick with it until and then I thought alright then because she's a big Red Dwarf fan, she's a big Classic Doctor Who fan she's other, a lot of the stuff she watches I watch so I thought oh give it a go. As soon as I got to episode five with Thor, I could not put the the box set down. I just wanted to watch the lot. So that's when I went out and bought the box set. And yes, it was fantastic. So, and it, it hooked me. But it's one of those very rare that I go by the third episode. You look at Game of Thrones. I didn't even get by the third episode of that because it was boring to me. Because it was too dark, nihilistic. I just want. I didn't care. As soon as they started actually killing off the characters, I thought, "What's the point in watching this? Any character you like, they could kill them off. I don't care." So I switched it off. 
never mm. watched an episode after that. He, he, I know the TV show is not the, as the books are, but most um, of like that. I'm, I'm. Yeah, but it, it is. Game of Thrones is basically a game of chess. Yes. Sooner or later, you will be knocked out, and that's the 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 whole premise behind it. Because you know, whilst it do a really good job of baking in all layers of societies, from the poor, from the frontline soldiers, uh, the, the handmaidens, everybody behind the scenes, and so to speak. It's still more about the the really big, um, like the kings, the princes, yeah. the princesses, it and who is killing who and that. who's backstabbing whom. Yeah, but it was just one of those ones. I just thought too nihilistic for me. I, if I couldn't get interested in a character because they could kill him off the next week, what's the point? So I just basically went, nope, never watched an episode after that. And after um, hearing the reviews of season eight, I thought. <laughs> Goodness for that. <laughs> but then again, I'm I'm a big Wheel of Time fan and I'm not looking forward to Amazon's Wheel of Time. And the thing is, they don't need to mess with it because Wheel of Time is a feminist movie because the movers and shakers behind all the thrones are the Aesidae who are all female because all the male Aesidae were driven crazy and died and they're basically they go crazy if they touch the power so they put one power is split into two the male side and the female side there was a of the back of the books is the fit in a fight with the dark one the dark one tainted the male side which any male user touches it it drives them crazy and then they cause a lot of havoc so the female SDI make sure the they hunt down any men who touch it. And what they call it gentling them, which means it cuts them off from the power. So they can't do that. And so it's all, they're behind all the thrones. So it's a very feminist um, setup. And it's all about three farm boys. One of them, uh, Rand, basically he... Is the dragon the 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 one who touches the source? Who is the prop size one? Then you've got Perrin, who's how do you class this? But he's a blacksmith, and it's all about him and his wolf dreams and uh, his story as well. And it, and then you've got Matt, who's a bit of a rogue, and his he's they're the ones that build up the armies to help. So, but so there's it's the they're the three main characters, but there's the females around them who are guiding them, who are the the power behind the thrones. So it's very it's a very matriarchal society, and it's the fact is I can imagine Amazon taking that and still screwing it over because they're trying to put they'll put other stuff in it. And yeah, that's, that's the worry, yeah. isn't it? Because, yeah. you know, the original material yeah. is written that way, and that's great. That's fine. That's the original uh -huh. material. But they, as you say, you it's just always worrying, you know. Yes. So I love the books and just the idea that they're going to mess with it and they're going to change it. But then again, Robert Jordan passed away before he finished the series, and Brandon Sanderson got the notes from Robert Jordan and his wife who is his editor because he was chosen to finish it but I don't like Brandon's uh, style and I think because he was meant to finish it in a single book and he split it into three and then there was things added in that had never been mentioned before and I'm sitting there thinking why why not just finish the story instead of bulking it out more before he finished the story. So I just, the end of it was a fizzle for me. But I think... I, I, I don't think I Amazon know. will ever reach that far in the TV show that I don't no, think they will get past it. Well, if they're lucky, they might get through to the second book. No, see, I think if they get do the first three books, it will be a perfect length because you can finish it on the third book. You can go to the fifth book, but I would finish it on the third book. The third book, to me, is a natural finish. It just seemed to be a case of it was a trilogy, and because it was so successful, it extended it. So the end in the book 
was sort of just the start because it was, although it was an end of the Trolloc Wars, it was the start of his climb to success to fight the Dark One. So it was almost that type of step. And I think it's looked as like to me, it looked as if it was a three book, but because it was so successful and people wanted more, he went and extend, extended it. So I think the first three books would be perfect. But I, 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 th I think they would too. Um, yeah. But I don't think it, it will be Amazon just throwing money at it to try yes. and get second season or second book story get baked in yes. there and then try to reach the third. But I do not think with such a good story that it is, and like you described, it is very much feminist. It's female uh -huh. empowerment. Um, it has all of those. It has good dynamics between tons of characters. And I just saw on the IMDb page that yeah. it's coming in November. But yeah. there's also the trivia. There is 2,782 named characters in the Wheel of Time. Yeah. That's how big it is. Yes. And basically every area has got its own culture. Uh, it's got its own backstory. Uh, you understand it when you go to a new city. It basically the descriptions are there. There's characters in that city. You they pop up here and there and stuff like that. And I think there's even four of my favourite characters, favourite female characters. I, I uh, even Randall Thor, who's the main character, the dragon. I liked him, but my favourite character was Perrin Albara, the blacksmith, the wolf brother. Well, um, it is because wolf, yes. <laughs> yes, the wolf brother, but even Matt, Matt Cotton was good. The Band of the Red Hand was fantastic storyline for him. But the four female characters, my four favourite, I think they're going to destroy them. You've got Moiraine Sedai, who is the one who... Guides and protects, protects Rand because she finds him with her warder, who is um, Landman Dragon. Landman Dragon. That was one of my character names in one of my books was um, Pieter Alflor, and it was because the Al was meant to mean Lord. So you've got Lan uh, Mal, Al Drag, Mal Dragon, and it's basically it's all to do with the old tongue, and then you've got. Nynaeve is one of the best characters in the book. I love Nynaeve, and I think they're going to mess her up because they're going to actually make her super all-powerful, do everything great. She was one of the most powerful of the Aes Sedai, but she couldn't control it. And it was all about her struggle to learn to control it because she was so powerful. I think they're just going to have her working, no problem. Here you go, so, and she can do everything. Yeah, so you think they're going to remove the... The foibles, the yes, the, 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 so. the, yeah, those little nuances of the character that makes them interesting yes. and just, yeah, make her uh, like perfect. Yes, and even Maureen, she was the guide and the to help Rand, but she had her own reasons behind it. So some of the things she did, you're sitting there thinking, that wasn't very nice, but it was a case of she had her reasons, and I think they're going to take that those foibles away as well. It's all a case of if you're not listening to her, you're bad. Whereas sometimes you didn't want to listen to her because you knew it wasn't for the reasons you thought it was. The Ace of Die had the three um they take the, the, the oath rod and they swear on it three things. One, they'll never turn to the, the dark side. Two, they will never lie and the third one, I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But they, they it is do no harm with do humanity. no harm with using the power. That's what it was. But the one do they're not allowed to say a word that is a lie. But the truth you hear is not necessarily the truth you think it is. So they use a lot of wording that mm. means multiple things. You can hear what you think you're hearing, but they're meaning something else. But they're not lying, and so that. Yeah, and how would they translate that subtlety? Yes, and I think they'll take that subtlety right out because you'll find that they'll lie and they'll say things and say, oh, but I meant that, but you didn't say it. It's all to do with the wording they use. They use wordings that 
can be a wee bit ambiguous. But if you just listen to the words, it says this, but it could also mean that. And I think they're going to they're going to lose all that because they don't know how to write that subtle language. And well, I, think I also, also think to... it's going to be a complete wash or miss from yes. whoever it is that is directing this. It's Naive, um, Moraine, uh, well, yeah, even Moraine, all uh -huh. of the ladies start at an early level and they become stronger, they become well, better, they overcome. Moraine is basically, she's at her peak of her power at this yeah, point. Yeah, but she does get a little bit better as it goes along. Does. She it's, doesn't it's stay It's because she's learning things when she's she comes across something and it's um, Egwene who helps teach her, although she is teaching Egwene but because Egwene has got powers in the background that she, no, uh, had been lost in time, she finds these and it, she teaches Moiraine how to use them and because these things have been lost in the back, Moiraine gets them and which helps her improve, but, it's, but she's already at the peak of her powers, she just doesn't know certain things. So uh, Egwene trips over things and learns things that should have been lost in the Age of Legends. She teaches Moiraine them, and Moiraine gets better because of that. But she has it. But so that's three of the main characters that I love: Moiraine, Nynaeve, and Egwene. The fourth one is Verin Sedai. Verin turns out to be evil. She's one of the Black Aja. She's oh. the, the archers are, are split into seven. I Basically, think. they're the colors: blue, the color. green, so, red, yeah. brown, so, and they all reference different things. So, like the white Aja stands against the dark. Basically, they are they're the logical ones. The green Aja are the fighters, the ones who go and fight with the the the, the troops against the dark one. The blue Aja are the healers and stuff like that. The yellow archer, uh, the brown archer is are the the scholars, the ones that take all the uh, do all the research and knowledge, and it's that type of thing. But the the thing is, not Verin wanted to know all, enough about the wanted to the black archer are the secret archer because they're not meant to be there. So the black archer are the evil ones, the ones who have turned against the light. Now I wonder so, how they'll spin that. Yes, that's a bit but, of a worry. Yeah, but the Verin turns around to be Black Aja. But the reason she turned to be Black Aja is because she wanted to research it. So her motives were good. She deliberately joined the Black Aja so she could learn it. And the Black Aja are not allowed, and uh, basically, as unless it's there and they're dying, they're not allowed to reveal that they're black. So what Verin does at the very near the end is she poisons herself. So she can report back everything she's learned about the Black Adger. Good. Lord. And so even though she was evil, she did it for for research purposes because she was brown Adger. And I I loved Verin from the very beginning, but I knew there was something weird about her character. There had to be, and it turned around and I, it shocked me at the time. And I thought, oh, but the fact is she, the reason behind turning to the dark. I thought, wow. And now I'm thinking. How are they going to do that in the, the TV show? Mm. There's no way you they'll have her being technically evil because she still has to do things that would be against um, uh, morals because she's in the Black Asia. However, are they going to do it like the um, people don't understand what you went through, WandaVision type thing, and actually just justify mm. what she did? She didn't justify it herself. She just basically described, this is why I did it. She doesn't say I was really good, but instead of being bad and stuff like that, she just, just she didn't justify what she did. She just says, this is why I did it. And it was to get that information. And I thought her story was fantastic. But there's the four female characters in main four for me. And I think they're going to screw them over. They're going to have the Ace Sedai lie on screen. And then they're going to sort of try and trip up and say, I bet they meant this. It's not what they meant. It's what they say is meant to count. Because if they say, we will help you how we can, 
and you think, oh, good, they're going to help me. But they literally, they might help you by say, um, saying to the other king, please don't attack them. I were going to attack them. They say, well, well, we help what we can. So it's the wording they used is the thing it's going to be. It. So if they turn around and say, yes, we're going to help you, then they do nothing. Then effectively they lied. And that's how I think Amazon is going to fail because whoever's going to write it is not going to understand that. It's, it's oh, almost, oh, I think they had their fingers crossed behind their back so it didn't really count. Yeah, I think that's going to be a nuance that they, they will miss out on as well. Yeah. Uh, so if you take... Literally from the first book, you have the, uh, what is it, the White Cloaks? Yep. They're really not fond of any magic user magic. Yes. at, at all. Uh, very devout, very religious. They yeah, have their they, own goals. They, they, they believe what they do is correct. It's the right yes. thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, you have the ISD, and because of what you've been describing, almost the entire world, at least outside of the big cities, do not have good faith in uh, Aes Sedai. They don't trust them. They they don't feel comfortable around them, obviously yeah. because myths about magic, but because they never, to to to, to the peasants, it, it isn't, we will never lie. The peasants always see them as they never keep their word, therefore they yes. do lie. As, as in the truth you hear, it. that's why it's a saying in, in the land is the truth you hear is not always the truth they said. And that's is that's an ongoing theme. That yes, they'll look up to them because they're obviously powerful magic users, but they don't trust them because if they say something, you have to pick through what they said with a fine tooth comb to see what they meant, because what you hear and what they say are two different things. And it's that nuance I think they're going to lose. But yeah, mm. and the the white cloaks, even though technically. If you're uh, in the side of the Ace of Die, the White Cloaks will hate you. They're not seen as pure evil either. <laughs> it's basically it's just one of those things. They've all got the, th the reasons for do being or doing what they do. And it's amazing. The, the, uh, the Aeol are fantastic in the books and they don't turn up until a wee bit later on. But I can't imagine... Them being well, you said they don't come in until, but well, they are mentioned in the first book. They are mentioned, yes. Uh -huh. But I don't think they meet them um, until after, what is it, the, the uh, spine of the world, the, the rich yes. of the world that is literally going out to de desolate. Yeah. Where, where they live. Yep. That's it. So basically, and that, that is after the, the third book where Rand defeats the Trolloc army. And you don't the Aiel until then. But the Aiel are so needed in the books because they are they are the, the warriors. Both male and female are treated exactly the same as warriors. So there is no difference between a male Aiel and a female Aiel. The only difference is male Aiel who have access to the power, when they're told that, they go to the waste to fight the Trollocs to the death because they know they're going to go crazy. Female Aeol who have got the power get called to be wise ones and they get trained and they have to give up their, their warrior ways and it's that's a struggle as well. So you get aspects like that and I can't see Amazon dealing with that very well. It's unfortunate but the books are fantastic and I think Amazon's going to screw it over. You see, I, I will cast the glance at it, at it when it comes out, because likely it's going to be free. It's going to be on the Amazon Prime. Yeah, I'm on Amazon, but... so I might give it a look-see, but as soon as I see something I don't like, that's it, I'm dropping it like a brick. Well, I, I will give this to um, the poster I'm seeing on IMDb. It is really not a very descriptive background or anything. It's overcast grey. But it's Moraine standing there. And um, while she is a key part of the story, the story is actually about... If, yeah. Well, if, if you take the first book, it's about the villagers from... Uh, what's it called now? Uh, not the Seven Springs. Um, it's, no, it's the Two Rivers. Two, two Rivers. So it's, it's about them more than it is anyone else, even though you get introduced to Moraine, Lan, 
Um, or was the um, uh, board called? Um, oh yeah, I can't remember his name. It's um, oh, I can't remember off the top of my head. Funnily enough. I'm trying to remember myself, um, but yeah, there, there are other side characters. Uh, it's uh, Fagin. Uh, oh, Fagin, Fagin, uh, Fagin. 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 Yeah. No, he is a as an evil character. He is good, but see if they do Moiraine and Lan, and they don't look like that. Moiraine is quite small. Lan is a a towers over her see if they have it because it's it works very well because he's a he's a soldier he is one of the greatest swordsmen out and moraine is a very powerful user yet the two of them are equal because they yeah. do different things but the, 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 that's a balance as well for that for that uh, and it's also if you have some that if you have marine almost towering over land it will not work because Lan has to do the towering because people see him as the threat, where it's Moiraine with her power, which is a bigger threat. Because even Lan can get held with her. But I think if they go down the route and don't have someone small with someone large to give that impression, I think it will just sort of twist things and it just... Mm. Uh, I, I will forgive a certain shortness in the, the male lead that will play Lan. If yeah. he's good with fighting scenes, if he gets good choreography, if he has good talent on his own already, so he can be good fight scenes because he is, yeah. as you say, master swordsman's swordsman. Yeah, and he, he could get away oh, with yeah. being a bit smaller, or whatever, but he still has to have a towering presence. And I'm trying to remember who the bard is because that's really going to annoy me now. It begins with an N or L, I should think. I think. Well, I, I remember patchwork uh, clothes. Um, yes. He, he, because his that's special that's harmonica, the, whatever yes. he had. He basically had a flute. And he basically, flute, yeah. he's got the patchwork cloak of a, a, um, a bard. But he's, well, he's a royal bard. But it's a glee man. Yes, the gleeman. That's what they call. He's yes. a gleeman. So the the patch cloak is a gleeman who is basically just a travelling entertainer, but he's actually a royal bard. And oh, see now I've, I can't even remember his name. And now you're going to make me Google it. Google it, a bard in Wheel of Time. And as soon as you say his name, I'm going to go. Hey, hey that's him. I'm trying to remember. It's terrible. It's just going to really annoy me. Tom Marilyn. Tom Marilyn. That's the one. <laughs> but, uh, Sadako, have you ever read The Wheel of Time? Uh, no, I can't say that I have. Oh, oh. See the first three books, even if you only were to read the first three, you should give them a go. It's the sword and sorcery. They're basically not denying it. But just uh, Robert Jordan's building of the world around it is really good you need to give them a try the first I, I would say it's not just the world it's the culture it's the people yes, in it it's the, customs, the world it's building is just amazing even the like the uh, the board the bordermen the the trollocs to an extent the the um, the forsaken it's just the, the, the building of the world and actually why it's in such a state. The first three books are superb. There's other books that I've I've read and I've went, mm, eh, not as good keen on that book later on because it just sort of starts and stops at the same point, but the story getting there just really is doesn't work. But there is a lot of books in the series. <coughs> and to me, the first three are the better. Yeah, <laughs> big D more. If I can't remember somebody's name, just call him Dave. <laughs> yep, or Bob. But that's a black adder one, isn't it? Bob. <laughs> so there's disaster area as well. And big T more joined us, and obviously Brady stays in there as well. 
Hi guys, thanks for all uh, joining us. We are just obviously talking Wheel of Time in the the forthcoming shit show. Um, I mean, program that might be good, might not be good. I don't know. But yeah, definitely, uh, Sadako, see if you if the first three books, they are better. They are superb. I've read the first five the most. The first two after that introduced the uh, ale and the waste and stuff like that. And... Um, the traveling folk who follow the way of the leaf. They're basically the first five book are the best. It's just, so the first half of the series is the best, but the first three books, if you stop after the third book, you'll get a good story. on those three. Okay, cool. Yeah. But that's, that's the, that's the, the each of the books are like that. So the first three or first five books are like that. So there are no wee books. And that's what, um, 814 pages. And so they're, they're not small books. And they're not even the biggest books. Some of the books, there's a book, um, Lord of Chaos, is 900 odd pages. It is the book, it's, I've got it in hardback and it's literally enormous. But... Hey Jay, when you showed the, the cover... Uh-huh. It suddenly was familiar to me. I know I've seen that cover in my travels when I've been sort of yep. perusing the books and things. The Eye I, of the World is the very first book. They are superb. And that is Lan Man, and Mandragon and um, Morin Sedai. Right, okay. And then you, obviously you can see the boy in the background. That is Randall Thor, the dragon reborn. Mm. But it's just uh, those are my favorite let's look at the state of the i've got the first five originals like that every time a new book came out i would start from the beginning as you can see dog-eared <laughs> and that's that's why my books are all dog-eared because i would read i read the first book got hooked in it then the second book came out so i've been reading them from day one then the second book came out i read the first book and the second book and then when the third it was every two years a book would come out so by the time i got to the sixth book I'd re already read each of my first five, my first books five times. Wow. Yeah, you know I mean, so it basically I reread the whole series every time a new book came out. So every two years, I would read the whole lot. It started getting when they get to book 10 and 12. <laughs> it basically had a long road to get there. But, but I it, it is one well. thing that's at least I found with it. It's even though the books are big. It's so easy to just, oh, just a few more pages, just a yes. few more pages. And my yep. parents were screaming when it was dinner time. I was like, put the dang book down. Yeah. <laughs> I was lucky at certain points because there was times when I was reading them, I was unemployed. So I was reading them until 2, 3 in the morning and then waking up at 10 with my mum going, get out your bed, you lazy so-and-so, and get out for looking for work. Yeah, hey, mum, then I go and... And then come back, and as soon as I came back, sat down in my room and just sat and read them. So I would read them like eight, ten hours a day. That's mm -hmm. I just basically it was one of those ones. As soon as you get in, it literally drags you in, and it's a case of I don't want to put about and a couple of pages, and a couple of pages, and that's all it did. The f it's and just the idea of Amazon screwing over. They've already had. There was a company that had the rights to make it, and they made a an episode to try and keep the rights but it went nowhere and it was basically about how the breaking worked and how the first book starts uh, talking about one of the the male Aesodai what happened to him and that is somewhere I'll need to dig that out because I've got a copy of it somewhere I think it's online and that might be Fun. If I can find it, ladies and gents, I will put it in the description of this video because it's something you need to actually see if you're not aware of it. And even that, that they did it in the cheap to try and keep the rights. It was like the, um, the Fantastic Four. Remember, there's that Fantastic Four movie out there that has never really been seen except that somehow it's been seen because they made the movie just to keep the rights. And the, the four actors that played the Fantastic Four thought they were actually going to be it's going to be released as this big movie, and it turned around it was done in a cheap just so they could keep the rights, saying we've made a movie so we get it. It was the same with um, Blazing Saddles, the TV show. 
they wanted to keep the rights and they had to actually, as part of Mel Brooks's um, contract, they had to create a TV show. But they created it for, I think it was something like three or four seasons, knowing they would never broadcast it, but they only did it to keep the rights. So this one is one that somebody did to keep the rights to the books to make a TV show and they never did, but this one episode's out there somewhere. I'll I can't it. picture a Blazing Saddles TV show. God, I, but you've got the Black Bar, but it's basically, there's a different, it's a different guy. It's, and um, that's what they're saying. He he thought it was going to be put out. It's only realized, he, it was only after a while he realized they're just getting paid to actually create it, although it's never going to be out there. But there is a couple of episodes. If you look at Blazing Saddles TV show, you'll see some clips and stuff like that from it. There might even be a few episodes on YouTube. It is out there. I've seen a couple of episodes, and I don't know if it's full episodes or just clips from episodes I've seen, but I recognise the people behind it. Because see, one of the guys that was in, um, it wasn't it, Alas, Smith and Jones. Um, he was in a cop show, and he plays um, the Waco Kid. He plays the um, Gene Wilder part. So he does. Can't remember if I find that I'll put that in the link as well. There is some Blazing Saddles TV show out there on YouTube. Okay. And uh, the Wheel of Time one is out there somewhere. I'll dig that out and I'll put it up somewhere. Oh, please do, yeah. Because uh, it's it is interesting to see, especially um because it is the opening scene of the very first book, and it's just to set the scene. So it's although it is done in the cheap because so, so there's only one or two characters in it the whole thing so it's not as if there's there's just in a room and they're, he's, they're doing the talk so it's done like that and it was only done just to say that well we've already started it so we keep the rights but I think they just let it slip again and they got it back mm -hmm. but fingers crossed Wheel of Time is not destroyed but That's okay. I have got no faith in it just for the simple fact is they'll not want to show any of the females being manipulative and the Ace of yes. are the master manipulator, manipulators Indeed. because they use language because they can't use the power, they can't use lies, so they have to use language and to manipulate people into doing what they wish. Yeah, so and I'm not surprised that would... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not surprised they would they would sort of um set on this particular type of a story. Yeah. In and the I current that, era, but obviously as you ten say, years ago, see if they'd made that ten years ago, I think it would have it would have been so successful because yeah. it is such a fantastic story. Mm -hmm. Because you could have had the Trollocs. The Trollocs are beast men, effectively. And they could have had them doing the big battles that they have in the book using the CGI, like the Lord of the Rings battles with the orcs. It would have worked so well. But I think now, no, it won't work the same way. Hmm. So it's unfortunate. The CGI's out there and the, the ability out there to do the big set battles that they have in the books. But I think they'll not do it. They'll not have... You'll not have um, some of the forsaken. Some of the forsaken are men, some of them are women. They're just evil because they wanted power and they went to the dark, the dark, the creator, or not the, the creator, the dark lord, um, to get that power. So they're, 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 they're quite happy to talk to people. Although that school may, may not be the correct be. comparison. Um, they are no. sort of Nazgul, if you know Lord of the Rings, but they are yeah. individuals, yes. each and every one of them. Each and every one of them, the males and the females, they're as evil as each other. They'll, they'll manipulate and destroy whatever they need to. They'll even try and kill each other to get the favour from the Dark Lord. And they're quite happy just to torture and torment people. But wow. can you imagine them doing that with males and females? Yes, yeah. males will have them as evil as anything torturous and not very nice people. But can you imagine them in the current climate having females doing that? 
Yeah. Or no other reason that they were just wanting power and they'll do whatever they have to, kill whoever they have to, torture whoever mm. they have to, just to get it. Yeah, that's it. The question would be, are we are we ready to go back and, and do that again now with characters yeah. or are we still in that phase where we're not showing any weakness if it's a female character and... Yeah, and the, the thing is, these characters, even the, the most evil ones, are absolutely amazing characters. They were built up so well. Yeah. One or two of them are built up as throwaway characters, no denying that, because they're only in the books for a wee bit, they get destroyed. But there's one or, uh, one of them, and I can't even remember her name. Um, She's the one that comes in from book one, isn't it, when they yes. get lost in the ways. Yeah, I'm... Um, um, it begins with a name as well. I keep on going to say Maureen um, again, but it's not. It's more more Dane, more more Dane. More the No. Jeez, this is the second name from the book. I forgot. Yes, this. it's basically one of those ones. <laughs> um, I keep on going to say Maureen again, but it's not. It's um, oh, it just goes to show it's one of those things. Uh. It's not Grendel. No, Grendel's one of the other ones. Ha, there's a guy in my building that's been calling Dave for 10 years. My name's like, it's too late to correct him now. <laughs> 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 it's basically, it's the same idea. It basically didn't know your name, so he just called you Dave. It's like Trigger. And it. <laughs> Landfear. Landfear. Where did I get the M from? Lanfear. Lanfear is superb. She is one of the most manipul uh, manipulative evil characters. But she's so well written that you can actually go, I want to see more from this character because she wasn't downright evil, but she was. But she just hid it very well. And she just see because mm -hmm. she was doing things for her. It seemed yeah. to be for her. It didn't matter what the dark one wanted. She was doing things for her. So but this, she, she, she's kind of like a Moraine. It's she has her own mission, her own ideas yes. of what she wants to get done, and she'll do whatever she has to to get them done. Be nice or not, it didn't matter to her. But this is this is the thing, you know. If you think of Star Wars and Darth Vader, he's a beloved character, even though he's completely evil. Mm -hmm. You know, the stormtroopers. You know. We all know what they're sort of meant to sort of signify. And and uh -huh. they, you know, that's when you have a, a character that's that's got that right dynamic and that's so integral to the story, they're just as equally important, you know, than the other it's, characters. It's um it's the fact that he uh, commands respect because he's such a, he's a difficult adversity to beat. Mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah. Um. There's also a certain kind of um, sense of humor to the guy as well, like, like when um, Han Solo encounters him in Cloud City, like, you know, because uh, when Lando kind of says, oh, we, I've got an agreement that we'll keep the environment, the, the Empire out of here forever, and then reveals um, <laughs> the Vader, like, he goes, we would be honored if you would join us. Yeah. Yeah. That's it, charismatic villain. Even, 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 even the fact is, uh, pre, we don't um, alter it anymore, the deal anymore. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you find well he would change yeah. it to suit himself, but he would say things that you would think, oh, well, at least he actually could change it more, but he's actually been nice by only doing half of the stuff that he could do. <laughs> <laughs> and, that, and that is the thing. It was just a case of you've got characters like that, good or bad, they can be written such a way that they're interesting characters. Yeah, I mean, there is characters in comic books that are not the hero in the comic book, but mm -hmm. people still love those characters. You mm -hmm. see people cosplaying as them because that's their favourite character, because they've got a decent backstory, and yes, they might be evil, but there's something behind it. It's not just a case of they're evil because I might be evil, good. It's a case of like the, the, the ones in the Wheel of Time, they're something happened, they were actually passed over for something they thought they, they deserved, or they get slighted by someone, yes. and it was a gradual trip down that lane until like, the road to hell is filled with uh, paved with good intentions. It's just 
it a wee step, and then another step, and then another step, and it's that's the backstory for a lot of them. Very rarely, it's something else. Like one of them turns to the Dark Lord because he was in love with somebody and somebody else married her, so he wanted her, so he goes to the dark, and which the guy dies in mysterious circumstances, so he sells him his soul just to get the woman, and it's that, it's there's backstories like that, so there's understanding behind why people did, did what they did do, it's not just no, a case of evil, end of story. They're and, complex characters, and they're, yeah. they're darkly relatable, you know, because they've been wounded, or they've been damaged, or, yeah. you know, there's something quite complex about them, and that's what makes them interesting. Yeah. So it's just, I love The Wheel of Time and I'm just worried that they're going to mess with it. I actually yeah. I love The Wheel of Time. Wait, you see this. Right, remember I was talking about my magic cards? Yes. Well, I've actually got the cards for The Wheel of Time as well. So that's the Wheel of Time cards, the Dragon Reborn. And there's the pack for the Forsaken. And I've got another three, 400 of these cards down there as well, of all different types. It's a similar idea as the the drag, uh, the drag Magic cards. So these are two boxes, full decks, one for the Forsaken, one for the Dragon. Never been opened because... The cards are just too nice. I don't want to read them. Yeah. So that's why I've got all the extra ones over there. And that's, I love going through them. And it's not necessarily to play it because none of my friends actually play it. It's the fact is I like going through it because all the characters are there. The cities are there. Tear. Um, everything. The, whole, the countries are there. And it's, you know when you're looking through it, it reminds you of the book and how the book built each of these cities, each of these cultures, each of these people up, that you remember them. Yeah, you know I mean, and that's the thing. Well, that, that's another thing I actually came to think of. Um, because you're often limited, say, in a film by time or in a book by the amount of pages because you don't want to go too long, but um, two rivers, e even the neighbouring nearest really big city, never heard of you. But yeah, th that's essentially what they say is usually you build the story. OK, I, we, we sort of know who you are. or We've heard about it before, but. Camelin is the yeah. nearest big city. Yeah, I'm that sad. I've actually got the book about the whole thing. I've actually got the book on it. The, the encyclopedia. The whole, yes, I've got the books. I've got the encyclopedia and everything. I've even had I had the diary. The, the um, Wheel of Time diary in the past. I've had the calendars and everything. Yes, I've been that geeky. I've had all the bits and bobs. So, but it's amazing the world building. The world building is so big. It's like anybody watch, uh, read Terry Pratchett, The Disc World. Yes. Ooh, love right, it. You know the world building behind that. You get uh, the, the yep. encyclopedias. Wheel of Time has got that as well. But the encyclopedia mm. is a bonus. You're talking me around to it, PJ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I I just love it. The, the later books with Brandon Sanderson, a lot of people really like them because if you like Brandon Sanderson, you like these books. I'm not denying that. They're just not for me because I was reading the Robert Jordan ones. Yes, he took notes from Robert and when Robert passed, it was passed to him. But it just seemed as if he wanted to add his own stuff in. And yeah. they added in and you're sitting there thinking, they've never, ever, ever been mentioned in the whole <coughs> other books but the last three books they're sort of in there as main characters and you're sitting there thinking that makes That's understandable me. yeah i mean it's just a different style and it's either going to yeah. work for you and or i can not. understand the different style but if you like brandon sanderson's you'll probably love the the final books as well they're not my favorites because i'm nose keen on his writing style and i've read a lot of these books i've got a few of these books so the and i like them but i don't know it's because it's a different writing style to Robert Jordan. It just doesn't work for me. But if you do like Brandon Sanderson, you might love the three better than the other ones. And it's just you, you see, mine have worked probably better if they, for two books, had overlapped a little bit of the writing. Yeah. Uh, rather than so. it being such abrupt. But then, then again, unfortunately, and 
an author passing away, it is not really much you can do about that. But uh, if, if there had been an overlap, e even half a book that had been yeah. overlapping a little bit, then that I may have... What to the overlap is um, Robert had chosen Brandon and they accordingly had a discussion before he passed. So that's the nearest you're going to get to an overlap. But there you go. The world of Robert Jordan, The Wheel of Time. So it is. And yeah, it's it's lovely. Lovely. it is some of the, the artwork in it is just amazing. So it is. I'm trying to find some of the better bits and pieces of the artwork. Like, for instance, th this is the cover of one of the books. Yeah, I'm just noticing it on um, online, just doing a quick search, search and the, the artwork is spectacular. Yeah. yeah. And this book, I've actually read that many times, pages are falling out. <laughs> I've just noticed that some of my pages are falling out. But, yeah, I mean, look at the, the artwork on that. That's from the books. That's some of the book covers. Wow. And they're, they're, it's just amazing, the actual... You've got ogres in it as well, but they're not ogres. They're ogres. And they're basically mm. they're from the Age of Legends and stuff like that. You've got the... the, 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 the that's the, the world, as it were. And it's basically every one of these cities, um, the towns and everything, Tyr, um, Cairnan and stuff like that. It's just, it's all built up. It sounds just like a fantastic, you know, world, world building. Um... Who's who's that? There you go. Hey, Thomas. Oh, <laughs> It's just basically the even the characters. Some of the characters are funny, like Matt. He's a bit of a rogue, and he's anytime he's on, he's basically there. He's got serious points, but he still wants to be humorous. So he he thinks he's a bit of a a clown, and a, and he acts a bit of a clown. So even when he's on, it's humorous as well. So there mm -hmm. is each character's got their own personality. Like Perrin's the stoic one. Who's got this? He's a silent, uh, silent man, but he's a blacksmith, so he's built that brick. And it basically, every character's got their own foibles. They've got their own personality. They've got their own look about. It's wow. I just that's all it is. It's just wheel of time is superb. Can't recommend it enough, but I'll keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah. we, we we might as well start the crusade to try and direct people to the books rather than the TV show because oh yes definitely the books yes uh, well, but, well I, I will say this for anyone seeing watching if you see what Amazon did and you think okay this looks kind of like an interesting world I would definitely recommend pick up the books yes. because a book can regardless of how well or how badly that it comes out from Amazon a book will always have the better time to explain, build the background, build the world around you. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's exactly, look at one of my favourite books of the last four years. When I first picked it up, Ready Player One. No, I Ready Player One. Mm. I loved that book from the very first time because I grew up in the 80s. So 90% of the stuff, apart from the music, I understand uh, the music they were talking about I knew what it was, but I didn't listen to music. The anime, some of the anime I didn't know, but 90% of the stuff they were talking about programs I knew I had seen. They were talking about comics I had read. They talked about games that I had played. And I and a lot of it is lists. And Will Wheaton reads it. And although I don't really like Will Wheaton, he um, feels when, you're, when, he's, uh, when he's reading it, you feel as if he's right into it because he's enjoying it as well. And then I watched the, the movie, and I knew the movie was coming out, and I said, I'm not going to do this. And I was talking to one of my friends. He says, ah, the rubbish, they're going to make it as good as... I says, nope, they're not going to do that bit, that bit, that bit, that And I was right majority of the time. Like, in the book, you've got... You have to find a key. Then you have to find the gate. In the movie, you had to find the key. That was it. Yeah. And the first one, it was a Dungeons and Dragons thing, then a, a computer game, just to get the key. In the, in the movie, it was a race that it had to go backwards. Ooh. 
a race that you had to go backwards and then suddenly everybody else had to find how to get on the leaderboard. Yeah, they've seen somebody go backwards and then their name appeared. There you go. How hard was that? Whereas in the book, it was uh, finding the the first gate or the first key, which was finding the, the Dungeons and Dragons dungeon, as it were. And although Parcival was the first to pass it, he wasn't the first to find it. And you find that out, and that's why there's a bit of a rivalry between Artemis and Parcival. But the book, uh, the TV, the movie, completely different. And to me, it was rubbish. Whereas the book is fantastic, and I would recommend anybody who who likes the movie, you'll think the book is fantastic. But if you don't like lists and you're not into the geeky stuff, you probably won't like it. So it's a uh, what do you want to do with it? Do you what do you like visually, or do you like being reminded of all the geeky stuff that you grew up with? I would say that for me, the film did not disappoint in terms of the visual presentation of what they were trying to explain that the book is really trying to t talk about. But yeah, the um, the, change the Easter the egg hunt the change for me was so well. simplified. Yeah, they, they, it was simplified, but they changed it too much. It was passable. It was it was in IOI, no Artemis, and Artemis and Passable didn't meet until the last couple of pages of the book, not half near the beginning. Although there was well, a crash, they, 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 the the they met each other in the game early on, but they never met each other in real life. And that's the thing. Whereas in real life, in the book, they met each other right at the very end. Whereas in the movie, they really met each other. And it was Artemis who was the the things that got the things done. Whereas in the book, it's Parcival because it's his story. It's him telling his story, not anybody else's story. It's just I love the book, but I'm I've watched the movie once and I've never watched it again. I've no plans to watch it again. It, visually, I can understand because there was bits. Visually, it looked amazing, but it wasn't the book, and that's the unfortunate side because they suddenly had the Iron Giant. Sorry, I want to see the Gundams. I want to see the the actual stuff they had. Hmm. King Kong wasn't in it as such, so having the King Kong race and all that, and I just thought, mm, big deal, a race. It's all about a player a race. Um, Ready Player Two. I got halfway through it and I thought this was junk. I did not like Ready Player Two, the book. Big T Moore was just saying there. Heard Ready Player Two, not as good. Keep looking for it in a charity shop and as well, but don't spend the good money. If you want another book of his that is good, um, Armada, based on an arcade computer game. And it is a space opera type thing. Armada is a better book than Ready Player Two. I've got both of them, and I love both of them. Armada's no as good. Armada was his first book. Ready Player One was his second book, but Ready Player One is his most popular book. Armada's based on a computer game. Kids playing computer games, and they're noticing. And one of them is all from the perspective of one guy. And he's starting to notice things in the background that just makes him think, is this real or am I going crazy? And it's that, and it's Armada's good. Right, what it says, fit to be read, saying, my 12-year-old never reads, despite all my... <laughs> he's ready, re he's re he, has re uh, he has ready, ready player one five times, and that's, he's the movie five times. Get him an audio book. Um, um, Audible has got Ready Player One. And just let it play in the background. It is an amazing book. I love it. I've got the book and I've got the Audible. The Audible's on in my car anytime I'm not listening to anything else. At the moment, I've not listened to it for a while because I've been doing the Red Dwarf stuff. So, but I think after the Red Dwarf stuff, um, it'll be Ready Player One back in my car. Although I've got about four other books. I've got a couple of Amazon, um, Bab uh, Blake 7 to go through. I've got um, 
Oh, what's the one? It's a Dungeons and Dragons type one. I can't even remember the name. That's terrible. I can't even remember the name of my books. I've got them sitting in my list, but I've not watched them or read, listened to them because I've been reading the Red Dwarf ones. And it, um, Audible. See, I've got I've got hundreds of Audible books because I've been on Audible for about eight years <laughs> since it started. I, I joined. Yeah, yeah I, I had the subscription thing, and I'm struggling to like spend my subscription tokens I get once a month. Oh well, I'll send you some good. I'm I've got the Art Royal series. It's a space opera. It's about um, a war, but. The earlier books are greater, but there's something like 13 on it. Old Man's Wars, another great one. There's a 13 books in that series. Um, and why is it not actually loading up properly? But there is also a couple of Dungeons and Dragons type, which are funny. There's one, basically, it starts off in a dungeon, and it's this low-level adventurer, and it's it's his journey. And then he comes across a chest and he goes to eat, open it <coughs> and the chest eats him. It's a mimic. And the story's about the mimic. It's this mimic <laughs> becoming self-aware. And it's basically, it's superb because it is not for children, let's put it that way. It is a very adult one mm. because he becomes a a sorcerer and he actually can um, summon demons. And one of the demons are pervert. So she is. <laughs> and it's basically all about that. So it's not for kids, but it is hilariously funny. Um, so it is, and it's, there's a problem with the website. It's actually not giving me the list. Uh, library, see if I can get the library up. The list is actually, it's looking as if it's an old um, DOS printed, just a list of names. So it's not actually giving the web page properly. And it's not giving it, damn. So Big T's got a question there in chat. No. All right. Any big finish audios? Any favourites? I've got a few, but big finish are definitely not my favourites. I would need to actually go into my iTunes to see what I've got. I've got the one of the Eleven Doctors one. I like that one. It was basically a story from each doctor. I enjoyed that one because it's all the classic doctors. I never, I, never actually, I never actually read the other ones. It was only the the classic ones I read, so I never I only read up to Paul McGann. <laughs> I'm um, a big fan of Paul McGann um, audio uh, stories, definitely from Big Finish. I do like the Paul McGann ones. I've got a few Big Finish ones. Unfortunately, Audible's not there, but Jim, what I'll do is later on, once I've got it up and running properly, I'll send you a couple of recommendations. You might like there's a couple of series, but it depends what type of books you prepare. Well, um, yeah, no, my, that sounds good. My favourite's the uh, the Dalek Empire spin-off. Oh, I've got the Dalek Empire. Yeah. So good. I have. It's just try to find it. It's because I've got. I, I upload them all to my iTunes, so I can shove them all on my PC. Um, music, music, audiobooks. All right, authors, big finish. Big Finish Doctor Who ones. I've got 24 of them. That's the first. That's that. And I've got the fifth and sixth Doctor, a load of the fifth and sixth Doctor stuff. Seventh Doctor as well. Um, I've got the Dalek Empire stuff. It's Doctor Who there as well. Uh, um, there's a Big Finish one. And it's got the Sirens in Time. I'm trying to think of the, the, the ones I really enjoyed. That's the thing. Um, I'm, I have to recommend also um, Seven Keys of Doomsday. It's it's a stage. It's an adaptation of one of the stage plays that Terence Dix did. Was that the, the, the stage play that John Perry did back in the time and Colin mm -hmm. Baker did back in the time? That's the ultimate adventure. They've adapted that, but um, Seven Keys of Doomsday was one they I did. I saw the one with John Pertwee in Glasgow all yeah. those years ago, and I was going to go through to Edinburgh because Colin was doing it there. So it was different guy, it was different actors doing it. So I saw the one with John Pertwee in Glasgow. So I did, and I wish I'd kept my ticket and stuff. And I'd taken pictures, but the pictures have got lost because they were actually the ones you would click. 
click, zip, yeah. zip, and for some reason my pictures have disappeared. And they were all oh because of the distance I was in from the stage, but I wish I still had them because it's great. So it is. I'm well, just trying to find the, the, I like the, uh, I did like some of the big finish stuff, I must admit, I can't deny, but I've got the Dalek Empire, but I only started listening to that and I just got caught up with other stuff. Oh. So I did. Um, Has anybody listened to Max Warp? Which I was know. an early Paul McGann one. Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah, I quite, I quite like that one. It always makes me smile because it's like a Top Gear, you know, take a, like a bit of a Mickey take, you know, of Top Gear, but in a in a sort of affectionate way. And the uh, the original Top Gear, um, or I should say the the Clarkson May Hammond iteration of Top Gear. Yeah. And, See, I've um, got a few of Paul McGann's. I've got. I really like his stories. And Absolution. No, re listen to that. The girl who never was. I the company so of friends. Um, anyway, the silver like Tur it. Turk. The silver Turk, which is a classic Cyberman, by the looks mm -hmm. of it. And there is a couple other ones. Um, Silver Turk's good, yeah. The Witch in the Whale. I've not heard that one. I've not heard that one. Is the Army of Death. And the last one, I don't know why it's actually under my Paul McGann, but it's called An Unearthly Child, unless Paul McGann done an <laughs> Unearthly Child one. But for some um, reason... That was a subscriber special where um, Paul McGann visits Susan again. Is that what oh, it is? I, I've got that, but I, I think the next one I'm going to listen to is that, The Silver Turk. That, the... Just the the visual on it looks amazing. Have you you, know, you seen the the visual on it? Look, um, screen share. Right. There's the visual on that one. Look at that. Does that not just look amazing? The visual on that one. That is a classic Cyberman. Yeah, look, I quite cool. like them. They're they're the scariest to me. Yeah. That's to me. That's definitely it. But there's all the the ones I've got there. A lot of them don't have for some reason. The graphics disappeared, and then I've got. I oh, actually yeah. enjoy Colin's stories much more on audio. See, funnily enough, I think Colin's stories are really good on Audible, and there's a lot of the other ones I've got. Yeah, it, it's given him a chance for his doctor to really shine a bit more. Yeah, you know, because he was just a bit sort of embarrassing. Yeah, so there's in many the, ways when it went I'm out. I think how many I've got. I think it's something like hundred notes. Let's see, hundred and six different stories. He's um, such an amazing actor. You know, he's such a highly trained actor. You know, it's just nice yeah. to see. But that that is my audible books, aud audio books. Um, Hitchhikers. Uh, that's a Hitchhiker. So I've even got Father Brown, Brandon Sanderson, as you can see. I've got bits and pieces. A lot of them are actually double because the way YouTube, um, iTunes takes in the same books and it just be every single disc gets Jumps everything one into the same. Is, uh -huh. Bradbury, I've got Vonnegut and stuff like that. There's a load oh. of there's all my Terry Pratchett stuff there as well. See, look, these are the same one, and basically they've got the same, for some reason, disc one and disc two are separated. Don't oh. ask me why it does this. Sometimes I have to actually put them as video, as, mu as music, so it actually organises them better. It's just crazy. But there's the brand inside. There's the wheels of the wheel of time. I've got all the wheel of time as well. So it is. And I, I love them. Those are basically there's Ready Player One there. And Red Oh, there's another good one. Anybody wants to one John Scalzi, Red Shirts. If you're a Trekkie, <laughs> you will love Red Shirts. Is, <laughs> that is a fun movie so um, um audiobook is basically the, the premise of red shirts is <laughs> it's from the crew who one of the guy um, all the people in red shirts seem to die unusual and crazy deaths 
And this one guy just knew sort of wonders, and then but he notices all the crew who have been there for a, a while always seem to never be there when some of the the bridge crew turn up until he finds out that something weird happens, so they avoid it and just let the new people go down to the end because they know they're expendable. And it turns out that somebody in the past is writing the story and they're the story they're writing. So they go back in time to an alternate dimension and try and get the guy to stop writing stories that's killing them. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, it is Red Shirts. It is Star Trek to the extreme. It is funny, funny. But um, there is uh, other books. Uh, John Scholes has done a lot of really good stuff. I like his books. I like his politics, but I like his books. Um, he's done The Old Man's War as well, which is a fun one. The premise of that is young people don't fight wars. So you don't get the 18-year-olds to 25-year-olds going out fighting wars. What you do is when you're in, like, in your 40s, you sign up and they take a DNA swab. If you survive to retire, then what you do is you go join the army and create a clone body and transfer your consciousness into a clone of yourself, which is young, which has been genetically modified to be stronger, faster, better. Mm. And you go and fight. So it's the old man's war. So it's not young people who fight. It's the old folk who have lived their life go and fight the war in a new genetically modified body. And it's That's if they survive to retire, if they die beforehand, they don't, they don't, they, nobody uses the genetically modified body. It's just, I mean, but it's, the, the whole premise of it is great. And it's actually really good because you don't, you see them talking about war and stuff like that. And it's the old folk who are talking about war and how senseless it is, but how they're out there to help protect the kids, as in the younger folk, because they've lived their life. And it is a good idea. Old Man's War is another good one. Jim, I would recommend that. Old Man's War, try that one. I'll definitely have a look at it. Um, <clears throat> it's on my list already for the Audible. Uh, yeah. As I said, I, I think yeah, I think I got mine this morning, so I now have four credits slash tokens. Yeah, mines, mines don't last long, the other do. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of the other one. I, Art Royal is a space opera one. I like the Art Royal one. There are 13 books in that, but I'm only in book eight. I've still got them to listen to, but I put them aside because they were the ones I was listening to before the Red Dwarf ones. So I've put them aside and I've got where I'm driving. It's, the thing is, for the last year, I've only driven once a month. I'm back to once a week, so I get a wee bit more book time. So... I I, for, for me, it's. I don't know when it started. It's probably when Mum used to have uh, Star Wars audio tapes on uh, when I was a kid. Uh, instead of a, like a good night music or like a nursery music, it was like a, a, a narrative voice in the background um, mm -hmm. telling a story. So I always have that as my so. Yeah. Well, just before I go to bed, pretty much I I listen to an audiobook for about an hour or two. Yeah, I, I, I basically used to do that, but I I like it when I'm driving because it's on in the car. But yeah, yeah, it's seven ninety nine a month for the subscription, and you get the the one subscription a month. It's usually I get means usually the the first week in the month, and I get that, and that way the book does me a month. So the yeah. eight the eight pound a month, you're saying you get one credit, token credit one, for every can, month. I but what else do you get for that? You could get any Audible book. So if your Audible book was normally mm. £2, you can get it for the one credit. But if your Audible book you were going to get is 30 quid, you get it for that one credit. Yep. Right. So you're still that's what I'm using it for. Buying the Audible books, even though you're making this subscription every month, but you're, you're getting, getting them at a discounted book. price. You're getting it for the, you're getting any audible book for that one credit. So it doesn't matter if how what the expense of that audible book is you get it for that one credit. Right. So if you don't wish to buy anything else. You you, you just month, start like me collecting up a couple of credits. And then if that, a new book come it. out, you can get that one. But there's also the fact is the first month when you sign up, you get one book for free. So you could sign up, not subscribe, sign up for it, get the one book 
And if you like that book, then you've always got that book. You don't need to sign a subscription. You just need to log in. So, so yeah, and, so then when you've got the subscription, then anything that you do get, it, you're you're downloading it to your own yeah. system. Yeah, you're not... I've got, I, I download it to my phone, but I also download it to my PC as well. So I've okay. got that. And it, um, or else you can listen to it from the website. Yeah, I, I use the cloud, so from the website. Yeah, I download it to my phone because my phone's always with me, so I, I always listen to it. I've got my headphones or I've got it plugged into my car. Um, and the same again, see if there's a, a couple of books you want that month. Instead of actually purchasing them at the 15 to 30 pounds, you can buy three credits for 18 pounds. So you can go in and just for a one-off buy three oh, credits yeah. for eighteen pounds and get another three books. I do that occasionally if there's like four books I want in the one month, rather than waiting four months to get them all because I know there's always another one every month that I want to get anyway. I'll get three credits just to buy them because six pound roughly a credit, and it, you can get the books at whatever price as long as you've got a credit, you can pay that instead of the price of the book. Obviously, some books you get for two, three quid if they're on an offer. You don't use your credit for that, just buy it. But other ones that are a lot more expensive. Yeah, I think the last one I got was 34 quid or something. Yeah. Just one credit, done uh -huh. and dusted. Exactly. I, that's uh, yeah. the same with me. And I, I like, and you get some free stuff as well. There's podcasts and stuff like that on Audible as well. You get for free anyway. There's things you can download. There's some historical stuff. There is some radio plays you get type shows. And I've got them as well. But Yeah, so if, if you're okay with all your books, uh, having the narrative going on in the background, Audible, check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying nothing. Yes, but yes, there's nothing beats the first kiss in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Except maybe I brush teeth first. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's basically yeah, it goes to show it's not just classic TV, it's books as well, we are right. But and if you like books, remember my Wednesday stream with me and Sadako doing Red Dwarf. Get the guys in there. And Darren's books coming out soon. Uh, basically, uh, basically. Probably... Sorry, Sadako, did I interrupt you? No, no, I was just going to say, just going to care about the uh, the past streams. Yep. Anyway, does Darren's book. I've read a, um, a little bit of it. Yeah, I've, I've I've watched the promo, and I've put the promo in the description. So, oh, thank you, PJ. Yeah, yeah. Darren is uh, retired for the evening. He's uh, he's had a bit of a a very long day as a yeah. carer. He gets he gets pretty shattered. I can understand that by the yeah. end of the day. Yeah, but he's uh, but I do have our. Um, he had a recommendation he was going to make, but he said he'll do that um, next week. Yep, but. We just have our our little um, shopping spree. Yeah. Well, we do the shopping spree yeah. first then. Our haul of the week. Well, my we haul of the week contains my uh, recommendation for the week as well. So, Oh, there you go. Well, Excellent. we'll do the haul of the week first. Since yours at haul is your recommendation, we'll leave you till last with the haul, and then you can start the recommendation as well. How's that sound? That sounds like a plan. Yep. So, Wendology, you can start off if you wish. All Your right. Week. Yeah. Right. Well, let me um, let me just do something here. This was a charity shop find. Kingsman. This. The, the, oh. I like that one. The first book. <coughs> the first movie. <coughs> I like the yeah. Kingsman. The first movie. I, did, I wasn't as keen on the second one. Funnily enough. I have you never see seen this. Darren. Darren um, noticed it. And he's yeah, it, it's a it. brilliant one if you haven't seen it. Yeah, no, this is definitely going to be a first watch for me when we get around to yeah. seeing this one. Um, these were all from the same sort of charity shop. We just um, found a huge basket of DVDs and Blu-rays and uh, basically had uh, had a PJ moment. We were just sort of... Um, <laughs> 
have that, I have that. Filling have that. bags full of DVDs. <laughs> but um, this was another one um, that was actually... Yes, man. Oh, yes, I Minister. thought, you know, this is a great fun. Yeah, the complete Always collection. Started. Yes, Minister and Yes, Prime Minister. Wow. Yeah, it's... Oh, um, um, can you do that on the side? Yeah. See that again? Oh, okay. So I, I see now. It's uh, quite thick. Uh, yeah, it looks great. It just looks like a single one. DVD, but yeah, the complete see the collection. That is superb. Yeah. So this seemed like a pretty good um, score. Yeah, that's a haul and a half. That one just that, that one on its own. Yeah. Oh, um, the and there we go. We were this is when we wanted. Was, who was talking we about the fugitive? To... The um, we've been talking about that last week. It was the the, the, yeah. the, the classic and the new one. The new one, obviously, being so, the Harrison Ford one, because it was a an older one. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there was talk about the TV show or something as well that uh, just kept running. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, but I must admit, I did. That was the one I've seen. I haven't seen the classic one of the Fugitive, but that one, I quite liked it. I must admit, I was surprised I liked it because sometimes the people seem to get the the they seem to actually put them in situations that you think that's not realistic how that would happen. But actually, that one I thought was quite good because yes. Jumping over the the dam, the dam to get away. Yes, you can see somebody being that desperate; they would take a chance, and it didn't seem sort of ridiculous. So, Too uh, yeah, yeah, that's well, well it is even um, oh, big name. Um, the, the fact that he man yeah, the fact that he managed to actually act and play shocked is like he jumped. <laughs> yeah, exactly, and it's that. That is a really good movie. <laughs> it's it is it is a brilliant film. Yeah. Um, this was another one that we've been wanting to watch. Little Shop of Horrors. Horror. Horror. Beat me, Seymour. Yeah. And that was the Danny John Jules first. Ah, right. right. See when they're actually dancing, you see a group of guys dancing outside the shop. Look at the very first guy in the group. It's Danny John Jules. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And um, Steve Martin, I'm a dentist. Yeah, I remember that bit. <laughs> when I was younger, I was a bad old kid. Yeah. I'm, I'm I noticed funny things I did. <laughs> demented dentist, yes. That's yeah. definitely that, that Steve lot, that Little Shop of Horrors is just such a it's great fun, isn't it? Movie. It, it's just a horror, a musical, a comedy, everything. A love story, yeah. the lot. And it, it's just... Wow, it just works. It does. So you uh, have you have like an amazing cast. You had yes, Rick Moranis. Frank Oz was involved. Mm -hmm. Um, you had Rick Moranis, mm -hmm. Vincent Gardenia, Steve Martin, James Belushi, John Candy, Christopher Guest, Bill Murray. I mean, I Bill Murray was the guy who was in the one at the back and the dentist, and he's getting annoyed <laughs> because he's one that he loves the pain. <laughs> <laughs> this was another one. Butterfly effect. The moth Mothman. Mothman prophecies. I've not seen that one. Um, it. I won't. I won't spoil it. Um, it it's not. Um, you know. It, it's. It's good. It's a good sort of sci-fi sort of scary type film. Right. I've heard, uh, I've heard the story one of the Mothman, but I've never actually seen any movies made around yeah, that it's, famous. It's all, right. it's all right. It's not bad. It's not, you know, it's not like um, Academy Award level, but it is <laughs> uh, but it is good. Good watch. Super. And the final one was a Blu-ray of Minority Report. Mm -hmm. And it's got some special mm -hmm. features on it and things like that. Super. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, I don't mind it either. Right? See, I'm I'm never a, a Tom Cruise fan, but I actually like the idea of that, that Minority Report. Yeah, I I'm not a big Tom Cruise fan myself, but I <coughs> I like some of the films that he has been in. Yeah, um, and I think he's a very good actor, but like I don't like watch a film just because he's in it. Yeah, it, I'm I'm sort of the same. I don't mind. If he's in it, but I'm, I don't think I picked up a film because he's in it. Mm. If that kind of makes sense, I know that yeah. usually films he stars in tend <clears throat> to have good stuff to them. 
And there's something interesting on the back. Um, it says special features and it has a list of a few things. And one of them is Philip K. Dick, comma, Steven Spielberg and Minority Report. So that's an interesting... Um, I think... Um, didn't Philip K. Dick write the short story that they, they adapted, they expand, expanded on something? Yeah. I think, uh, wouldn't surprise me because uh, I might mix the authors up, but I think Philip K. Dick wrote tons of short stories as well he did. Uh, that, he that did. really developed into a lot larger things yeah <coughs> they uh, you yeah, know notice nice. recently they've done a lot of um Heinlein and dick stuff they, they just seem to actually be churning a lot of them out based I on noticed that. Stuff. yeah uh, and it's well, that our... how, how's that the disaster area we need a lot uh you need a logo for Hall of the Week. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking you need like one of those spinning, those little spinning things like they had on, um, uh, who's, uh, God, what was the show? The one with Paul Merton and um, Ian Hislop and. Oh, the, um, I don't know what you're talking about. That is yeah. um, Mock, Mock the Week. No, was it Mock the Week? No, it's no Mock the Week. It's, um, um, have I got news for you? Oh, I know. How much I've got that. I've got that. Have I got news for you? This DVD down there somewhere. But that's surprise, surprise. Um, I've got DVD I've got, in my collection. <laughs> have I got you news? You lost something to me when uh, the Paul Merton and Ian Hislop turned on Angus Deaton. And they just Angus Deaton. Deaton. I they know. Were, and, and the very first time was they were taking the Mickey out of them, and then after that, it just seemed to actually get worse. Yeah. I know. I, I must admit, I stopped watching it after Angus Deaton left because I just felt as if it was getting too snarky. Yeah. I quite agree mm -hmm. with you in that one. Mm -hmm. But that was some collection, Wind. That was, well, that was uh, pretty much really good. Yeah, yeah, I know. We were, we were, we were smiling in there because we must have been in there for like an hour. But it's because they, what they did is they had this huge basket, but they had all the videos stacked flat just, on top and, of each other I know, which is crazy and um, there's a couple oh of shots to do that and i have to take them all out and then put them all back in one at a time as i'm what i'm looking at them yeah and again, the woman i must think he's tidying that he must have ocd no i'm actually <laughs> looking it's easier to take them all out and put I them know, all back like, rather than taking them all out do you not get time. people can't actually see what's in there you know? yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true so so did you manage to get get a hole um i just the only thing I bought recently is uh, this. Oh, the Dalek special. I got that a couple of weeks ago. It is a super wee book, oh, isn't it? Cool. Yeah, it's a um, second-hand book. Um, so basically, I haven't, I haven't cracked the spine on it. Someone else did before me. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that one from that collection. We had all the videos, and it's the same idea. It's in some nick. It's a nice collection. And it's... It's, it's that um, one, it's basically the, the spine doesn't need to be cracked because the text is all on the outside. There's a space uh, down in the really centre. Vaguely. Um, the, basically what the contents are, there's a uh, short story called Daleks, The Secret Invasion by Turn Nation, and then the rest of it's kind of the the, the behind the scenes and the basically the chronicle of the Dalek saga so far because it was published only in 1979. So this is... Very know, yeah, yep. that was one of the books that I picked up a while back with, with the, the videos I got and stuff like that. So that is a really good book, I must admit. I want to, um, I, I basically, I, I don't want to break the spine, but the way it was reading, you can read it without breaking the spine because the, the text is in is away from the centre. I, th I like the idea of that, that you don't need to break the spine to get it right in to read it properly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just say I thought there'd be more short stories than just the one. I know, uh, but it's it's a lot more because it's a Dalek special. There, there's a lot more descriptive stuff and behind the scenes, and I think that's what it was mainly for. I think the short story is just a bonus. Yeah, because I know I initially thought it was just all short stories, and <laughs> it wasn't. But then again, I got caught right in with all the diagrams and bits and bobs about the Daleks because I love the Daleks, so can't. Oh, a big. Big T Moore has a comment about the uh, Audrey 2. Audrey 2 was great in the little shop of horror. She definitely was. Didn't like the cameo Audrey 2 that had in the... Sarlacc um, pit. I'm, I'm, I can't even remember that. The, it was the, the bit where... Um, right, okay. In um, Return of the Jedi... It was the monster that came out and actually ate the, the wee guard. No, no. 
No, it was the um, it's when they had to be fed to that pit, which is just a living kind of creature. It's basically it's the last climb. It's the final climax of the battle on um with Jabba the Hood, where basically they. It's where Bob, Boba Fett basically um, died. That the one where Boba Fett goes into the hole. Is that? Yeah, yeah, but like, that, in, that is... yeah, but in the uh, special edition, they changed. They added a CGI thing where basically you see this emerging kind of almost Venus flytrap kind of come out. I ah, see. I've not seen that. that. I've not seen that version. There, I have. I wish I'm glad I didn't. If it's an, it looks like Orgy Two. I love Orgy Two, so I must admit. I can't find any other version now. Like I. The on DVD, like I went to the library to get a copy of Return of the Jedi. The only version they've had they have is the special edition, not the original. Yeah. I think somewhere I've got the original, I had it in video. I've so, got them on video, but um, I need to assemble the video. I, need, yeah, actually, I, I, I basically need to dig out an old video player because <laughs> I've got a couple of things there I've not got in DVD, and you kind of get in DVD and I want to watch them again. Mm -hmm. So I definitely want to get a hold of them all. But that book is definitely superb because I definitely I picked it up a couple of weeks ago and it is it's just a lovely book. It's just the I think even just the artwork on the front is just beautiful as well. But then again, it's a Dalek. You can't go wrong with a Dalek in the front of the cover of anything. Nope. <laughs> you know when I first saw a picture of the Dalek, when I first saw a picture of the Dalek in the TV Times, I thought it was advertising a um an art sculpture show. I didn't know it was a part of Doctor Who or... <laughs> See, I, because I actually grew up watching it and um, I knew Doctor about. I had heard about Doctor Who and I'd seen things on... I think the first time I saw Doctor Who was Pertwee. Mm -hmm. It was Pertwee. So I was five or six. But I'd heard about Daleks before, so I had seen them, and it's because my mum and dad used to watch a lot of TV. My dad watched Spike Milligan, and there was a Dalek on that, so I had seen them in the the thing. So I knew what they were. So I was when I first seen them, I thought these are these things that look like pepper pots, and then till I watched the <laughs> first Dalek story, and I was terrified of them, and I loved them at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I'm the same. I love Daleks. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, my mum says when I was six, I came running up the stairs because we were being invaded because a neighbour's son had a Dalek costume. It was <laughs> an inflatable one that he wore and he used to actually ride his wee tricycle with that over him. So all I saw was this Dalek gliding towards me and I came running up the stairs screaming and my mum had to take me down so... She could lift it off to show me it was just a costume. Yeah, I was that terrified of it. <laughs> Man, we're being are, invaded. I were being invaded. <laughs> but then again, those costumes were dead expensive. They were a whole something like eight pounds at the time. Yeah, you know I mean, that's when I got a whole five pence pocket money a month. Yeah, that was uh... oh, yes. Uh, eight pounds was an expense and a half. That's Must have lot. been a lot of good behaviour by your name. Yeah, <laughs> uh, definitely. But I was so jealous. But yeah, I, I love that book. It is definitely one of my favourite picks uh, that I got. And it's just, I'm glad I'm not the only one that got it because we could talk about it. Yes. There's another book we could talk about later on once I've actually caught up on all the other thousand, thousand books. <laughs> 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 but yeah. Ro, right. Jim, I'll go in my hall before we go on to you. Yep. Right. I'll start with a good old fashioned classic. I got more John Wayne. Oh my goodness. This has got what do we have here then? It's got the Searchers, it's got Chisholm, it's got yep. Rio Bravo, and it's got Cahill United States Marshal. Four excellent John Wayne movies. I love John and I've got more. Yay. Question is, is um is it true that John Wayne is big leggy? Big hip, eh? <laughs> <laughs> tisk, tisk, tisk. There you go, Alec. You have to try that sex web, um, website. Yep. Oh, okay, cool. You should be able to get hold of the Star Wars trilogy on DVD. That's the originals and the special editions. 
Ah. Yeah, I, I try. I, I, every so often, and I pin to the sex shop as well to check to see what DVDs they've got. Mm-hmm. But I try to tell my wife that I'm going into the computer exchange because anytime I say I'm going into sex shop, she gives me a dirty look. Just, just. Oh uh, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm saying it straight. It's the sex shop. <laughs> just call the kick, call the kick shop. Ah, that's it sounds better. I but. <laughs> I picked up that one. I'd never even heard of this one. Oh, it's basically yeah, it? it's oh, Webb and Miller. Oh, yeah. And Mitchell and Miller. Mitchell, uh, Mitchell and Webb. And the magicians. It's uh, lifelong friends. Harry and Carol um, are the greatest magic double act in the country. But after a, a guillotine illusion goes horribly wrong, their friendship and careers are finished, and it's obviously the build up of that. So I'd never seen, I'd never even heard of that one. But as soon as I saw it, picked it up. That should be fun. And then I obviously picked up some nice old classics, Easter Parade. Mm-hmm. Oh wow, I love Fred Astaire. Judy Garland and Fred Astaire can't beat that. Absolutely and, um, love Fred Astaire. The Queen's Men, Ed oh, Edda, Mark LeBlanc. I've seen that. I've seen that a, a number of years ago. It is weird as hell. But I funny. did not even know that the two of them had teamed up and done yes, that. Yes, I'd seen that years ago. It's basically the the to infiltrate somewhere. They have to dress up as women, and they hire an Ezzy Izzard who teaches them how to be women. It is funny. It's quite entertaining, but it's Ed the Izzard type humor now. I love Ed the Izzard. How's that one? Oh, nice. Hello Man. Yeah, no seen awesome. that for years. Picked that one up, but I think somebody actually has created their own copy of it because <laughs> it's definitely it says widescreen special edition, but the DVD looks a wee bit off. So I think somebody's oh. actually created their own one. So I'll still be out looking out for that one. Twenty eight. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, but I'm a huge fan of the the post apocalyptic yes. kind of stories. And I quite like one, it of, one of my old time old favourites. Mm-hmm. Oh, money that's pit. Tom Hanks, Shelley Long, the Money Pit. That's the my brother. That's my brother's so favourite. Uh, that's my brother's favourite ever movie. He's had it that long. He's he had it in video before. DVDs came out because he's always loved that one. And I must admit, it is a favourite of mine because I've seen it so many times. But it's just classic. I can remember, I still remember laughing so hard in that movie. I was in pain. There is just some fun parts in that. It's just yeah, especially the bath, the bath waking tub. up and brushing the teeth and they open the door and there's the guy's building and there's no back to the, the <laughs> cupboard. <laughs> it's just crazy. I just love it. And how about that one? Oh, Gene Hackman, awesome. The Unforgiven. Yeah. That's a good that one. Is a, that is a, a fun yeah. western. Uh, the, yeah. the shootouts are just legendary. And my final one for this day, and I'm going to actually... How's that? Oh, Scarface. my God. Scarface, yep. Yeah. I have yeah, got the original Scarface one. somewhere in my collection, but I can't find it. Uh, so I think it's probably video. The original, yeah. the old black and white Scarface, I've got that somewhere. I thought I had it in DVD, and if I've got it in DVD, which means it's either in a box somewhere or somebody's borrowed it. I you need to get working on that spreadsheet. Yeah, my spreadsheets. I've got a spreadsheet. You know, see my spreadsheet? <laughs> Just do I dare see it. Right. Okay, right. I'll, I'll fire it up first. Right. I will not show my Doctor Who spreadsheet. I'll just show my DVD spreadsheet. Right, so people don't believe me when I say I've actually I've got a spreadsheet. So well, I do because I work in IT. There's, there's my spreadsheet and oh, well it's catalogued and it's down to 677 movies. Yep, and it's yeah. just the need for the location where they are yeah. in the main there are, There's the locations there. This is all the locations. <laughs> oh, because all my drawers now, all my shelves now are actually numbered and lettered. And basically, yeah, that's, that's the box. Really and there's my TV shows. 
same idea. Yeah. All my TV yep. shows as well. And miscellaneous, that's basically like stand-up comic, music videos, games, and workout videos that my wife's got. And my VHS as well. Catalogued a lot of them. You got Farscape on VHS. Yes, all both for volumes. I've got them sitting all there. Yes, that's nice. what I'm saying. But the my movies, there you go. Six hundred nodes movies. And that's not including the ones like, for instance, that have got both movies in the same disc. So six hundred and seventy seven, I think it was. Six seventy seven. That's not including the the ones that I've thought we had there, the new ones that I've got that, that come in. So, yes, I've got and I've got all my Doctor Who DVDs um, catalogued as well. What ones are available? What ones I've got? What ones are on my list? What ones are videos as well as DVDs? Miscellaneous bits and bobs. I catalog everything. That's a wee bit OCD sometimes. That is it's that is a very impressive um, cataloging system. Now I, I, mean, I I need to because how many times has I've said I've got that somewhere? So what I did yeah. was a couple of weeks ago I took every DVD <laughs> off my shelf and put them back on and catalog where they were so I can say oh it's there hold on and I know exactly where to look for it now. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing, wrong, nothing with that. wrong at all. No, it's basically the OCDs just gets on top of you sometimes, but. That was my collection for this week, and there's only one more wee teeny pile in that big bag left. So there were a couple of wee bits and pieces, but there were doubles and trebles, um, or like a season of um, a TV show that I've got, so I just added them in instead of actually keeping them. But I got a wee gift. My nephews were up, and they bought me a wee gift. Unfortunately, I already had it, but they bought me that. <laughs> Again. Ah. No, this one doesn't. And this one, the unfortunately, this one, the battery works. So it does. We didn't, we didn't drop the pod. Uh, the pod drops, but the ah. doors off it, and there's no. Whereas the one I've got, the speaker doesn't work. Yeah. Although. I can't make out what it says because the hank of the speaker's gone, but the battery's working. So I'm tempted to take the batteries out of that one and put it in mine's. But mine's works. Mine's has got the pod with the door, but still no Thunderbird 4. But I thought it was really nice. My nephews thought, there's a Thunderbird. Uncle Peter will like that. So <laughs> I got <laughs> another one. So I can't complain. This is how a collection accidentally just explodes, starts yes, growing. Yeah. <laughs> People actually see stuff, but the, the thing is, I found that I need to actually now start collecting doubles of things because they come in and say, Have you got only one of them? Have you got only one of them? As in, basically, have you got any doubles that I can get? Because I usually give them a double that I've got, and I didn't have many doubles, so. Mm. I had to actually dig out the one or two wee things that I had and just gave them away. So I need to actually remember and buy doubles. So they took a lot of my double DVDs away. Luckily enough, I had enough stuff that the kids would like. Um, superhero stuff. So they liked all that and Star Wars and things like that. So they took all of those away with them. So they were happy. I didn't disappoint them again. Because <laughs> not like, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch, don't touch. This time they actually managed to go away with stuff. <laughs> I bet they were happy. Yeah, they are. They basically they, they they always come up with something for me, so I always make sure I've got something for them. So, I, they were happy, happy, happy. So I had to make sure make sure there's other stuff in the house just in case they ever pop up again. <laughs> but that was my haul of this week. Right. So my turn then. I managed to raid a charity shop despite working so much overtime. This well was just an accidental pickup. Wow. Oh, Me for Vendetta. That is a superb. I uh, see it was, that, yeah. oh, see the first it's a very good one. That. See the first time I ever watched that, I thought, what's all the big deal about it? But see the second and third and fourth time I watched it. And it's really good. I quite enjoy that. It's really weird. It was one of those ones, the first time I watched it, I'm sitting there thinking, people kept going on about this is really good. And I'm sitting there thinking, why? 
But see, when you I watched it the second time, I thought, oh, I missed that. And I, oh, I understand that. And then I watched it again and again. The more you watch it, the more interesting that becomes. I definitely. Yeah, there are details, see, even if you watched it four, five, six, seven you know, times. I think that's what it was the very first time I watched it. I just never picked up a lot. And I'm sitting there thinking, why is this such a big thing? And then I watched it again and I picked up. Me, oh, I thought, oh. I understand that bit now because that bit, and then the next time I watch, and it, it definitely every time I watch it, it just gets that wee bit better. And it's one of those ones that I was I was surprised that I missed so much. I mean, Hugo Weaving is amazing in it. Uh-huh. Same it's with like Natalie it. Portman, Stephen oh, Fry. Yeah, yep. but yes, it's, it's a really good uh, one. I must admit, and it was a surprising one for me because. As I said, the first time I thought, mm. and every time I've watched it afterwards, it's just got better and better. Whereas any time you watch something, it's usually a case of you remember it and you're enjoying it along it with the, the memory again. Whereas that one, it's one that just it's something new hits you every time. It's like watching mm. Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, You're laughing so much, you miss other jokes. And when you watch it yeah. second time and third time, you're picking up other jokes that you've missed. It's the same idea. I think V for Vendetta is one of those ones you're picking up something new every time and it makes it better every time. Yeah, uh, so what Big T said. Um, I have only been, have had hands on the graphic novel, but uh, I'm definitely on the lookout for it. So I didn't I manage know. to buy it. The uh, next haul. I think everyone here in the panel, in the chat viewing, you will know this one. Who? Willow. 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 Yay. Yeah. Special edition. Yeah. Uh, same yeah. charity shop. And just like you say, uh, PJ, 20p. Special yes, like, edition. This is mine. Willow is superb. Um, Warwick Davis is just amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I, I love that from the very first time I ever saw it. And it is not a case of, oh, I mean, because I'd, I'd seen Time Bandits and I'd seen Miller and I knew the, 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 it was just one of those ones. It was just, it was not a case of, oh, look, we people can act as well. No, it's just, a, well, what he, that is absolutely amazing. And then I'd seen Time Bandits, I'd seen all the guys in it. And I thought, the, this is a, actually such a very good movie. I want to see more. And there was no more of that. There was a similar set of humour, but there was nothing that com- was comparable to it. And it, well, it was the same idea. There was nothing comparable to how well that movie was made and yeah. how interesting it was. And it was not a case of, oh, look, this is why it's funny. This is why it's funny because... These, these short people, no, they were, it was just funny because the humour in it, and it was it didn't actually make you think it's only funny because of that these, there's guys that were actually they, they, they did use what people perceived as what should be funny, they, they were funny guys acting big, big T coming with bad news wow so both, I know I heard that. I oh did hear that, God. unfortunately. No. Supposed to be making a Disney Plus sequel. No, oh, not, not that. that but, well, at there. least we know that will willow on the branch. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a dad joke. I can't help myself sometimes. But no, I do not look forward to that. It's the same as anything Disney touches. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Although I will say that uh, Disney is coming out with some kind of anime Star Wars uh, very soon, and it looks really well made. Hmm. I'm, I'm actually surprised. It oh, looks... they, uh, no denying it looks things will look really good. That's the problem. They will look good. It's yeah, like, well, I would say I like didn't hear any of... dialogues or anything, so I'm not uh, convinced it's yet. It's like getting but... a copy of a, a Gucci handbag. It might look good, but it'll fall apart any time you use it. <laughs> um, just so, Jim, um, by the way, your special edition, what's on the um, – what extras are on it? Uh, yeah. So, uh, yes. Um, does it have any deleted scenes or extended So, scenes? I should probably try and get the better – Light source. So we have feature audio commentary by Warwick Davis. Oh, Two wow. featurettes, Willow making of an adventure, Morph to Morphing, the dawn of digital filmmaking, the theatrical mm. trailer, the two theatrical teaser trailers, 
eight TV spots, still gallery. Interactive menus is not exactly a feature of any DVD, I know. really. <laughs> but uh, scene access, they, those are the details on there. Oh, but, um, yeah, I'm not sure how well it's... Yeah, I would like the, the making of would be actually good. And even the audio commentary, because it, Warwick actually just talking about the, the what was getting the ideas behind certain things. Yeah. I've seen a, I've seen a couple of interviews with Warwick. Um it's just superb. And uh, I've got his TV show Life's Too Short. I love that. He's just he takes the piss out of himself in it. He, he plays it really it, he yeah. it, but it's just it's obviously it's the cartoon version of himself and he's just so funny at taking the mickey out of himself and it's just the stuff he comes away with. I'm sitting there thinking, no, nobody could write that. He had to actually be the one that's writing some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> because you're sitting there thinking, nobody could actually write that. He has to be writing it himself. And people are going, well, if Warwick's writing it, we can't actually say it's bad. But it's just because of the thing he says <laughs> and how he acts about himself. It's just, he's taking, I just love him. It's the same as his, his game shows. Uh, the... Is it 15 to 1 or whatever? No, it's the don't, 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 don't. I can't even remember the name of it. Because uh, I, 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 I just always hear it. My wife watches it and any time it's on, I go through. It's the one the team have to get the top 10 of certain things. Don't think I've seen that one. I know he's done a few things like it, but I don't think I've seen that one. Yeah, that one is great because it's basically the team has to actually guess. So it's like the top 10 Star Wars characters. And they'll say, let's um, Darth Vader, and they'll, they'll do the typical ones, and then it's a case of they'll try and name other ones, and then it's a case of they have to get it in the top ten, so it goes, don't, 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 don't. And if it appears, it goes, ding! If it doesn't, it goes, and that's it, they'll lose a life. That type of thing. It's, it's actually really good, because some of them I can do, some of them I look at it and go, I can't even get one. And some of these guys are actually firing through them all. But, yeah, I, I like Warwick Davis, and a lot of the stuff he's got, he's in. Still not got a chance to meet him because he's I've not actually met I've he's never actually turned up at a Glasgow Comic Con. Bummer. One one of these days. One of these yeah, days. One of these days. And I'll be actually in that queue and I'll be I'll not only have it'll not be his Doctor Who stuff, it'll be his Willow stuff. I'll want a picture signed. Because that's the iconic one of Warwick. It's just amazing. I'll have the DVD sign. Life's too short, so get that signed as well. So, yep. Yeah. But Willow, I must admit, super duper duper. Yep, and I picked it up today. Yep, Dirt cheap. Superb. So let me guess. What is your pick of your collection? <laughs> <laughs> so the final haul, which is also my recommendation for the week, it's a world cinema. It's a French film set in. I'm going to have to cheat now. Um, I think it's around the 1700s. And it's got a little bit of science, well, fantasy. Of the roof. Yep. Or Le Pac oh. de Loup. Because that it's, looks interesting. It's a French film. And if I recall it correctly, there are, I think they're hunters or something. They're coming to a village somewhere in a bit of a remote area in France. And there are some strange murders going on there. Uh, won't reveal too much uh, because it's a really, really well-made um, atmospheric film. It's more on the horror side, slasher side part, but it definitely has a lot of good acting. It's got Vincent Cassel, which I discovered through this film. And I found another French film, which I haven't found again in the charity shops but it is um uh was it doberman which is pretty much think of it as all out fast and furious combine it with taxi and then add some oh, high level goodness. violence like snatch or lock stock and two smoking barrels Wow. I've got one of those. There's a super duper movies that you, you compared it to. Yep. But he's he's really great in this one. 
and in Doberman as well. So, Absolutely. but they're both French. You have to use subtitles unless you speak French. Yeah, I've been studying French for seven years in school. I had never yeah. had to use it once. <laughs> Kelly and Etiel, Fermi Laporte, the usual schoolboy stuff that I, rem I basically remember. But no, I, I do the same with a lot of Chinese and Japanese movies anyway. I prefer them when they're not dubbed, and subtitles is basically something that I enjoy. I actually didn't mm -hmm. check that, but I don't think I've actually come across a version that is. Oh, actually, it is. They've added an English dubbed 5.1. I would strongly recommend not going no, for that one. No, yes, but I've, I've found a lot of the, the Chinese and Japanese stuff, especially the Chinese stuff. The dubs are. They don't make sense when you're watching it with the dub, whereas it makes sense when you're watching it with the subtitles. Because yeah. whoever's actually dubbing it, usually they dub it phonetically. And it doesn't make sense because they try and make they sense make of something they don't understand. Um, do you remember Wayne's World 2 did a spoof of that, where um, <laughs> Wayne meets um, <laughs> Carrera's father and he changes him to a fight. Like, well, if we're going to fight, shouldn't we be dubbed? Very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the delayed mouth movements <laughs> speaking. Yeah. Really brilliant. <laughs> And I used to do that at um, Police Academy. Yes, oh, I, I miss. I love Police Academy. Don't do that now. You shall fight like that. <laughs> you constantly do that. I used to not myself. Yeah, that guy yeah was he, he, he made me crack up all the time. He, he, even today, when I'm watching Police Academy again, I, I'm so loving the characters because they all yeah. gave them each personalities. Hightower was just superb. So funny. He's just towering over people. That was such a but also thing. his deadpan face constantly. <laughs> it's like he, he's getting abuse and jokes and whatever hurled at him, and he's just just yeah. steadily <laughs> delivering it. It was just uh, I love it. I basically I had I picked up I had a chance of picking it up, but basically there was two discs missing and it was the full police academy mm. series. But I, I always checked the discs and there was two discs missing. Uh, and I thought yeah. that could be just the extras, but bummer, I would yeah. take that chance, no. Mm. But uh, the, the guy did the voices, he was also in uh, Spaceballs, remember the, the guy was doing the... Um... Boop, boop, boop. Oh, that's <laughs> true, aye. <laughs> 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 ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I used to like... <laughs> I forgot yeah. about that. So yes, when you actually said that, I remembered it. Christ, uh, yeah. But he he's just uh, superb. But it's unfortunately you don't see him a lot of other stuff because obviously it was uh, a niche thing that he did. There's only bits and pieces you see him in here and there. But he was still really good. He was a good actor in his own right. Without that, that was just a a, a thing that he did. It's not as if that's all he did. Let like some actors that just seem to act themselves. Jack Nicholson. It was his USB. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Aye, that's it. The um, big team. We've been jammed. Strawberry. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, yeah, that, that's some um, one I hope to be able to pick up as well. Um, Spaceballs and those kind of films. Oh, space! I've, def funny. I've yeah. definitely been keeping an eye out for those I've got kind space of films. Ball. It is super. That was one of the ones I picked up a while back. But super duper. Um, so you've watched that five times the same month. Basically, when it came out, um, we rented it on the Friday, which was kind of a tradition we had. So we went to the VHS uh, rental shop, got the film, uh, went back home. I saw it. Then, then on the Saturday, I just went into the big city and bought it, uh, watched it several times. Yep. Uh, big Timur says the dub version is not as bad in that movie. And there's after area, uh, the Warren Davis thing is called Tenable. The mm. question was Tenable, it's called. As soon as he mentioned it, oh. I thought, why did I forget that? Because you had to get 10, so Tenable. It was, it's easy to remember and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> But there you go. So, Sadaku, what is your recommendations from your collections? 
Um, I'm not sure. See, the thing is, I haven't really broken that. Oh, um, there's an anime series I quite like called Dirty Pair. It's about these two um, trouble consultant they're teenage um, agents who basically um, is set in the future and basically they travel from world to world after this great catastrophe and they they're basically there to sort problems out but they end up causing more problems than they <laughs> <don't>, basically. <laughs> Funnily enough, they usually do. <laughs> yeah, like that. But that sounds actually. What was it called again? Dirty Pur. It's like it was 1985. It's it's very very difficult to get hold of now. But like it was briefly, they had the entire series on DVD. Um, so there's only make you lucky to find it, but it'd be pri pricey to look at. We have to be quite yeah. rich. <laughs> well. There's a few like that, it's difficult to sell to find, and when you do find them, they are asking quite a lot. Just a minute, I'm actually, if you wait there, I'll just fetch them. Yep, so when we'll go to you next, and then I'll, I'll finish off the recommendations. Then we'll see where we go from there. Okay. Um, well, we had a recommendation um, that Starrens, but I'm going to let him. I'm going to let him bring that one up next week. Yep. No problem. Um, I have. I have a recommendation. I can tell you about. I haven't got the. Um, not, not a problem. Film That's yet. Fine. But um, I don't know many people who've seen this film, um, but it's called Thunderheart. It's with Val Kilmer and Graham Greene. And it's about, it's based on a real um, situation that happened on a Navajo uh, reservation. Um, and it's, it's an absolutely brilliant film and Val, it's like really early in Val Kilmer's career. So I think, I mean, it must have come out like in the 80s or the 90s. Um, mm. Absolutely fantastic film. If you look it up on IMDb, it, it'll it give you a really good description of what it's about. But I, I always was very, very um, drawn to Native American spirituality, Native American history uh, and things like that. So it's always been a, a real passion of mine. Yeah. And I got to travel around a little bit on some of the um, reservations um, out in the Southwest when I went on holidays and things. And it's a, it's a very special film. 1992, Big T says. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, excellent film. I highly recommend it. Um, and there's a lot of humor in it as well because it's basically Val Kilmer's character. I won't go into too much detail, but he, he sort of rediscovers a part of his past but he starts off with you know as this very sarcastic sort of um city boy type character and graham green plays um a navajo cop who is just you know really um just loves taking the mick out of val kilmer's character and they kind of they're like chalk and cheese in the beginning and it's sort of how their friendship develops but it's it's a really powerful film it's very good so i definitely recommend that one excellent sounds actually really good so i'll definitely have to write that one down right i am um, oh, i found the uh, dvds i'll uh, show you now just a minute uh, do, 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 do. yep can you make them out or yeah that oh. pair actually looks really good yeah very of its time but it's very um Oh, that looks cool. Lot of cool. See, that's that's classic Japanese artwork as well. Yeah. Yeah. It sort of reminds me a little bit of, um, it was from this, like 77 or 79, the Cyborg 009. Oh, I've not seen that one. It's a really old one. Um, I remember I liked the art style, but they've used the similar kind of art style in quite a lot, but that's how I discovered it initially through cyborg 009 superb that, that that's two that's three i need to actually add to my list <laughs> dirty pair thunderheart and brother of the wolf see i remembered them yeah <laughs> mind you i wrote them down so that's probably why i remembered them writing it down and actually just rather than just trying to remember things that are said 
terrible. Right, my one is not too old this time. It is plebs. Four oh, seasons. I've heard of that. Four seasons, based in Rome. You've got the three. These two. He is works in an office, and he's called Shredder because he rips up paper. He's <laughs> called he's called Copier because he they come in and say, "Right, I'll need that, but I'll need it in large." So he copies it out, and he's their slave. But he doesn't listen to them. <laughs> basically, he, he's just as cheeky. Basically, so he is his slave. But he just basically he just does not listen to anybody. He just does his own thing. The first three seasons are the best, but once he he leaves, they bring in a blonde guy. It's still humorous, but it's not as good. They get they actually kill him off in it. Um, but he went on. He's in the uh, Cruella. So yes, he's one of the henchmen okay. in Cruella. So yes. But that is a superb. It's based in Rome. These are three uh, three plebs, or two plebs and a slave, and they're just trying to make ends meet. They're trying to get in with the in crowd, and they're always ignored. There's another person that works in the office with them called Waterboy, who keeps on saying, "No, it's Waterman," but he's actually one of the writers in it. The one that plays the Waterboy, he just stands there with the water all day. Anytime somebody wants water, he just pours it, and, and, and that's his job. So it's basically it's just taking the mickey of it. And so when they're actually, it's you think about it is instead of a photocopy machine, a shredder, and a, a, a water machine, they're the three people who do the job. And so people come in and say, "No, we need we need this um, copied, and we need it uh, larger." So he sits there and creates an R five, and he has to give his friend shredder. And he sits and just rips them up into small pieces. <laughs> so nobody can actually see what the business is doing. So it's literally that. That's their jobs. It's just one of those ones. It's just this, the, the sites of Rome that they've built. I don't know if somebody had built Rome and they'd actually got an opportunity to film it because they've actually, it looks really good. The sites and that around about it. It is just fun to watch. So I would definitely recommend Plebs. It's on the list. Yeah. It's a it's very interesting spread we managed to get this week again. Yeah. <laughs> so but, fantasy, like horror slasher, uh, serious, dramatic thing. It sounded like yeah. uh, anime, you had there with yeah. anime. And then what sounds like humor, Comedy. proper humor. Yep. Yes. So, but the very first three seasons are the best. The fourth season's okay. It's just obviously they change the dynamics because um, <coughs> one leaves and another one comes in and the guy they brought in, it's just never, it's the same as when they replace a character. He's just never going to actually fill that gap left by the one you've been watching for the last three seasons. But it's just that's typical. It's just unfortunate. But they only made the four seasons, and I love it. I must admit, it's definitely one of my favourite. Even the the start sequences, they're actually all it's it's when in Rome do as the Romans do, and they're all doing the dancing and all that on the the Colosseum steps and stuff like that. And the Romans come uh, the Romans come out and chase them, and they run away from the police, and he's giving it the 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 wee slaves yeah. giving them the finger stuff. <laughs> but yeah, I mean. He basically, he's just the one who's one. Instead, of, he makes us food and he just flops it down, and they're, they're all going, "What's this you've made?" No, it's dirt. That's all we can afford. <laughs> so he basically just picked up dirt and boiled it up in water and puts it in the plate. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we can afford. Or else he goes to the dump and picks up bits of old vegetables and stuff like that because he wants. He just, they're poor. <laughs> it's just stuff like that. They've got the um, uh, who do you, who who was in it? The um, Danny Dyer was in. Played a, a gladiator in it. 
<laughs> so he did and it was actually really good as a gladiator he was just one of the boys and you know what I mean he would come in they're in the shower cubicle and they're getting shower and he says can I borrow your towel and he goes I sure so instead of it he's got it he's gone underneath and he's given he's basically <laughs> <laughs> he's flossing himself with their towel and they're sort of going but these guys he's a gladiator so they don't want to say anything to him and all that and then they're getting right into it and following him and he, Gets his head chopped off because he's so cool. Oh, and the guy just walks up. And goes, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just the, the way they do it. But even Danny Dyer, the bit that he's in it is just hilariously funny. He's just a Cockney gladiator type thing. It's just some of the stuff they come away with. Is great. Yeah, they want. There's another one where they want. He wants to be a charioteer. But he's scared the horses, so he's got the horse going dead slow. <laughs> but he's all dressed up like a charioteer because women love charioteers. But he's going around the place dead slow because he's no he's no comfortable with a horse. And it's just a case of race. No, I'm just I'm just resting the horses. Basically, just don't. It's, it'd be like you imagine sitting behind a Ferrari. It's doing ten miles an hour. It's that type of thing. It's just so silly about the whole way that they do things. It's but definitely plebs. I would recommend <laughs> the first three seasons definitely, but the fourth one if you want to complete it. But fourth one's not as good. Well, it's likely going to get completed anyway. Yeah, I'm the same. There's I watch things even though I think I can't actually the fourth season or the third. It's like coupling. Um, Stephen Moffat's coupling. Yeah, yeah. love the first three seasons. Fourth season is absolute pants. Mm -hmm. However, I've still got the four season because it completes the story. Although after season three, you don't need season four. But that's because Richard Cole finished in it and um having Jeff the pervert in it was made it funnier with the <laughs> in the work. It's just unfortunate. Same again, they replaced a character with a similar type of character, but you're so used to one character, or another one coming in and trying to fill that post is just not going to work but maybe I'll recommend coupling another time not the US version which was rubbish no. again, but the UK version coupling Stephen Moffat's one which was very good but that's another story that's another time but plebs is the one and I'll tell you the name of the three people in it you've got Marcus which is Tom Rosenthal, Stylax, who is effectively Shredder. So Marcus is copier. Stylax is Shredder, played by Joel Fry. That's uh, Joel Fry, sorry. And you've got the lazy slave Grumio, played by Ryan Sample uh, Samson. That though are the three. They see the chemistry between the three of them on screen. Hilarious. You can just imagine the two them best friends and Grumio being the hanger on. It'd be like two friends and a wee brother type thing. It's just the whole, the three of their chemistry together works very well. So it is. Okay. It's very high praise for it. Yeah. So the chemistry is, is what makes it as, uh, as funny as it is. So I would always recommend it. Right, hold on, there you go. So, just thought I'd put that up just in case anybody missed it. The Sioux Reservation. Yes, I made a mistake and said Navajo. It's uh, it uh, it's on a Oglala Sioux reservation. It's I have to apologize. It's been so long since I've seen it. Yeah. Um, and it, believe it or not, it's just one that I have not managed to order and get into the collection which annoys me because it's a type of film at least for me personally i could watch like every year you know yeah. it's, just, it's just one of those films i just really connect with yeah well what i think we've all got movies like that or tv shows like that mine's is zulu i love zulu it's yeah. my favorite movie and i watch that maybe once every six months it's just because it's a special movie to me it's one that I just love. Yeah. And it's, we've all got movies like that, and that's definitely the way it should be. Because if everybody had the same movie, it would be boring. It would be one movie, one TV show, one band, one whatever. Yeah. 
That's exactly. why I like the aspect that we've all got something different we all like. But we can all enjoy everything or most things. Mm, yeah. Uh, some of the films you mentioned, and I'm not just written down the the, uh, the ones we put up as recommendation. It might have been something in your big halls. Uh, so I made notes of them. I said, like, oh, I remember that one. Or I haven't seen that one in years. Yeah, I think your dog woke up now. <laughs> no, no, it's uh, <laughs> um, my wife's actually chasing him out, so she whistled on him and he went running. He I love that little like, sound. Uh, basically, he's, he lies sleeping there and snores. Aww. So she usually whistles on him and he goes flying, and it's because I've got laminate. He, he'd hear it. <laughs> 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 oh, he's crashing <laughs> me. Sorry, Jim. <laughs> Uh, it's perfectly all right. So you're saying about the movies? Yeah, so a lot of the ones you, you brought up, you, you talked about, they, they're definitely on my list now. It says, like, this is definitely coming into the collection sooner or later. Yeah, I do the same. I basically, I always write them down, any of the ones that I want on my wee book, and <laughs> any chance I get it to come across them even when i'm actually sometimes i just flick through ebay just to see if anything pops up like for instance my mm. pink panther box set there was one movie it's not included in it and one of the guys in the chat last time were saying it wasn't included because it was a different studio it filmed it i picked it up for two pounds three pence wow don't ask me why it was two pounds three pence that was a buy it now price but two pounds three pence so i picked it up today to complete the, the collection the return of the pink panther was the only one and not in the box set so i picked it up today so i always when i'm i always have a quick look to see if they turn up on the the cheap sh sheets so sometimes you get them they're a couple of pounds but sometimes they're like 15 20 quid and i think yeah i might pick it up somewhere else somebody might be selling it in a collection and pick it up then or else i might find it in a charity shop so i do keep a list in my wee book it's not my wee black book it's my wee spidey book it's easy to fit in my pocket <laughs> remember to carry it with you as well <laughs> yes that's why I'm going, that's why it's the wee book rather than the big book that's why it's written in that and not and i've lost my book there it's that's why it's not written in that my tablet's book that's why it's written in my wee book because that just flicks into my pocket my trouser pocket back pocket it's fine it's easy and that way if i see something I thought, oh that looks like it and i check the book yeah easy peasy oh, it's the easiest way to do that way i don't end up with 50 uh, doubles like i've got at the back of my man cave yeah i had 50 doubles but now i've only got about 35 because my brother-in-law took a, a big pile of them because of the kids would like them and stuff like that so that's why I keep them and don't bin them. Or give them back to the charity shop. Somebody might like them. Makes sense. Thanks. Yep. Somebody else has to get the fun out of them. Especially when they look at my DVDs. So you got a lot of DVDs. I go, here, you can have a lot as well. <laughs> 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 and my wife goes, yeah, you're getting clear out some of your junk. <laughs> I don't clear out junk. I clear out things I've got doubles off. I don't call that junk. No, not at all. <laughs> no matter what people tell me. But. The reason I got into <clears throat> getting DVDs and everything again is I started watching, I can't recall what it was, but it was a TV show from when I was a kid. Um, and it was back up on Amazon, and this was probably a year ago. And I can distinctly recall that the pilot episode was not what i saw as a kid they had cut stuff out they yeah. had shortened it they'd done s whatever stuff it is i mean streaming services are amazing especially something like amazon where you can just press a button on any device you have you can instantly see your film yeah. but if they can edit it out I, I would actually like to have the the physical copy that they can't edit i would like to remember all of it as it was yeah. back in the day See, I, 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 I would say this time before lockdown, I probably had about 200 DVDs. 
and that was including my movies not um and my tv shows all together <laughs> i just had the ones that i'd picked up and collected because i enjoyed watching them over and over again and the rest of them yeah i'd pick up on amazon or whatever but once they started making changes that was noticeable i thought physical media and that's why the charity shops got hit hard because i wanted copies of things that would get changed in the future and then it yeah. just expanded from that so like 40 towers we know that's going to get chopped at some point um there's a load of movies you blazing saddles you know that's going to get chopped or yep. even when they try and remake something when they remake it the originals sort of disappear from the movies, uh, the streams. So you can watch. Um, I'm trying to think of something. Like, I'm not see, sure if Amazon yeah, is doing that, but I do they, recall when there is a new reboot or whatever it is, you search for the name, but you, you get one. the latest one, but then you have to scroll and scroll and scroll, and then yeah. you get the original one. You look at Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The two of them are the same same movie, but they're different titles. So if you searched for Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, you always got Charlie in the Chocolate Factory mm. appearing at first. And as you said, you had to scroll away down three or four pages down or whatever. But the, if you searched for Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, you got Charlie up and there was no mention of Willy Wonka because it was not the same name. But if you search for Willy Wonka, you got Charlie, which is a different movie name, but for some reason, the algorithm just says, nope, the new one goes up there, and the other one either is not on the platform, or else you have to hunt for it. Mm -hmm. It's crazy for me when they do stuff like that. I just use that as an example type thing, but it's the same idea across the board. You look at anything, Ghostbusters, you search Ghostbusters, you'll be lucky to find the classic Ghostbusters, you'll find the new one. Oh, interesting. That's why I've got the DVDs of Ghostbusters 1 and 2. Yep, uh, I managed to completely stay away from that one. They didn't I even know. care watching the trailers because I, I just saw... He, he didn't even look appealing. I was like, Ghostbusters, Brandon? Yeah. But it didn't need to be remade. It didn't need to have anything else. See, that's the thing. They don't need to remake stuff, but they do because they don't know how to make something new. So, and that's the problem. They remake everything now. See, anytime somebody says there's a new program out, the first thing I think is, what did they copy? Even if it's something that looks original, I think, what did they copy? Yep. It's the same as we, uh, Wheel of Time. All I think is it's going to be Game of Thrones. I don't think so. I uh, think but I do think it's going to be... Than Lord of the Rings. I think it's going to be weaker than it can be in terms of the it, it has sensibility it has intimacy in it it's not like lord of the rings that they suddenly decide oh we're going to have nude scenes and love scenes or whatever it is that is rumored obviously it hasn't been confirmed but it's been rumored and it's like there's nothing like that in lord of the rings but it is in wheel of time yeah there are relationships and everything within there but i think they were still trying to run as close to PG-13 they can, despite the Trollocs, the, the evilness that is supposed to be in there. Um, if it gets a, a 15 rating, I'll be surprised because yeah. they will try to capture the audience. And considering that most of us that read the books, we consumed them when we were early teenagers. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, But that's, that's what I'm saying. Um, but I also think the people who are writing it, they are just thinking what has been successful in the past so oh this is a sword and sorcery so is it going to be like game of thrones is it going to be like lord of the rings and that's the problem they don't think this is different so they try and make it like something else and that's yeah. when that thing and that's what i always worry about when they make something even if it's something that sounds original i think what are they going to copy and the problem is, I think that's what it is. They have got no no creation in them. They're taking something and then trying to change it to match something. Oh, well, that's Wendology. 
and we do. But I would say it's not too much around the creativity. I think it's the fearlessness that is missing from creative people that are supposed to be in Hollywood and make Hollywood tons of money from coming up with new stories, creative way of telling something. But I don't think they are as fearless as, shall we say, the, the big glory 1980s where they, they just proposed a film and made it, didn't really care if it was going to be a big one or not. Mm -hmm. But there were so many fantastic films toward the end of the 80s, beginning of the 90s, that were just coming out, that it was stuff that was completely new. Uh -huh. Well, you look at some of the ones that were new and they weren't very good. But the premise was enough to, you understood that, yeah, it was done in the cheap, but the story was so original that you could forgive the silly, silliness of some things. Yeah. Well, sometimes they, they learned from it and they played well in, say, films like um, when all the action, muscly action heroes were big. You had Tango and Cash. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love that film. Um, the, the, where it comes yeah. like he hit me with a chair, or he he, he sat on the chair on top of me, or whatever it is, and he just got, I couldn't find the piano. <laughs> but I remember, was it um, one of Sylvester Stallone's? There was a movie he did, and was it um, Stop or My Mum Will Shoot? Oh, and oh, it was a case really of his mom, and it, there was a, 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 a bit in it. It says, um, he basically said, he made the joke that, who do you think I am, Tango and Cash? He made the joke about a movie he'd been in, and I think it was the Tango and Cash one. It, I can't remember if it, who was in. It was Sylvester Stallone and... Um, I think, Kurt, Kurt I think it was. Uh, so Sylvester Stallone and Kurt Russell, that, that, the Tango and Cash. Uh, I think yeah. so, but... So I'm sure it was one, but that's what I'm saying. They made a reference in one movie to another movie that he starred in, and is, and I thought it was quite. It, I like it when they did that. But even at that, it you knew what you were getting with Tango and Cash. You knew it was a formulaic type because they were in they, they were a successful movie type. Yeah, and it's a different play on the same thing, and that's what I liked about a lot of the other ones. But even that was like. Um, Ice Pirates, for instance, that was oh, we'll need to jump in the Star Wars bandwagon. But it was, you can't say it was a great movie, but it was a fun movie. Yes, Ron, Ron Perlman. Um, you had Bing, uh, Bing Crosby's daughter. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you just had it was a fun movie. And that's what you what you had at the time. There was ones that weren't great, but they were fun. So you could get away with having cheaper effects and stuff like that. It's like Big T says in the chat. Um, they don't seem keen on entertaining anymore. Yeah, they want to educate. Mm. Yeah. So when did you actually get kicked out? <laughs> well, I had to actually kick myself out because my whole system just completely froze. Mm. And um, it started off, everybody started sort of juddering and I could tell I was just about to sort of crash. So I sort of did a quick restart just to see if it would let me back in. Good. But I don't know what it is, at the time of the night sometimes it just gets a little bit, a little bit odd, the weather gets it, gets it. <laughs> <laughs> at least you wouldn't let me sort of thought, um and just freezing like that. Or... That's what everybody was sort of frozen, yeah. Right. <laughs> I, still get, I still get slagged with that one, falling asleep. Yes, yes. But it was <laughs> such a perfect Somebody, shot. You know, took a great, <laughs> took a great shot. Yeah. <laughs> and even when uh, Jim's actually crashed, it didn't have the same slot. It just actually looked as if it was looking at the camera. And he, <laughs> like, <it's basically. laughs> so I tried to get the shot and it just wasn't the same. Mind you, I've got one of one and sitting in work, and I was sitting talking to the we were build, rebuilding the network. So I was just sitting and I was sitting like that, thinking and what I was talking. So my friend came over and took the picture, and because I was sitting like that, he says, "See, I told you you were sleeping." I says, "I was talking to you when you took the photo, and I heard it." 
He says, I know you were sleeping because the picture says so. And he was telling everybody I had fallen asleep in work. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to him as he came over and took the picture. Just so happened I was sitting like that, looking up. Yeah. Because you couldn't see my eyes. It looked as if I'd fallen asleep on the chair. And I thought, you're <laughs> cheeky bugger. But he told everybody I'd fallen asleep and showed the picture to prove it. And he knew, and I, and basically, I had heard him. I talked to him, and he still denies the fact that I was talking to him because he <laughs> remembers taking the picture, and it shows me I was sleeping. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I'll get him back one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> In regards to what uh, Big Team Moore said, uh, there's a um, there's a video by a guy oh, called um, Thor Thor Two. It's like it's um, basically yes. Thought, oh, yes, yeah. um, it's Thirty Two. Yeah, uh, Thirty Two. I, I basically I'm subscribed to him. I know what you're talking about. It's the one where he talks about how the media, you know, the, the film industry works today. Yeah. He he does some really good stuff. That forty two, yeah, he does. We watch him. Yeah, we sub subscribe to him as well. Because I was thinking, is it the the pushing ideology, or is it the fact that they've got this model for how to do, you know, how to convey a simple message, and then the add the ideology in? Someone a certain See, interested party does it, puts it in. See, I think um, disaster there has got it right. They don't want to take a gamble in anything new. It's a case of Star Star Trek. Oh, we've already got an audience for that, yeah. and then they give it to people well, they did who have. have got a message they want to put across, and they don't care as long as they actually put something out. And it, it basically Netflix and all that, they basically just want content. They don't really care if it drags people in because all they need to say is we've got a new Star Trek, we've got a new Star Wars, we've got the Lord of the Rings, we've got this. And it's a case of that brings people in because people hear, oh, new Star Wars is starting on this or the new Lord of the Rings is starting on that. And then it doesn't matter. It's a case of they're not taking a gamble in anything new because they don't need to advertise. They, as Disaster there says, remakes save money on advertising. So if you advertise something, you could go out and say, come to Joe Blog's streaming service because we've got the new Babylon 5 show. Yeah. Right? Or come to Joe Blog's streaming service because we've got the killer of the, the, the monster under the bed show. I wonder what that is. I've never heard of that. So they have to put more advertising out to tell you what it's about and what it's in me. So... That's the thing. How much advertising you're going to spend? Just say the word Babylon 5. People understand it because it's got a big following and they'll come over and see it. Or you have to explain this and give trailers for that and posters and synopsis and all that for a new movie type to let people know what to expect. But with Star Wars, they've killed the cash cow, haven't they? Of course. They've done that right across the board. You look at Doctor Who, Star Trek, Star Wars. It's basically they're just... They're more interested in the, as they said, the platform than the entertainment. Mm -hmm. And so that's basically killing the cash cow. But the people who are thinking, they just, they, they know the words Doctor Who, Star Trek, they must be popular because they're so well known. So here's the money to go and make it. And then well, with uh, streaming services, they just shove it in at the back. People can't actually get the, the details because it's only details that have been released. So, but, but it's effective though because there are. I mean, I've spoken to people who say that they, um, I, you just get the sense with some viewers that they really do believe this. That, um, look, I have to, um, show my daughter these, um, these films about female empowerment to convince her that she can be all she can be. And that if I, that if I don't, that I'm letting her down as a parent and the media's yeah. letting her down if they don't show these kind of things. See, that's where I'm as a father of three daughters, mm -hmm. Bill. Sorry? Oh, and and I, I know that that's what they're thinking. People actually have been told. But no, see, yeah, my three sisters, my mum, they basically weren't they weak. Sorry? Daughters Sorry. are actually brought up to be strong, independent, who they are. Don't yeah. let don't listen to me, who you are, be yourself, who you are, same as everybody. But it's yes, the, the media are too busy telling people that they should think this way, they should act this way, they should show their kids this, they should show their kids that. And my attitude is that is no, that's the parents' responsibility to tell kids how to act and how, how to be, 
not the media, not the teachers, not the government. Yeah, well, I, I never understood the message um, when they are like screaming on Twitter or whatever it is that they're doing. Is like, because there's never been a strong, empowered woman. No woman can ever dream to aspire to become that themselves because there hasn't been a strong female astronaut. There can yeah. never be a strong female astronaut. It's like, that's not how it works. If you have a dream, if you have something you want to do, yeah, you go for it. Yeah. As, as, the, as, as the media tell us that up until about five years ago, there was never a movie with a female lead. So Alien didn't count. Um, all those movies didn't count. Wonder Woman with uh, Linda Carter didn't count because that was not led by a woman. Buffy the Vampire Slayer didn't count because no. not led by a woman. And you're sitting there thinking, these people just are nuts. Yeah. It, it, it's because yeah, they've been told that this is the message. The character is look at stuff in the, the past because even at times where, yes, you had may have had men at the top determining stuff, they still realise that, well, yes, of course, women could be strong and look at these type of women. And it's that aspect of it is you're getting guys who are turning around and saying, I bet I am, you never saw that before. Sorry, have you ever watched movies and TV shows in the 80s, 60s, 70s, whatever? There always was. It's just that you are, are seeing it through blinkered media perception that these things never existed. Yeah. Well, if, if you look at, say, something like Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Yeah. In in terms of, shall we say, physical uh, dominance, who's the third strongest? It would be uh, Linda Hamilton. Because uh -huh. you have Schwarzenegger, yeah. you have Patrick, but then it's her. But Patrick and Schwarzenegger, because they're robots, they're obviously stronger, but she's yeah. then the strongest after that. Yeah. Sarah Connor was always a strong character. Even her claim to that role in the first movie whereas she was just somebody going on doing the job and just living life and then she's been thrown in at the deep end and then by the end of that movie she's hmm. the one taking care of business yep but apparently these films were never made yep they, they, they haven't existed well it was just crazy as well because i mean I don't know. It's just even some of the older ones, I just don't know where they go with this. And that's why I suppose that I've always avoided the new stuff. But I'm trying new things. So, because I've been asked a couple of times to, what did I think of new movies? So that's why I tried the uh, Tomorrow War. And that's why I'm going to try uh, Boss Level for next week. Do or do not, uh, there is no try when it comes to boss level. I, th I think you will thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah. See, the um, problem is that I find is I'm, I'm a skeptic. So I go in, yes, like you, we'll use uh, Tomorrow War as an example. I was already a skeptic going in, but I thought, People have said, get a watch, it's quite entertaining. So I put it on, but I was doing other stuff. And I thought, oh, that's actually not too bad. It's really good, the the, the animation, the, the 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 scenes that I was watching. That's not too bad. So I re-watched it again. And I was sitting there going... You know, I was a bit like that with um, The Force Awakens. Because like, um, first time you watch it, like it's um, it is a roller coaster ride. And you kind yeah. of you don't think about it, and then you kind of things nag you about like okay, wait a minute, that didn't make sense, and um, and then after the last, like I came, I came home from the last Jedi thinking, you know what, I want to watch, I'll watch the Force Awakens again just to kind of wipe the, you know, stench away from what I've just watched, just to kind of get back into the, you know, just to you know just re-experience a good Star Wars film, and watching it, you just think because of the last Jedi, all of it just seemed pointless. Yeah, don't seem to matter. It was just like it was going nowhere. All of it. So yep. I just, well, I, I saw the review. Um, they were talking about. I'm trying to remember who did the review. They were talking about how they were saying that J.J. Abrams actually 
couldn't it couldn't actually do well because he had to, too many things he had to fix from Ryan Johnston's movie to do the final one. And then he pointed out and says, um, who was the executive producer on Ryan Johnston's movie? J.J. Abrams. <laughs> so he already knew what was happening. So being the executive producer, he would have had to give the okay. So you can he actually say it was Ryan Johnston that screwed up the... What was the last movie? I can't remember because I've not watched them. Um, it was um, it was the Force Awakens and the Last Jedi, and then finally the Rise of Skywalker. Rise of Skywalker. So he's saying they were saying basically justifying why the Rise of uh, the Rise of Skywalker was so bad because he had to fix everything that J.J. Abrams did. And I'm and it says, well, who was the executive producer in the <coughs> J, uh, the Ryan Johnston one? J.J. Abrams. I, so know, he I, already knew all these things beforehand. So he would have had some say in it. So they can't just say. The reason the, the Rise of Skywalker was so bad is because Ryan Johnson. Sorry, J.J. Abram was involved in that movie as well, so you can't just say it was all his fault that his movie was crap. You know, I have to I say... Would, and I think it, overall it is not good. I haven't seen the last one. I've seen the reviews. I think it was everyone from Critical Drinker to the, the usual suspect when it comes to movie reviews who just poured over in it. For me... I was tolerant of the, the Lucas one, two, three, but uh, after half an hour in on the, the the first one, the Force Awakens, it's like this isn't Star Wars. That there is it's Star Wars on the poster, but inside it's no, not it's Star Wars. Star Wars, um, was it not a rehash of one in um, basically Star Wars and the Empire Strikes Back? It was it, yeah. It was just a... uh, basically, it was just a rehash of that. So basically, somebody said, "Right, let's do the next version by copying the, those two. And you're sitting there thinking, "It's just a basically just remaking it." So it's it's not a continuation; it's just a remake. Ah, but it's a continuation. But they just remade it. I bet it's a continuation, yeah. really, by doing the exact same story. By um, saying it's a continuation by doing the exact same. And that's where I get, I mean, I thought, oh, I'm so glad I, I didn't watch these because I didn't like the prequels either. The prequels to me were junk. <coughs> and I can understand why people like them because it's all done by the same writer and it's the same universe and stuff like that. But oh, no, God, no. There was no uh, for, for me, and, it's always four, five, six. Um, one, no. two, and three are acceptable. Sorry, there is Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, and Revenge of the, uh, the Jedi, and that is it. There's no four, five, six. There is just those three. So it's A New Hope, uh, Empire Strikes Back. No, and... it's Star Wars. It's not A New Hope. <laughs> For me, it's A New Hope, because that's and how I grew up with it. Taking the one, two, three as the four, five, six. The thing is... Yeah, I grew up. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a wee bit older. Is it was Star Wars, and the, it was not a New Hope. It was never called a New Hope until they brought in the prequels. So I don't count the prequels. So that's to me, it's Star Wars. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Unfortunately, we had all the, all of it translated. So it's uh, when they when they crashed out again. Uh, oh, you, she can't rejoin us. Oh. She she doesn't know why she's not sure why it's did it so she okay. that was all it was yeah and big Timor the Disney Star Wars was badly written and had no plan just you know, I say, one thing I will say about Rise of Skywalker it was better than I had any than I expected it was like given the salvage job it had to do on the Last Jedi I thought well well it's it's it, again I thought you know there was I thought it like it, it had Everything against it, and um, yeah, but it wasn't, you, it wasn't good. You think it about was... it not being a salvage job, you think about it being a continuation of the previous movie. That's what that article I read was talking about. Yes, if it's a salvage job, he had a difficult job to do to bring it back from the Ryan Johnston movie. However, if he's involved in the Ryan Johnston movie and he knew what was happening all the way along then it's not a salvage job because he agreed to the stuff before his movie was written. So it's, if you think about it like that, is it as good? 
because it's not a salvage job. Do you see what I mean? Yeah. That article just changed the way you look at it. You look at um look at it and uh, if you look at it as a salvage job, yeah. If somebody writes something crap in the middle and you have to try and get all that back and plan, then you can understand why things didn't make as much sense. But if you take that and then actually go back to that movie and think, well, actually, that was in the two of them actually wrote that together or produced it together and filmed it and did that. So he knew what was happening all the way along. Then does the third one make a one it rebuilds it or tries to rehash it and bring it all back together? Or is it just a continuation on that he realized that they screwed up and he's just quite happy to blame the previous movie? It's, 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 that's what I'm saying about a different way of looking at it. Do you see well, for, for me, title didn't really make sense when they said The Last Jedi uh, because canon, and yes, I've read all the articles. Apparently, one of the big. We are talking about the Rise of Skywalker. There, there is no. There is no oh, yeah, but th th there is no canon. There is no information about it. But this is like the, the universe lore is that. The Jedi's and even the Sith, they can't get their hands on all the, the four sensitive people mm -hmm. because it's it's just so big. So there is always Jedi's and Sith, although yeah. it's an ideology, not something you are because if, if you can wield the force, we, we tend to say you're a Jedi or you're a Sith, but you're a force wielder. But they can't get hold of all of them. So there would always be force users around. So it would never be any last jedi at least not in my mind from the extended universe that i've read about the the games everything the way i would look at it is wheel of time the the white tower may fall but there'll always be a sedai because they are wielders of the one power hmm. they might not be in a structure and they might not have trained but like the naive the wisdoms and other Towns will be the ones that learn how to use it. They just don't understand it. Same well, idea. It, 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 although never properly explained, it's likely how so much of the knowledge got lost throughout time about yeah, but, the, the the ancient times. Yeah, but you look at the, the Jedi in in the same respect. If the Jedi order fell and the Sith order fell, or there was only the two Sith and there was only maybe one or two Jedi in the whole of the galaxy, then there's going to be people who are no understand it and don't understand it but they just they pick it up but they don't know what they're doing and they just their mind can and sees it another way because they don't know about jedis and sith but well, that's where i think the disney made the biggest mistake they just bought a franchise and didn't bring in say subject matter experts people with deep knowledge about and saying, no, no, this is what's been established. This is where the story goes. Yeah. This is what the universe is like. You can do whatever story you want. Yeah. Uh, but these are certain things that are making this the Star Wars universe. But <laughs> Big T Moore is not wrong. He's not wrong. But I, I, see, the thing is, I can understand. See, if somebody says they like it, who who are we to actually turn around and say they're not? That's like them turning around and saying you're sexist because you don't like this character or this movie or you're wrong because you don't like it because people like what they like. How many times have we got we like something that other people go, really? You like that? Yep. I can understand if somebody likes it, they like it. It doesn't matter what. However, if they can't explain, if they just think it's great, but they can't explain it, then why did they, or why they like it? Like, for instance, there's certain movies that people actually go, you like that? Can't help it, I enjoy it. Hmm? And but just, when, when it comes to the complaint or the, the, the defense, if you like, uh, oh, you didn't like the latest Star Wars film, but you're sexist. I say, I'm not even that granular that I go down to the individual in the film. Mm -hmm. the, the, the film overall it's just not star wars for me i'm not gonna say like you're trying to to point out i'm not gonna say it's good or bad for me just you don't these like are, 
Yeah, no, no, it's not dislike. It's just not Star Wars. It's the see it's the, the similar. It's like I've I've been saying to you, like, um, Daniel and stuff like that as well, and so that we were talking about Doctor Who, as if I like classic stuff. Mm. I'm not into the new stuff at all. If somebody says, "Fine, I like the new stuff," don't really like the classic stuff. I say, "Fine," but if they turn around and say, "Well, you're wrong for liking the classic stuff and not liking the new stuff," then my automatic is they're wrong. Full stop. End of story. Because they can't tell me I'm wrong for liking something they don't like. And that's where I have the issue with it. Does no matter what, if somebody likes it and they like it, big deal. I don't well, it doesn't affect me if somebody likes something I don't like. But if they tell me I'm wrong for liking stuff that they don't like. Yeah. I mean, I am I'm a very, very casual Doctor Who watch show uh, at the best of times. But I, I've seen the newer stuff. And unfortunately, the latest one, there's a very big thing missing for me being a casual viewer. And it, that is, there's nothing standing out making the last or the latest Doctor unique. Like all the others, they had quirky traits, mm -hmm. um, a, a prop, uh, a hat, uh, a, a certain mannerism. Yeah, they were, they were alien enough. They stood out, but this last one, the few episodes I've seen, it just feels like a cardboard copy of a human. There's there nothing there. Actually, I can only disagree with you there because they're not a cardboard copy of a human. They're a cardboard copy of a, an orc, um, Mork. <laughs> Mork from Orc. From, um, yeah. Yeah. See, I couldn't see an orc because that basically, I mean, so I had to mention orc Mork. But but you, you know, I mean, it's just a case of if you don't like something, fine, no issue. You are not, nobody can say you have to like it. But as soon as they do, then that makes somebody wrong. Because if they're saying you have to do something, they're effectively turning around saying, your will does the matter, you have to listen to me. Sorry. Yeah, no. no. I have to listen to nowadays is my wife. Apart from that, no. I'm an adult. I don't need to listen to anybody and, and ag agree with anybody. And so that thing. The, the, there is this, that baseline. You know what you like in terms of entertainment, story, everything. Uh, I mentioned earlier in the stream, one of my favorite topics is the post apocalyptic world building. Um, Mad Max. Mad Max is absolutely brilliant. But there are tons of other stories in books, audio books, uh, even comic books as well, mm -hmm. where, where they have that. Uh, and I like the fact that it's more escapism for me, or, or more readily just jump into, uh, because you don't have electricity, you don't have running water, there are zombies chasing you, or whatever, um, whatever danger there is that is out there. Uh, and I do find myself drawn to those kind of stories, but also massive galactic empire. So Dune, I'm having very high hopes for it, but I've loved Dune, uh, not read the books for forever. So for me, yeah. most of the stuff will be new again, and I'm hoping they're going to do more than just um, try to stay within a very comfortable, comfortable story. But it looks like they are trying to play up a little bit more with the, the conflicts and everything. So, fingers crossed. Um, looks shining. Looks like it has potential. And I think that's pretty much the only thing we're going to get this year that yeah. might be better than the I rest. Don't know. I'm quite happy. I'll stick with the original Dune. Although I did find the original Dune movie quite slow and boring at places. But I'm, um, I'm looking forward to the sequel, July. <laughs> Do I? <laughs> or is it you lie? <laughs> <laughs> I know, terrible. So, what's this one? <laughs> Cam Cam the Chef. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I uh, Cam Cam saw the first uh, Star Wars finally saw it in the drive in 1979 with his dad. 
can't you can't complain. I basically it was the I'd got it wrong the last time. The first movie I saw with my dad was um Superman. Mm-hmm. Christopher Reeves, the the donor Superman. That was the first one my dad had taken me to. The second one he ever took me to was the second Star Wars movie was eighty one. Oh, I am Pie Strikes Back. Yeah, Aye. it might have been eighty one because um, I know it was released. In, it was released in nineteen eighty. It might have been um because I know back then they <laughs> films would stay on at the cinema for a while. Yeah, they? but it's remember uh, in the US it may have actually been released first before it came over here. Oh, so yeah. it could have been the uh, beginning eighty one, and it's just because it, uh, it never at the time you never got releases at the same time all over the place because. There wasn't the internet, so there wasn't a case of uh, spoilers and stuff like that, of people actually getting told what it was. So they could release it in the States and then release it over here a month later. So it could have been that. But, yeah, that was the two movies my dad took me to saw. And that, the thing is, that's how I grew up when I took my kids. Because the first time... Because you know what it's like when you went to cinema, you had the juice... Shoved in your jumper, so you could get in, so you didn't need to buy sweets and crisps and juice and all that in the cinema because it was expensive. My dad took us, got his hot dogs, got his juice, the big carton of juice and everything. We are me and my brother were, this is great, this is the best time I've ever had. So when I took my kids, my and none of this taking stuff in with them and hiding it in a bag and stuff like that. No. Hot dogs, nachos, big bucket of juice and popcorn. Made, made it a day out to remember. And that's how I always took my kids. That's how I always treated cinema. It is... Yeah. It's like you make it in the evening. It, like you say, a big day out. It's, yeah. it's meant to be entertaining. You're meant to spoil yourself a little bit. And I will say with my home cinema setup, okay, it isn't the perfect setup yet. Uh, I still do stuff like I go out and get microwave popcorns and like Maltesers, all that stuff that you really shouldn't have too much of, but nice new film, nice big screen, and it's the food that makes the atmosphere a little bit. How would you look at that? That's from my movie. That's from my movie. My, my big bags and I've also got a load of other stuff in there. That's for when I'm sitting watching the movies at home. Post-apocalyptic, Jim. Don't you mean present-day events? <laughs> well, um, on that note, if, if I'm going to... Um, sorry, on, ahead, that note, on that note, I'm going to... Um, I'm a bit beat. I'm probably going to have to uh, log off. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, you. Thank you for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, you. remember to join us in Wednesday for our final yeah. Red Dwarf. Catch it there. See you, Jim. See you. See you, See you Sadako. See you, Sadako, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. He's got a head start already. <laughs> <laughs> but then, um, what was I saying? What was I saying? Uh, I saw Cam Cam's one there about the second part. Of Dune, no second part will be made of the new Dune is a waste of time. Saw Superman with him too. I fell asleep at the beginning of Star Trek, though <laughs> I wasn't impressed. <laughs> the, that was Star Trek the motion picture. That was a very slow movie because that was not really meant to be a movie. It just get dragged out, and because of the Star Wars, uh, basically they had to throw out a movie. So that was Star Wars, the motion picture technically wasn't meant to be a motion picture. But but wasn't it do, doing place on other uh, or well, it tried to be as artistic as uh, the Kubrick one with long sweeping mo- like shots trying to have music and visuals to like build up the emotion? I mean personally I think the intro to, to it, it's gorgeous it's yeah. just boring well, and that's long. It. It's just almost a case of the. It's the slow reveal, as if the slow reveal is going to actually keep people interested. Sorry, the reveal is the thing, not the big slow build up to get there. 
I want to see it, yes. I want to see the ship. I want to see this. I want to see that. But I don't want to spend 15, 20 minutes going along the hill going, look how nice it is. No. Yeah. I want to see the ship. Don't want to see wee bits of sections. That type of thing, yes. It was almost a case of, right, we've got we've got it for 40 minutes. What now? Mm, well, we can't add a story to it. We can't add anything else in. Okay, like stand, extend that bit. That will give us the hour and ten minutes or whatever. It's almost that, that, that. That's what I felt as if they were doing. They wanted to extend it because I knew it wasn't meant to be a movie. Yeah, but but you see, when it comes to ship introduction in a film, the best ever is uh, Galaxy Quest. Literally within five minutes, they scratch the paint. Yes. I love Galaxy Quest. I told you the last time I was up at Calendar in the Toy Museum in the shop, they had two Galaxy Quests. I just didn't have the cash to buy them. Oof. Or else I would have. And it's the same size as my um, War of the Worlds. So it was. But it was nice. um, 55 quid. I just didn't have the cash because I wanted the Ash for Evil Dead, which was 35. Which I think was a, a big win. Yes, I think so. If I'd got the King Kong instead, I would have just been as happy. But a boy beat me to that, and I can't complain. He had great taste. <laughs> That's what I get for not picking it up straight away. It's a case of, oh, I wanted that, but I had chose to actually leave it in case I saw something up at the Toy Museum that I wanted instead. So I lost out because I couldn't make up my mind. So correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there some King Kong Godzilla film coming out recently? Um, there was uh, basically oh. fairly recently. It was um, was it six months, eight months ago? Uh, I haven't ha- had time to get around to see that because the the last one I saw is the um, Matthew Broderick one. Um, yeah, no, there was a newer one, and I'm trying to think. It was the one with King Kong with the axe. He made, uh, they made it. He made an axe. He fell. Asleep, uh, they they drugged him, and basically was on a. It's super, just a Jack Black uh, one, perhaps. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to remember the timeline. No, no, Jack the Black one was the, that was that silly one with King Kong, where they were actually making the movie type thing when they tried to actually remake the King Kong, the original King Kong, whereas they had the dinosaurs running down that valley and people are running between the legs as if that would work no that no that jack black one it's it's basically godzilla v kong or kong v godzilla yeah it's fairly new and it's all about the big fight between kong and godzilla it's not the one with the lasers and everything the the extreme japanese versions that i've seen only snippets of because i haven't really found myself keen on digging into it because basically it's just big creatures walking around in a big city just smashing buildings yeah it uh, some of it looks really really interesting though i will say that but that never really got into the like the total mass destructions yeah i see see i like the monster movie. i've got all the japanese monster movies i've got them all i do like them and even the dub ones, uh, the ones that are, are subtitled, it's I just love the Gion and Ghidorah and uh, Ga- I just love, I love them. I can't help it. I just love monster flicks, and I was a big King Kong fan. According to my mum, when I was a kid, when I first saw King Kong, I cried when King Kong f- was shot off the the. World Trade Center, or not a World Trade Center. It is a sad scene because he didn't really mean to. to, to I was a kid, kid and it was no meant to be. um, It's meant to be a sad scene, but you know what it's like with kids. No, it's a big monster. I had a monster get killed, but no, accordingly, I was, I was in tears. So my mum used to always remind me of that and how I was scared of uh, the Daleks and stuff like that. But. She didn't actually flag me for it. She just used to remember me, people. Aye, it's a big softy because he used to cry about King Kong. But King Kong, the original, is one of, well, is one of my favourite movies of all time. And I loved The Mighty Joe Young as well. That's another monster flick of the same era, the 50s. 
Well, you're, you're a father yourself, and you know kids tend to make friends with stuff that are dangerous. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, yeah. that, that therefore, in we my mind, someone liking or rooting <laughs> for King Kong is not we, wrong. We call them boyfriends. <laughs> As fathers, yes. Uh, where's the shotgun? Uh, <laughs> I, no, I see. I always had. I always had a thing. I always used to invite the 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 um, their boyfriends in and show them my knife and gun collection. I don't know why my kids never really had a problem. <laughs> I wonder why. I don't know why. I think it was <laughs> Bill Engwell that said it best uh, in one of his stand-up comedy shows. Uh, he ropes in the kid when he comes to the front porch just before the daughter comes down the stairs, and he's like, "I have no issues." going back to prison again. And that just lets him go away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things. It's just a dad thing. It's the same as... Um, my dad used to say... Because um, it was a typical... Sisters used to say, uh, say to my dad. They would watch a movie and they would say, Dad, would you die for me? Because they would see somebody stepping in front of a bullet or something like that. Dad, would you die for me? He said, no, I would kill for you. <laughs> and I thought, that, that, that's the right response. I'm not dying for you, but I'll make sure I'll, uh, they're not going to get in that situation because whoever threatens you is going to go down. So uh, that was my dad's attitude was, I'm not dying for you, but I'll kill for you. It's also a clever answer to like sidestep the question. Yeah. <laughs> But it is, it's just basically, it's one of those things, it's a father thing. It's the same as mothers as well. Basically, fathers and mothers are there to protect their kids. That's why you get, that's basically what they're there for. That's why kids are helpless. If kids were not meant to be protected, then they would, they would be like any other animal. They would basically be born ready to fend them for themselves. Yep, yeah, that's bit of a weird thing that we have as humans it's like what well, it takes us a year to learn how to walk and everything and you look at the horse it's like poof, two minutes and later it's up and running and it's like yeah really <laughs> what? exactly and it's basically basically animals know they have to fend for themselves you look at them if we weren't like that we were meant to be just out and helpless and just hopefully to survive then we wouldn't have one or two kids at a time there would be like 50 or 60 kids like a tortoise, it basically just lays the eggs. And they're crawling maybe, across the beach. Yes. And maybe one or two of the thousands that are hatched survive into adulthood. Yeah. So there's basically that's that's kids are helpless and that's why you're that's why they bond or you bond with your children. It's basically protect them till they get to the stage where they can protect themselves. But it's just that that's just a natural instinct of the animal kingdom. You look at even things like cubs, lions, tigers, whatever. The the cubs learn, and then once they're at the point where they can defend themselves, it's a case of bye. And then you basically do it because otherwise, then as soon as your competition, that's it. Yep, but, that's no good. But as long as they're cubs, they basically they're getting taught, they're being protected. And that's just animal's instinct, but aren't we all? We've all got instincts. It's just a case of the people who ignore it. They are the ones that should be. I think I definitely seen damage of big city living uh, on a lot of people with zero concept of even something as having food for more than two, three days at home. Mm -hmm. I was like, Really? When I grew up, it was like we did a monthly shopping. That was food for 28 days for five people. Yeah, uh, yeah. There was seven people in our house. Me, my brother, my three sisters, my mom and dad. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and my mom used to go out. She used to hate my dad going with her because my mom would go out once a week to get the big shopping. But if my dad went with her, it was a month shopping because he would just go, Right, instead of one tin of this and one tin of that, you just go 15 tins. That'll do as the month. <laughs> Mom just goes, that's doing it. <laughs> She's got her organisation, but my dad would just go, ah, oh, we could just get, instead of doing it four times a month, just do it all in a one go. <laughs> she would go nuts. But that's just typical family, isn't it? 
Yeah. Uh, all, all I remember is uh, the shopping went quick. It was the storage and the logistics of like making sure you tucked everything in once you got back home that just took the rest of the day. Yeah. I'm just actually trying to find that um, Godzilla v Kong movie. It's really annoying me. But because um, believe it or not, the one you're talking about is that one. I think. Yeah, that, that looks familiar. Where he's fighting the three T Rexes. Yes. Oh, uh, the, the, the back picture looked more familiar than the front picture. Yeah, that's the Jack Black one. Yeah, basically, yes, that bit with his fight with the T-Rexes. That's the Jack Black one. But the one you're looking for is... I have got it somewhere, but I can't find the thing. It's typical. You always look for it, and then it's basically... I don't think I've actually got the DVD of it. I've got the Godzilla movie, but I've not got the one of both of them together. The movie with uh, Kong v Godzilla. I'm just actually digging it out. Should be a IMDb in here, but my network is running really slow. Um, Sky Broadband. So I'm on Sky. They had some weird issues uh, yesterday, uh, rolling blackouts and sites not being accessible through mobile broadband and phone. Uh -huh. uh, not sure what it was, but. Um, it seems it it's is. been slow for me for a good 24 30 hours now maybe uh, it's actually been okay but it's just for some reason it's a wee bit clunky right i'm going to just share this screen hopefully it'll actually come up it says it's connecting so i'm just trying to wait for it to connect otherwise we just get black screen really weird right that's there that's the the move that's the the movie right hold on Kong, a Godzilla v Kong, that's the new movie. So it is. So when is this? Is this the one come that came this out this a, year? Yes, it came out. Um, the date. Um, da, da. Funnily enough, it's being played. Uh, the main Trent actor Trent. is Tarzan. Yeah, look, there it's there, and that's the trailer for it as well on the, the site. But it's basically this year it was so. Yeah, da -da. I'm just trying to actually see it. There it's there. Legends collide as Godzilla and Kong, the two most powerful forces of nature, clash on the big screen in a spectacular battle for the ages. As a, uh, a squadron embark on a perilous mission into fantastic uncharted terrain, unearthing clues to the Titans' very origins and mankind's survival, a conspiracy threatens to wipe the creatures both good and bad from the face of the earth forever so and basically um, but that uh, that's the original Godzilla movie that one there I shouldn't have actually clicked that because it'll take an age and then you've got the court mm. oh, you're right you, you do have delay yeah but but I don't uh, have this delay I don't know what it is I'm trying to think if there's anything running on my machine. Um, nothing. It should, should be network connectivity rather than any yeah. other but issues. My, accordingly, my network connectivity is actually coming up as solid. But that's the Godzilla there. That was the, you see the, the icon there? That was the Godzilla one, and that's the trailer that's been played in the background. But that was the Godzilla one which I didn't like much. It means you, there's not been any really great. And that's the Kong one there. See it? Uh, Kong Island. It's uh, Skull Island. Uh, uh, that one actually looked more like, uh, I was going to say, Vietnam War movie it's, it's, before it's I saw Kong in the background. Yeah, it's basically because of the, there is a, a bit where you see all the, the helicopters get in, they're playing that type of music as well, and then Kong appears and swats them all out the sky. So you had Godzilla, King of the Monsters, but you also had an earlier Godzilla one as well. I to don't think I've one, seen any of those three. Um, but that's the Kong v Godzilla one there, or the Godzilla v Kong is the latest one. So it was. 
See, the thing is, it used to give an actual date of its release, but this one is just given the year, but which is weird. Because it used to actually give an actual release date. Uh, they usually do that for countries, so it might yeah. be under a subsection, but uh, yeah. yeah. But that's basically that's the one. Um it's the most recent one. The one with the Jack Black is that one there. And it's just called King Kong. It was just a remake, almost I wouldn't say a shot for shot remake, but it was a remake of the, in the premise, as in it was set during the the thirties and four or the twenties. So it was, and it was a film maker going to um, try and catch it and film it, but they basically messed it up because they tried to do all the CGI dinosaurs and they're all running down in the middle of the dinosaurs getting running down is, and they're all running at top speed, yet they're meant to be in amongst, amongst all these dinosaurs running at top speed and the only occasional one is getting stamp, stamped on and stuff like that. It just was nuts. You imagine actually a dog running, um, a, a, a herd of elephants running, and then a dog running in the middle of the pack. Mm -mm. How often is that dog going to survive with all those legs? It would and be it, dog pancake in no time. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They were doing it, and it, the, it, the Jack Black one was just pants. It was just naff. The Godzilla movies weren't that great. The first one was, it didn't look like Godzilla. The second one, it looked like Godzilla. But it was just, I don't know, it just wasn't Godzilla enough. <laughs> it's a weird thing. and the I'm not a connoisseur to that level, so I can't say what Godzilla is or not. It's for, it for me, it's basically like Godzilla, giant yeah. lizard. Yeah, it looked more like Godzilla, but there was just something about it. Because uh, Godzilla's been played both the hero of the story or the villain of the story throughout the Japanese run. It's always been either or. It's it's always been a force of nature, but sometimes it actually helps, sometimes it hinders. Because if it's a Godzilla movie and no other monsters, it's usually Godzilla is the problem that they have to stop. If there's another monster in it, unless it's things like Mothra, if it's another monster in it, then it's usually Godzilla's the force of good that destroys the other monster or fights off the other monster it's things like that it really depends on the type of movie yeah but um what was that i was gonna say robot jocks um you seen big demons not seen angry monkey v angry lizard movie but seen kong skull island all all right but have a all right to have on in the background, background music the background um in the movie it is good because it's one of those ones it's. I suppose it's like um, Tomorrow War. It's something you can have on and something happens. You could sit and watch it and then get back to doing it without really boring about the story because there is a lot of good set piece. The fight with the... There's the fights with those... It's almost like white spikes. They're just very lizard underground things. And... It works because the fight sequences and the CGI and stuff like that is just, it's amazing. But if you really want to worry about the story, it's the same idea. It's just a case of, yeah, bummer. Um, for me, it's usually, I do try to like sink into it and not too often multitask, although I do that with audiobooks. But something I did. See, I can't do that with an audiobook. I have to concentrate on <laughs> an audiobook. When I'm driving, it's different because it's only me in the car. So I yeah. can concentrate on the road a bit, listen, because you, uh, you're you not meant to listen to what's happening outside anyway. Yeah, you don't hear too much what's happening outside the car anyway. But uh, this was years ago. Um, I did to, to get some extra money to study up more of my IT certificates and everything. I worked night shift at Sainsbury's, restocking shelves throughout the entire night at the really big ones. Fine fair, I used to do it in that long ago, but fine fair is no longer with us. Yeah, uh, but uh, what I used to do because you you got assigned an entire aisle, you dragged out everything that needed to get get shuffled. So in the middle of it, I just took down my phone, Bluetooth headset, so I could just walk up and down wherever the stuff needed to go, and I actually listened back to uh, things like Star Trek: The Next Generation, but I didn't have the visuals. All I had was the the story, the music in the background. 
and it, it gave a different dimension to it just listening to how well the dialogues were talking um who who is the danger where is it coming from what do we need to do what do we need to fix and obviously the classic sound effects which everybody knows the the bleeping of the computers the the, the sound of a phaser a, a transporter everything you can immediately identify it yeah so, that, that's why on the background most days i've got some tv show running because it's mostly all classic things I've watched multiple times. It's all up there because I remember it. It's just the, as you said, the words, the sounds that are just visually so. Whereas an audiobook, very rarely that works. Yeah, Be very rarely that they do add like the background noise or everything. Yeah. They, I've actually come across it with some. Um, if they, they don't, they're not exactly doing pew, 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 pew. But uh, they, they are adding a little bit of the, shall we say, mom reads your bedtime story kind of uh, sound yeah. effect. So yes. It's the same as like there's a couple of Blake 7 ones out there um, when they're talking about Zen or Orac. They, they, talk, they go, and then they actually say what Orac's meant to say, but they still have the wee sounds in the background, which would happen in the TV show prior to it. So he would do the calculation, then it would be the... Dot, 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 dot. So the, so even in the book, is there a thing where they would have the wee sound effects just prior to saying it, um, what Orac or Zen said, it really depended. But it's that type of thing, and I thought that's quite good because they don't need a lot of sound effects, but there's just one or two wee bits that always happen when... Orac said something, or when Zen said something, they would always do the the sound effects just prior to it, and I thought that was quite good because you didn't yeah. need what other effects. Well, the same way I trans. Well, I, I'm not sure if it translates, but when I read a book, uh, especially something like Wheel of Time, and you sink into the story, it's literally everything around you just disappears you have the, the the vision around you if you look up from the book obviously it's completely gone but when you're in the book for me i have the forest around me or a bustling city or long dreary roads or when it's you hear the cold wind blowing it, it, it is kind of there it's it's not there physically or really but your imagination builds that extra and it does it the same for audiobooks for me so even though they don't describe absolutely everything, I still do that world building in my head. So it's like forest, trees, color green, rock, river, gray, blue. It exists there like so. It just pops up. Yeah. See, I'm the same. It basically, it's the same as I used to do, um, when I used to do data input a long, long time ago, I used to have a tape deck with headphones my wee tape recorder, and I had got Sharp, um, Robert, um, Bernard Cornwell's Sharp series. So I had I had read the books, but I had mm. them in audible, or audio, CDs. And the first book, Sharp's Regiment, was one of my favourites at the time, so I just kept listening to it and listening to it on the wee tape deck with the wee headphones sitting there and doing all data input. Yeah, I started in data input with these punch cards and stuff like that. But it basically, see, when I first saw the TV show, Sharp, show I, looked, me. I just went, nope, 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 because the characters did not match up with in there. Because the guy, uh, William Gamanara, used to read them. And he used to be able to, he did the voices for each of the characters. So when Hagman was talking, or when Harper was talking, or when Sharp was talking, or, he, I mean, you, he, ha, he had a different voice. And it, it just, but it, it allowed you to picture a character. So when Sean Bean was it, nope. If you had the guy who played Harper as Sharp, it would have worked because it looks was the type of thing you could just imagine. And then yeah. you would have a bigger guy to be the Harper character. But I don't know. It's just you're in there. 
the story of the book told you this is how it looks, and then you look at it on the screen and go, mm, yeah. And I think that's with Ready Player One. Anytime I saw it on the screen, I thought, yep, that's not the character. Yep, that's not the character, because the, the book described the characters and you pictured what you would expect the character to look like. And I think Wheel of Time TV show is going to be just as bad. Yep. Uh, because you're going to have these characters, you've got them in the mind, and then you're going to pop up and you're sitting there thinking, the description is nothing like the guy it's played. Like, some actors can portray a character, even if they don't look like the picture of the character. Uh, but and you first see it, it's always first impressions. So if, let's say, for instance, they've got Perrin Albara, right? And he comes in and he's uh, the same build as me. I would go, nope, that's no Perrin. No. Um... Whereas if you had somebody like The Rock playing Perrin, I would say, nope, that's no Perrin. <laughs> you want somebody a bit stockier, shorter, built like that, it doesn't need to have muscles, but he has to be broad because he's a blacksmith, so he has to... He's, he's basically um, a young, pretty much ready to become a, a rugby bear. player. Uh -huh. He needs to be a bear. Yeah. Yeah, so, but he's stocky, built, and he's because he's a blacksmith, he's got the, the power, the, yeah. the muscles and stuff like that, but he still has to be stocky. So somebody like a, the, the Rock, for instance, yeah, he's got the build, but he's just no the right, he just looks too big. So you're always going to go, that's... But if the actor over the, the thing me has the mannerisms and characteristics described in the books out, then that can change because you can say, well, he's fitted in it. Yes, he might not physically look like him, but he is him. It's yeah, like he Wolverine. embodies... Uh, it's the, like Wolverine, we knew in the comics he was like five foot short, stocky, but um, Hugh Jackman is what Hugh seven Jackman. foot it, eleven. He just went, Doing. Um, but Hugh Jackman has owned that character what 15, 17 years, yeah, and he's owned that character to the point now that when you see the original ones, you're going. It's not really Wolverine because you're so used to Jackman doing it. But yeah. when you first well, saw Wolverine Jackman, was a that short was it Wolverine because he was a short stock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but the thing is, he owned the character, and even though he didn't visually, you thought, no, no, he became he owned the character to the point where the comic book and him were separate entities. You could look at one and look at the other and know both of them are the uh, Wolverine. They're just different personas of Wolverine. The short one in the comic and the tall one in the, the TV show. And it works. So if you've got someone who doesn't look like the character as it's pictured based on the book, but it, they own the character, that's which, fine. Which he, he, he done well across all of them, I will say. It's, yeah. Um, That's only because he owned it. He didn't actually think, oh, well, I need to make sure this, I need to make sure that. He just basically owned the character. And but it, 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 this is also the favour to, say, the, the fans. Mm -hmm. uh, taking charge of saying, okay, I, I got this role. I will do absolutely everything I can to understand what is it this character is supposed to do, how to act and everything. Uh, but to bring it back a little bit to the audiobook, uh, Night When... Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, to bring yeah, it back to the audiobook, it's uh, how surprising, even though you get very minimal description of a character, but the narrator of the audiobook does a little bit of a voice to them, you immediately build everything else around them. Even if you don't get a hair color description, height, uh, clothing, anything, you built the person there immediately. Yeah. But that's the thing. It needs to, they have to embody it. Um, Cam Cam says, I love the sharp books. Never seen the show. Good. The books are better. Same author wrote The Last Kingdom, which I've got somewhere down there behind all my DVDs. Um, do you know what I found with... Um, Bernard Cornwall and his sharp books, the same as the last kind of but he also did um uh 
oh, what was the guy? It was basically an American Civil War. It's because he, he also he knew sword and shield, so he knew mm. tactics, he knew the weaponry. Uh, so that was like the Last Kingdom stuff. And then he did, um, and he knew musketry, cannon, and horse. So he understood the battle tactics, and that's why the sharp ones worked because you, if it, it basically took you into the world of the cavalry charges, the forming square, the the cannonades, the grape shot, and the musketry, and he took you into that world. The same as like the Last Kingdom. It was the, I think the Last Kingdom was the next, but they also did one about Vikings. But he took you into those worlds uh, that you can see the soldiers, uh, the the shield walls, or the 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 men at arms and stuff like that. He took you into yeah. those worlds because you, he understood the battle tactics, the weaponry, and how things were done. And that's what I liked about his books. And who is? Yeah, so I was just yeah. going to give a nod to that. The, the one thing I will say, Peter Jackson, for my visual mind, got correct, was the Balrog. Not yeah, because the visual look of it uh, matched what's been on artwork for forever, but uh, the moments up until you get to see him. It's, it's literally, there's something very dangerous coming. Yeah. And I, the, the, I know what you're meaning because there is a lot, there is stuff out there that I've watched and I'm sitting there thinking, it doesn't quite match. It just does not, it does not gel. No, it does. It just does not gel with how I see things, which is unfortunate because sometimes you miss something good because your head is going, mm, 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 mm. and yeah. you know, and the, the, the thing is, we know sometimes that that looks really good, but it just doesn't match what's in there, and that's trying to get away from that. Uh, I was going to give kind of a caution because you said you did data entry and you were listening to an audiobook. Uh, I've done the same thing. There, there's one thing you need to look out for if you're crunching in tons of numbers is that it is a, a scientific kind of book because I tried to do that with The Martian, the audiobook. Um, and unfortunately, there is a lot of pirate ninjas in there. So if you heard the book or read the blog post, if you haven't, I would highly recommend it because it's it's about 10, 10 hours, 20 minutes on audiobook. Do not get the Will Wheaton version. Uh, there is another one out there. Uh, they say his name is R.C. Bray. I'm all, always reading that out in my mind as something uh, laughing R. at you. R.C. Bray. <laughs> but the, um, see... I would recommend the one Will Wheaton one that I liked, and it's he it did seem to enjoy the book as much as I did when he was reading it, and that was Ready Player One. Yep, I already have it. Um, it is on my to watch list, uh, what to listen list. Uh -huh. um, where is it? Oh, um, what's the one? I don't know why I picked it up, uh, but it had like a charm to it. Yeah, it is uh, Richard Fox uh, Terra Nova Chronicles. I recognize it from somewhere. I just don't recall why. And it's both book one and two, and I got it for the one credit uh, on Audible. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, it's a tons of Bulgariads. It's Ready Player One. It's third down on the list. Yeah. The Bulgariad, I've not read that for years. Absolutely fantastic book I've series. That for eight years, near a half. Um, I was just going to say, Big, uh, Big T Moore said, Cam, Cam, check out the Sharp TV show. Each one is like a mini movie show, has a charm to it. It does have a charm to it. However, the one thing I didn't like is typical TV because they had to cut it down. Sharp's Regiment, the, the Sharp's Regiment was whittled down to the... 500 men 
the best of the best, the ones who survivors. So doubt five hundred men. Yes, it highlighted the chosen men, the five or six main characters within this five hundred men. Mm-hmm. However, in the TV show, his unit gets cut down to the five or six men who are the main characters, and then the rest of the men it just seems to be let about thirty others. So it the scale take it the scale away way way down from the book, then you'll be okay. But if you're expecting that type of scale, it doesn't it to me it didn't work because you look at movies like Waterloo where they had almost as many extras filming it than they had people actually fighting the battle. Yeah. And they pan across the whole thing and it still looks as if there's a unit there and a unit there, yet they had as many people. Whereas you imagine that cut down by one hundredth or even if you're really generous, one twentieth. So, because you say you, you're not too fond of Game of Thrones, this is something that was a massive disappointment to me. So, second series, uh, second book, where the imp gets his nose chopped off. Uh, sorry if there's spoilers, but come on, guys, it's been out for, what, 10 <laughs> years now. Um, and the book's been out for even longer. But that battle, uh, King's Landing or whatever it is called, is massive in the book. And you're thinking they've had a massive success with first season. They're going to up the budget and everything uh, for the second season. No, the the battle scene that they're trying to describe there. I I got the impression it's like the same 10 guys just running around in a circle in front of the camera to make it look like there is some war going on. It's like, uh, did you ever see Rome? The TV show? Rome, yeah. The first season was superb. The uh, Ray the, Stevenson, isn't it? Yes. Uh, um, the first season was superb, uh, basically, but because it was all about the build up of the politics and the, the life in Rome. And how and they, they always seem to land in the thick of it. Yes. Yes. Uh, basically, um, Paolo. Um, see, I was going to say Cato and Paulus, but that's basically a, diff- that's a, a book. It's. Um, well, Lucius, um, and Paolo and Lucius, I think it was. But anyway, the second book was about the battles where about Julius Caesar coming to power. But because it didn't have the budget, it was always just after the battles or just before the battles and stuff like that. So they didn't ha- you could you didn't really see the battles. You just saw the aftermath or they talked about the battles. And you're sitting there thinking, oh, I would have loved to have seen those. But they could be, and I could understand that. But it's just unfortunate. The the, mo- the the two seasons were fantastic. They had to actually wrap it up because they were, didn't get... Uh, the, yes, Room 1, yeah. great third notes. <laughs> but, yeah. but in effect, it was all to do with the built-up and they just didn't have the cash, and they were told to finish it off, so they had to finish it off quickly, which is unfortunate, but it was a great show, and I just loved the two main, Centurion and uh, Optio. Well, whatever it is. One one is fairly high-ranking, and the other is literally just a foot soldier. Yeah, one's a foot soldier, but I think it became an Optio later on, which is just basically the Centurion's... um, it's like a corporal um, compared to the the sergeant. So the one uh, Pulio, uh, P- Pulo and Lucius Verinus, I think it was. Lucius was uh, basically the centurion, and Pulo was the legionnaire. Yeah. But um, I just loved Rome. Uh, Rome, Rome was just oh, superb. I really liked it. For it, it had all those like. <laughs> They always land in trouble, it feels like. Uh, and as you say, there is that cutout. There is no battles, really. It's the, the aftermath yeah. and, and stuff. Um, and talking about Bulgarian, like we did, he wrote um, other series as well. What was it? The Ruby Hawk? The, the Ruby Stone? Was or it, whatever. No, the Ruby Tower or something Tower? Yeah, uh, Spearhawk is essentially the, the, 
the the superhero in it. Uh, I can't describe it in any other way. Unfortunately, he's a little bit. He's less fun of a hero because he's always going to win. You you kind of get that feeling immediately from the start. But in I believe it's the first book. Uh, Eddings, uh, David and Lee. They're building up to massive battle. They're crawling up on the battlefield and everything. And you're just reading because there's so much buildup of it. And then you turn the page and it's like, nope, done and dusted. The castle has been looted, ransacked, all the prisoners rounded up. And it's like, what the, the is there a page in between this page? Because the buildup to it was so, so well done in it. Varanis Varanis and Polo. Polo. Yeah. I thought it was Lucius Varanis, but I, 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 basically I know fine well I always get it wrong. Um, I've got a habit of getting it wrong. That's my wife. Could his, <laughs> could his name have been Lucius? Or is that just thinking of another one? Um, could be I'm thinking of another one because it could have been... Um, see, there is um, a book, a series of books, The Centurion and stuff like that, and I've got it Simon Scallow. Um, that's the gladiator, but he's got a load of other books, the Centurion and stuff like that. And this is about two Marco and Kate, uh, Marco and Cato. These two are so, and that's the Centurion and an Optio. Centurion. And do you know why the you he used the two? It's basically built around these two, the Centurion and the Optio. Marcus and Cato. And do you know why he used those two characters? See, in Julius Caesar's writing, he only ever mentions um, influential people, kings, um, centurions, um, consorts and all that. He only ever mentions two of people in his army because he gave them a commendation, Marcus and Cato. So they used those two characters in his book. He used these two, those two characters in the book. He actually built a whole series of books around it. But That's Simon quite nice. It was really, it's a, the, 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 the Roman stuff in that. The, um, Rome reminded me of his books because he built it around the Centurion and the Optio. And it's just really good. So, it's down on the list. Um, unfortunately, I can never hear the name Cato ever again and not... Peter Sellers, Pink Panther. I know. <laughs> so, so, sorry. The legend, Kato, you, whoa! <laughs> yeah, that's why I got the Pink Panther. I had to get the final book, uh, the final DVD for my Pink Panther collection. Yeah, it's but, just such a big impression for such a, shall we say, more standout name. Yes. Um, but still, it's for me, it's always him that is being connected first even if there are other people call that or having that is like that's the first one that always pops up yeah and i and i'm no surprise it's just that i'm just trying to think where is it i used to have rome uh, rome but i definitely don't have it yet why does it have what happened to my copy of rome Accordingly that, I've only got one called Rome, the Rise and Fall of an Empire. And I'm trying to think if that's the same. It's not the Rome that I'm thinking of. No, I think it was just called Rome, wasn't it? It was just called Rome, and I had season, I had both seasons of it. So why is it not on my list? Don't say it's another one that's actually been loaned out and just never returned to me before I actually started cataloging everything. That's really annoying me now, because I did have Rome. And it's really annoying when that happens, when somebody's borrowed something and no brought it back. And they're definitely the one I've got there is not the one that I was thinking of. I looked well, at it on Wikipedia. It says uh, just Rome. It was a box set. It was just basically Rome. And I had the box set and I can't find the box set. So I can only assume I've loaned somebody it and I've not, not cataloged it. <laughs> really? <laughs> It do do you know what the first thing says on the uh, Wikipedia page? Not to be confused with ancient Rome, the rise and fall of an empire. 
<laughs> yeah, it's literally what it says on it. Well, I think I've got Rome, the rise and fall of an empire. And it is really annoying me. Where's the hate? I, I, I could find that. I actually could narrow it, uh, take it out, but definitely not there. Bummer. I don't want to dig it out because I know fine well it's not the box set. Because I had the box set. I've got the DV. I definitely have because I've watched <laughs> That's the problem. I must have loaned it. Right, there you go. Lucius Verinus was an upper upper caste. So he had two names. Pulo was a lower caste, so he had one. And uh, the Scarrow ones are good. So, yeah, the Scarrow Scar ones are really good. The The reason I've actually not gone out, I've not gone out to Centurion is because... Me and my friends used to actually swap, used to buy different books and we would swap them so the two of us had something to read. And I bought Centurion and the reason I've not read it yet is I bought it so my friend was in hospital and I had to give her a copy of it and she passed away. So I can't even bring myself to read it. So I've not read Centurion although I've got it. So I, it's too many hard memories of one of my friends passing away before she got a chance. And I bought the book thinking... She'll like this when she's in until she gets better. And as I was about to take it up, I got told she had passed away. So Centurion's still sitting on my shelf and the, the spine's not been cracked. And I can't bring myself to finish the series because of that. Yeah, it's a so, bit of a shame. But it is uh, a really good series, but I've read the other ones numerous times. But I just every time I get to that book, I just can't I can't break the spine. One of these days I'll turn into a heartless bugger and maybe be able to read it. Well, I wouldn't call it heartless. It would probably be for in memoriam, so to speak, yeah. reading it in honour of. Yeah, maybe, but it's just one of those things at the moment. I just, uh, every time I, I look at So that's what, what she passed away before I got married. Um, so seven years she's been passed and I've still not been able to open the book. So, well, you got plenty of years to come. Yeah, I've still got one or two years to go. I'll just tell my wife to actually put it in my coffin with me. That way, I'll get something to read my way home. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cam Cam just said that the books apparently hard for him to get in the states. Uh, different titles. Oh, that's a bugger. The Mark on Cato books, I just, uh, they, they are. Uh, I think uh, Simon Scarrow, he's, he's done a load of other stuff as well, but I think his, the Roman ones, the Marco and Cato books, are definitely his best. So they are. It's just a shame. What about Amazon? Does Amazon not have them? Or I know it sounds silly, but eBay, you know something? Uh, Amazon sometimes does the, uh, what is it, embargo rules or something, so you don't have the license to distribute in country yeah, or whatever it is. that's what I'm thinking, eBay, because you never know, somebody may have already had them and selling them the UK versions, but I know it's a bit, I mean, because I do that every so often, that um, with if I'm wanting something that's a US one, because they charge you, I, could, but I bought a dice box, the dice box was £25, so it was about uh, $30 or something like that. But when it got here, it cost another 30, £35 in port fee. So it doubled the price of the box. And it, the box was probably at £25. It was probably an OK price. After that, I stopped buying from the States because it was too expensive for the shipping fee. But occasionally, if I'm wanting something, I'll check eBay because somebody's already got it. And then what they're doing, um, what they're doing is selling it on because they're finished with it. And sometimes I do pick up things like that. And thank you, Cam Cam. Uh, yeah, I will eventually read it as a homage. But at the moment, every time I get to it, I just remember that. That I just basically remember that the we never got to finish the book series because we used to always gab about it every day in work. So one of these days I will get to read it, but I'll have to be a wee while at the moment. So I'll I'll stop being a soppy at the moment. <laughs> but um, I don't know. It's I'm still annoyed with Rome. 
because I had Rome, and why the hell I've not got Rome, the rise, I've, I've got Rome, rise and fall of an empire, which I know is a, is a, because I've got a load of documentary stuff, I've got the Crusades and I've stuff like that, but why that? It's really annoying me. Well, it might have been tucked into one of your boxes or something. When you that's were... what I'm hoping, that's what I'm hoping, it's in one of the boxes that I, I've not, I've got stored because otherwise I'm going to be really annoyed. I know who, I, there's only one person I would have loaned it to. It would have been my nephew who's got all my Red Dwarf books. Um, and if uh, I see Red it, Dwarf, Rome, kind of same first like, lecture. He, but... he basically likes a lot of the similar stuff that I do because anytime I've mentioned stuff to him, he's either gone out and bought it or, I mean, he's a, um, he's a big Buffy fan. He's got a load of Buffy stuff as well. So it's the same idea. He likes a lot of the similar stuff. And usually if he recommends something that he's already watched, I usually get try and get it in the same idea. He usually gets stuff that I've got. So hence the reason why sometimes we swap. But and that's what you used to do back in the day. It's like, well, I have these DVDs. Uh, okay, I got these. Right. Here, take two of mine. I'll take two of yours. Yeah. I that's haven't seen these. Because I've got Neverwhere, um, which is a Peter Capaldi in it, and it's um, it's an unusual one. There's angels and demons in it, and it's um, the book is good. The book is better than the TV show. The TV uh, show that's a guy man, isn't it? Neil Gaiman. Yes, it is. But I've got that. But I've got it catalogued, so I know I've loaned it out, and I know who I've loaned it out to. So I've got that catalogued. So why the, why I've not got Rome catalogued? Does annoys me. But never where I quite enjoyed it. It's got Peter Capaldi's an angel. It's a, a Neil Gaiman one, and it's the travel via doorways to the Neverwhere. So it's almost uh, like that's the one. Yeah, it's yeah, the ninety six one, one because there is a new. Oh no, that's Good Omens. Yeah, good Omens, I, I've got Good Omens. Uh, basically, that's. That's a that, that was the one I visually had in mind when I heard Neverwhere, no, but I knew it was the, the same David theme. Tennant. No, that's basically David, David Tennant. That's basically all about uh, the son of Satan, as it were. Neverwhere. Neverwhere, no. It Neverwhere is basically it's about the under the underworld. Yeah, the the, the, un, the underworld, but that, that's that what I mean. It is there is like the. the the mythical stuff do exist yes. because good omens it, it is not exactly the same thing because in good omens it's essentially a devil and a saint or, or an angel um they really don't want to bring about armageddon so That's they do what they can they, to they become friends because they're basically they've had to, they've worked on earth and they've got their own jobs but they they've become friends because they've been dealing with each other over the the life the, their lifetime on earth yep so um and it's the two of them trying to actually stop armageddon because they're enjoying their life on earth the foibles the the things that the, the angel couldn't get because they're classed as um nose and naughty and they get things that the angel the devil couldn't get because they're classed as good but They've got foibles like the the angel likes a glass of wine and stuff like that, but he likes it a wee bit too much. So he knows if the Armageddon comes around, he's back, he's back in heaven, and he doesn't have all these wee nice wee foibles, like a yep. milk and stuff. <laughs> well, I, I, I like that outset that they, they are friends, like you say, but it's they, they got an invested in Earth. They they like what they have here. They they know going back home, well. That's for eternity. Yeah. But yeah, I, I, I've got good omens, I definitely have. Um, but then again, it's a, it's a Terry Pratchett one, or is it a Neil Gaiman? I think good omens is a game. Uh, is it a Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett um, crossover, I think? It must be, I think, Gaiman uh, Terry. I read it a long time ago. Uh, oh, it's good there. omens. Yep, that's the one. That's the one there. Yeah. That's it. 
that's it there the yeah, good omens yeah that that was the visual i had in my mind yeah that's pretty much that exact picture was in my mind when you said neverwhere yeah no i never wear um so I think I have never wear somewhere. Obviously, I might have got lost in the, I, I shall did. we say, recent, yeah. recent life transition. I'm just trying to actually see if it actually... See, the thing is, the rating's actually so small now that I'm actually getting to the point I need to dig out my glasses. I hate it when I, the rating's that small that I need my glasses on. Uh, I'd be happy I that there isn't a Hubble telescope yet. Yes, uh, there you go, Terry Pratchett, based on the book by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. So it is a, a joint, so it is a Terry Pratchett, Neil Gaiman book. Armageddon is coming still. It's not the end of the world. That was the tagline for that one. It is not an inaccurate tagline at all. <laughs> no. Um, I must admit, uh, I did enjoy Good Omens, the book. Um, the book is a lot better. The the expands a lot more, and the humour is funnier because certain things in the they kind of do on screen, like for instance um, the Hellhound. Yeah, it's just not the same. It's it's still to an extent they've got the Hellhound coming up, and then suddenly it turns into a wee dog. Whereas when in the book. They talk about hell, the hellhound coming, and it's and it's it's from the hellhound's point of view, and the hellhound's going. I wonder what it'll call. It'll call me the the the, the father of lies. His son is born, and I'm coming to. You. And it's time of Armageddon's coming. What will it call me? Will it be the devourer of worlds? Will it be this? Will it be that? And then it's basically dog <laughs> and it's yeah. a wee dog <laughs> it's just it's the whole aspect behind the dog's persona right up until he sees his new master and it's called dog and it's <laughs> oh well it's almost the thing they were in the the book uh, the, the tv show you saw it and then it, it you just see the visuals of it and then he calls it dog and it just becomes a wee dog whereas in the in the book it's all about from the dog's perspective, and I, I thought it was really good. Yeah, uh, I heard uh, Cam Cam that um, Gaiman was doing uh, some extra story or some additional stories to it, but I wasn't aware there was going to be like a part two. Yeah, and that's there's a typical one there. Pratchett and Gaming always said it was a one-off story. Pratchett is dead, and Gaming is doing a part two for tons of money. There is a price. Not like not um, following the the wishes of the person who passed. Terry Pratchett was a legend. Hmm. Was I've got one of my books signed by him, and it's signed. I could murder a curry. <laughs> it's one of my favourite lines from the my book Mort. Basically, yeah. it was even Mort he signed. It was just, um, he says, what do you want signed? I says, well, my favourite book is Mort. I would like something signed in reference to Mort. And he just put a wee scythe and he put, I could murder a curry, Terry Pratchett. Yeah. Thought, yes. And the fact my, my, that... Mine from him Pratchett. is, um, it's not so much a statement. It's the title of one of the chapters in the book. And it's a clang well done. <laughs> Let's see if you can recall it. It sounds it's... like something from um, Thud. It has a Scottish connotation to it. Okay, the, the wee free men. The wee free men. And Aye. it's about the, the 10 year old witch that is yeah, armed with the frying pan. Tiffany. Tiffany. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I, 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 I love the humor in that one. It was. Yeah. So spot on. I love any of the watch books. I must admit, the watch books are just superb. Um, Terry was just wow. I, I I can honestly say that the, the weirdest thing ever about that is that particular book was a chick magnet because I used to read it on the the subway um, to and from work, and there was always, always without fail, ladies coming up, all ages. I was just saying, I so love that book. 
You're so going to enjoy it. It wasn't exactly flirting, but there was yeah. a lot Tiffany more interruption Aitken. than I wanted. Yeah. Tiffany Aitken, wasn't it? Um, she was yeah. a, she was a witch of the chalk, a chalk witch. So she was. But yeah, I love the Terry Pratchett stuff. Um, I remember read a very first book, Color of Magic. Was it Color of Magic? Color, Color of Magic, I think, was mine. <laughs> Was that the... But I didn't read them very much in, in the certain order. Yeah, that I read them in order because I started reading them. It's the same idea. The very first time I saw the first book, because it was the Colour of Magic, then the Light Fantastic. So the Colour of Magic, I was just flicking through in the bookshop and I saw the book and it looked the colourful. And it, the, yeah, the colour was what stood out for me as well. And then like... I was reading the prologue and I got to the end of the prologue because they were talking about the great Atune and how it stood in the back, uh, the four elephants stood in the back with the disc world on it spinning. And um, and the philosophers on the disc world had theories of what was happening. Some people thought that the great Atune was just sailing through the space like an ocean, just sailing to going nowhere. Other ones thought that the Great Attune was going to the Great uh, Breeding Ground in the sky. This was known as the Big Bang Theory. I thought, might take a book. Yep, I'll take that. And then that was it. It's just this, the prologue got me. And then since then, I used to love reading the books and then the wee number, and I would go down and read the... My dad one day, uh, he says, why are you constantly laughing at those books? And I says, here, read one. He says, I can't be bothered. I says, okay go through the pages and read the footnotes. And that's how I did. A couple of books, just went through and read the wee footnotes. And it was just um, a wee added description of what was happening. And that's all he did, read the footnotes, and he was not himself. And he says, I can see why you enjoy them. <laughs> and that was just reading the footnotes. And I told him to read the prologue if he wanted to actually see the level of humour. He read, read, read the prologue and he thought, understand that it says no matter of books but i can understand why you enjoy them and yeah. it's it was just that the the big bang theory was just it got me straight away so same again i had a lot of first editions because i started reading terry's from the very first so it was the same as like my wheel of time stuff were all initial first editions the first five after that i started getting hardbacks and I didn't like the hardbacks, but they stopped really doing the paperbacks, and I didn't really like that. I wanted all of mine in paperback, even though they look as if they've actually been chewed by the dogs. And my Terry Pratchett books, my daughter started reading it, and that's where half of my books disappeared to. My daughter's borrowed them and never gave me them back. So I've only got it's half. Like, I'm keeping this now. <laughs> yeah, it's basically they just read them, typical read them, and then just forgot to give me them back. So I've only got half of my Terry Pratchett books. And the, the problem is they were all first edition, so I don't see the point in actually going out and buying a copy that doesn't mean anything to us because as long as I've got the one it's signed, that's all I care about. Fair enough. Yeah. That was uh, the only one we were told never to touch. <laughs> so, but, oh well. But see, the, the thing is, it's, I just, don't like the aspect that gaming's doing a second one just for a ton of money. And as Cam Cam says, it's almost, it seems like a betrayal. Yeah, it does. Yeah. But um, anybody didn't want it done. And then he's got, oh, very fine. They're throwing money at me. But then again, I mean, I'm, I'm not so certain what more there is to do because that was a nice, good one but story. It didn't problem. need more. It didn't need a prologue or anything after. Yeah, that's the problem. Where did they go? So basically, that was a really good series. Yeah, but it finished. I bet we want more. But it finished. I bet we want more. But it finished. Here's a load of money. Okay, I'll see what I can do. It's basically, I can understand why if somebody's throwing that much money at you, you might go, I'll see what I can do. But I still don't like the idea that it's typical. We'll throw money at something because you've already got a name. So it doesn't yeah. matter what you come up with. It doesn't matter if it actually ruins your first book by changing things in your second book to make things in your first book illogical. Hence the reason why the prequels I didn't like because they 
a prequel that sort of brings every single character who had never met before into this the prequel to imply they'd met but they forgot or stuff like that. I think mm. I always dislike that part about it. Um, to say, oh, I forgot. It was just twenty years ago. It's like the, the, this massive worldwide known global whatever it was like universe spanning um just forgot and, yeah. and it, it isn't like the let's take ray uh, as an example i would understand that it's supposed to be about 20 years later she looks to be maybe a day over 21. Mm -hmm. so obviously very young not knowing that much about the world but if you take someone like han solo who definitely looks like he's getting closer to 40. He would definitely have been a teenager when the when everything fell. Mm -hmm. So he would have known about it. Yeah, and that's another thing as well, right? They're actually acting as if um, Luke is a legend, happened away in the past, yet it's only meant to be less than a generation. Mm. And you're sitting there thinking... But there's people alive that live through it. So the way they're acting as if people uh, can't remember because it was so long ago. That'd be like turning around and saying people can't couldn't remember the war in the, the 60s because it finished before I was born. But there's still plenty of people around that would still be talking about exactly. it. So even in the 70s, people still remembered. Well, that's why programs like Dad's Army was so successful because there was still a lot of people who had memories of that time. Whereas if they're talking about even 30 years between um, Star Wars and these new ones, and they're acting as if people can't remember, really? It's it's not as if it's gonna it's not that like they could have actually had it that being a force user it extends his life thing so he could be looking like he was in his sixties. But he wouldn't explain the existence of alone. solo. Yes, but I'm saying is that if they did that, right? So the Empire Fallen. So I'm I'm not talking about let's solo, I'm talking about the three movies, the three new ones. Yeah. But the, the, the way they were talking as if it was a legend in, in the past and people wouldn't remember, they didn't understand it. Whereas maybe, say, he, it was all it was all about um, Luke rather than Leia and Han being in it, right? So a hundred years has passed. Luke is aging because he, although he ages slowly, he's still aging and he's been out of the, away for a hundred years. Mm. So yes, it got into legend because... There is nobody alive that would remember that. There's well, no there's one no, that's seen, there's no seen human in... alive. There's no yeah. human alive it would remember it. They would have heard stories about it, and as they grew older and uh, the stories became more farciful, uh, basically they would think it's just all legend, it's just these old people are just making up and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's that aspect. It's so, so you could say because he's a force user, his age is extended so then they could have brought it in and all these things about how people didn't believe that this could happen and that could happen then it well, you see the way you build a proper mythological universe you do what tolkien did or what uh jordan did it was a long long time ago, time ago. and tons of knowledge is getting lost just through normal erosion and they admit that we don't know what we don't know we, we, know, we know we had the evidence that these things exist. We, we have it. There is still the remnants. But what are they? No one knows. There's no one alive that even knows someone that knows someone. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Even if they wanted to go down that route, a hundred years between people seeing him and him turning up, a hundred years gives it that there's nobody alive. Well, no human alive, because obviously you could have aliens that remember seeing them or heard about it or remember it because they're they live longer but no human alive that physically was there at the end and now so there's a hundred years past and so it's four generations down the line so then you could actually build out a slight mythology around it but 30 years means nothing 
Yeah. Uh, I don't even think it is 30 years. I think it is actually 20. It's it supposed after, to be I, between. I, uh, I, I could be wrong, but it, it is literally that short of a span. And uh, so one, less than one generation, and people are acting. Were uh, the, the reviews I've seen is people were acting as if this is um, mytho he's a mythological being because what well, he's been dis he disappeared for twenty odd years, really. That's like well, it's not even that long. He, he trained uh, Kylo, didn't he? It was like master student uh, pupil, whatever Padawan. Um, and if you look at Kylo, he's what mid twenties. I so even say ten years because maybe he was a fourteen year old and he's twenty four, whatever. But so he's, yeah. he's been gone for ten years. But the way they're acting is if he was mythological, as nobody like that ever lived. People can't remember him. And you're sitting there thinking, really? It's yeah, it's it that's the, how crazy it is. It's a case of so basically as soon as you're saying is. As soon as you shut your eyes, you can't kind of remember the person you were looking at. Oh, the... you, as soon as you left school, <laughs> 10 years later, you can't kind of remember the names or anything about everything in your whole school experience with myth mythological because you left school over 10 years ago. And so everybody in school were just, they were just fake because you can't remember. And it's almost a case of that's that these people are actually thinking. Well, as soon as you, as soon as people are actually out your life, then they're forgotten. So anything you say about them is, is oh, I don't know. It's just typical writers; they don't know how to write a story. Yeah, but that, that that is what kills stuff for me with all the reboots, the remakes, all of that. It's they just don't have that capability of writing at least something that doesn't immediately just yanks me out of it. Yeah, such as the. Oh, Luke's a legend. Like he's a mythological being, like you're saying. And I say, well, he, he, he's been on an extended holiday for a couple of months on an island just off the coast of England. Yeah. But that's like saying, even if they say, right, fair enough, we'll go a bit extended. We'll say it's been 10 years because it couldn't be any longer than 10 years based on the fact that the, the way they were talking about it. But just say 10 years. 10 years isn't a lifetime. It's no. Yeah, somebody's been gone for 10 years. Oh, I've not seen you. For... I, I bump into people I used to go to school with or we chat on Facebook and then we meet up in the pub and it's a case of, God, I wouldn't have recognised you. And then it's a case of, do you remember this? Do you remember that? Remember we used to do this? And it's that kind of thing. Yeah, I left school 30, or 30 years ago. Actually, tell a lie, 40 years ago. I left school and I could still chat to them and talk, talk about things that we did when we were at school. Okay. But not seeing the details, but we remember the basics. And yet they're acting as if 10 years, nobody remembers them. And that's. Uh, I still remember the smoking area where we used to go out between uh, breaks in classes. So it's yep. like a small, like grassy hill, but it was boxed in by concrete blocks. It was kind of erased. Um, yeah, so now I was literally behind the bike sheds. Nobody ever used the bike sheds for a bike. They basically just had all the bits for the bikes taken out because they were stopped using for bikes before I went to school because it was near a thing then. Yeah. But uh, uh, ours was a little bit more liberal, there, so they didn't was, care we smoked. Yeah, no, it was seats, but behind the bike shed, there was a between the the railings which looked onto the football pitch and the bike shed, which was still called a bike shed, even though it just had uh, seats in it. So if it was raining when we were out in the playground, we could sit in there and not get wet. But behind that, there was the lane. It was at a lane, and we used to stand there and smoke because this, no teacher could see behind the shed. <laughs> but, yeah, um, it's that type of thing. I even remember the layout of the school. The school's gone. I, I used to I used to drive by. I was going to visit my dad. The school is gone. There is an Aldi where the school used to be and houses around the area. So there is nothing that even reminds me. Yet I could draw pictures of how the school looked. Where the gym it's was, where the swimming pool yeah, was, where the science block was. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think the it. school might still be standing, but it will have been redesigned a little bit. And I do know that there's been so many new developments 
that the entire uh, forest bike path that I had between school and home, it's gone. There, mm. There's not a single shred of vegetation other than maybe a plant pot between the school and where I used to live. No, I bet. See, I can remember. I even remember some of the teachers. I remember the the gorgeous Miss Palmer who got married and became Mrs. K and was still gorgeous. And then you had Miss, um, oh, what was her name? I can't remember, but she had a very speak advice, but she never gets to give you the belt. She would always send you to one of the other male teachers. And her, her favourite saying was, I'll send you to Mr. Swanson. So she was she had an English accent, but she had a very squeaky voice. So I'll send you to Mr. Swanson. And it was just, uh, we used to always knock herself because we'd hear it. But if you get sent to Mr. Swanson, you knew you were getting the belt. <laughs> so nobody wanted that. But so it was trying to, mm, try not to laugh, but couldn't help yourself. It's that type of thing. So... I remember all that, but they, they're acting as if 40 years, like, so even if it was a generation that had disappeared, 25 years, 30 years, still they're acting as if people wouldn't remember the events that led up to them disappearing. It's crazy. It's what I'm saying is people don't know how to write a story. At least not the consistent one. Uh, this was long before the... The school smoke spot. <laughs> Ubiquitous. <laughs> and so back in the day, they didn't care. They didn't. Yes, it, it, they started talking about, okay, it may not be so good for you. Um, but back then, they didn't care. It's like, as long as you're behaving, uh, not doing anything stupid. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I remember you used to be able to buy a single, going to the show, going to the school, going and buy a single, because that was the only way you could get a cigarette. And this, the shopkeepers would a packet of cigarettes, a packet of ten cigarettes. You could buy fives even at one point, but ten yep. cigarettes was a um, what was it? It was something like seventy five pence for ten cigarettes, and the shop would sell singles at ten pence each. So they made 25p. So made, they made 25% more. They, they, I mean, 25p more per pack selling them as singles. So we were 12 getting in buying cigarettes and they would still sell them until it started, the, they get started clamped down on. And then suddenly, sorry. sorry yeah, really well. I was well past legal age by the time they actually clamped down on those rules. So they say, like, okay, now you have to show ID. But I never have had to. <laughs> We, I had one, it was um, Mrs. Forrest. She was a battle axe, but I loved her. She basically, if you messed up and did something wrong, if you admitted it, she was fine. But see if you dug in, she was a battle axe and she did not give up. Nobody could take, it would take the mickey. Her school, her classroom was always silent. But if you had a problem, no issues. But she was an old battle axe, and I loved her. And I met her years later. I, I literally, I was surprised. I was in my thirties, so I'd left the primary school nearly twenty years, and I met her. And she she still looked as old as she did when I was at school. And I basically, I, I walked up, and she just looked at us, and I, and I basically introduced myself. Really? You're that wee boy? <laughs> basically, <laughs> she, basically, she remembered everybody. That was the thing. She had a, a memory. But if the fact is, really, you're that wee boy. You used to do this. You, God, she still remembers us all. <laughs> she remembered all the things we did wrong. Did right. She was basically, but she was an old bat -lax. And uh, mo the thing is, most of the kids liked her. Other teachers hated her. The parents hated her. It was the kids that loved her because, yeah, she was a battle axe, but if she was in your corner, you knew fine well the rest of the teachers didn't matter. So if you came in and you... I think that's a, a lost class of teachers that just disappeared uh, yeah. for, for our generation. They weren't allowed to shout at kids. 
She never used a belt. We were in primary. She never chastised. She would basically shout at you and tell you why you've done something wrong. She wouldn't yep. just shout at you. She would explain to you why you're wrong, what you get on with. But now they're not allowed to. They're not even allowed to actually tell their parents if they're badly behaved in class because their parents don't want to know because it's the teacher's fault if the kids are badly behaved in class. Well, there is that meme Lu going Lucy's. around every now and then. <laughs> we call them Lucy's. I or Lucy's cigarettes. We call them singles. As yep, in a single, a single cigarette, a single. In Scotland, we call them a single. The uh, so there's that meme um, in the 19, well, I'm not sure if the 60s, 70s, somewhere. Um, so there are parents, there's teacher, and there's the kid, and there's the grade F. And both parents are pointing at the kid and going, explain this. For what yeah. you know, it's turned around and, and they, 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 they're, they're, they're going they, they, F, pointing at the teacher, explain this. Explain this. this. Uh -huh. and, that's the th and that is exactly it, because... People are not allowed to actually say, oh, by the way, your son's thick. Or your son isn't thick, but he doesn't care and doesn't want to try. You have to make him understand. My son doesn't have to understand. You have to treat him with kid gloves. Bugger off. Mm. There you go. It was the same way she had a heart in the right place. And that's the thing. You see what I mean, if you get any trouble by teachers like that, you knew you'd done something wrong. It wasn't a case of because you were getting picked on. Mind you, seen that there was a male teacher. If it was now, he would have been he would have been in the nick. Because all the girls used to go to that. He would sit at his school desk, and all the girls would go to that side of the school desk, or they would shove all the boys round. So I mean, because he would come in, you would get your marking. He would sit down and do the marking. But if it was a girl, he would go, whoop, and he would mark well he was had his arm around the girl. So they all and yes, but the thing is it was just a case of he used to do that and then mark and then give them the marking. What the hell he was thinking? But it's not as if any any kid in the school ever says, touch me. It's just a case of he, he, it's almost like he was cuddling them and that was yeah. it. But no, there was never any suggestion that anything else happened. Even amongst the kids, because we all used to, the, the, the girls used to hate, so they would hand. But if they, he, he stood at the other side of the desk and handed it, he didn't say, you have to come round. It was just if one of the girls came round. And, and it was just sitting there thinking, he would be in jail. But there was never any anything suggested, even amongst us kids, that anything other than the big pervert that just wants to cuddle all the, the girls. Yeah, but unfortunately, I, I picked that up well, it was probably 30 years after. Uh, one of the teachers apparently was a lot more loose-handedly with the, the ladies, or the girls. And it was like, really? No one said anything. No, no one noticed anything. But uh -huh. it, it, was, it was on the, the PE classes and everything. The, where this supposedly happened, and there's far too many that have spoken out about it. Uh, I, I think the guy passed away long before they even opened up about it. But it's just yeah. shitty, and no, he I, should I, have I, been I, in jail. Yeah, I, I, I just I always thought, why the hell is he thinking me? But there was never even the kids in school, even the lasses, you could hear them talking and stuff like that, and it was never a case of anything ever. Nobody ever came forward in school, out of school, years later, whatever. It was just a, a weird foible he had. And nobody understood why he had it. It's not as if it, it was, even the kids it happened to ever actually said thing. It was just a case of girls. It's just weird. But we, it's just one of those things. But the problem is as well, we had, I remember in gym, there was the boys' gym and the girls' gym. So we go in and get changed. And the, the, the teacher's bit was in the centre. So the female the female teachers would walk right through the, the boys' changing room to get to the, the, the office. Nowadays, you imagine, you might, but the, see the males, the males, there was, the, the office was in the boys' changing room because obviously they couldn't have the office in the girls' changing room for the male staff to walk through. But it was okay for the female staff to walk through the boys' changing room. 
It'll be catch hellfire if that happened today. I know, but even then, they, 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 they couldn't have had that room as the female change room because it would not have been allowed for a male teacher to walk through a female's changing room. But it was okay for the female teacher to walk through a male changing room. And it's, you're sitting there thinking, really weird. But when you were a kid, you didn't think about it. It was only later on. Yeah. <laughs> Your kid is uh, special. Yes. He lacks work at ethic and there aren't any participation trophies in life. <laughs> so I agree with that one. That's exactly uh, what I do. I, 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 I would just say, careful there, Cam Cam, because you, your use of work ethic is probably going to get you called an ist and an ob somewhere. Yes, I know. That's terrible. Went to a Catholic school. Nothing happened to me, and I'm pretty sure there was I. But see, the thing is, I went to a prodi school, or basically, as they call it, non-denominational. So there was Catholics, Protestants, Jehovah's Witnesses, at my school, so we were, they classed it as a Protestant school, but in effect, it was non-denominational, as in anybody who wanted to go to that school could go, and they basically, there wasn't any, um, you had church at Easter, which basically it was a case of, you don't need to go if you don't want to, it was a case of, you're Catholic, then you go to the chapel, yeah, Jehovah's Witness, you do the, you're Muslim, you do whatever, but the, everybody else gets to church, <laughs> <laughs> and it was never taken too seriously because it was non denominational Everybody who had the, the religious ceremonies to do, they would do them. So like, if there was Yom Kippur or there was Ramadan and stuff like that, they were done out with school. It's the same as I mean, the only ever did was a kiss Christmas or Easter, and it was just going into church. It's not as if you were doing anything other than going into church. If you didn't yeah, want to the, 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 you didn't the maximum school. amount we got about that was it would be not sixth grade, uh, probably around sixth grade for what is the UK equivalent. It was during it was the school year, year. Thir 30 hours in total, the five largest um, religions, uh, about five hours each. That's the entire religious sentiment the schools had whatsoever. Full mm -hmm. stop. Yeah. I remember, well, you've got, you start at school at five in primary one. You leave school, you leave primary at 11, 12. So it's primary seven. Then you went into secondary and it was first year, second year, third year and fourth year. You had to get used to not calling it primary one. You're in secondary now. Okay, first year. <laughs> And so basically that's what it was. It was primary one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's what you were in. So grade wise, I don't know what that is. And then when you went to secondary or high school, as they call it now, but secondary school it was, you had first year, second year, third year, fourth year. And you could stay on till sixth year until you were 18. So we didn't have it that way. School starts at seven, and you have low, middle, and high class. Uh all of them are three years each, and it's basically going one, two, three, that's the low, four, five, six, that's the mid, and seven, eight, nine, that's the high. After that, you go to college or gymnasium, as they, the, the word that they, they prefer to, to use for it. That's also three years. And then you're off to college, uh, sorry, uni. Mm -hmm. So, and that's three years five or seven years depending on what kind of stuff right, you go for what you're teaching and what you're learning yeah but no our, our uh, primary it was primary and secondary that was it and i know in um, the states you have got um grades uh, you've got high school and stuff like that so i i'm not entirely sure but the way i looked at it was um your kinder, kindergarten it was the same as nursery you had whatever they called it, it was just, the school was primary, and then you had high school, which was secondary. That's the way I understood it, but the years were probably all off, and I wouldn't be able to understand that. Yeah. No. And I, I still don't understand the, the English system. Uh, <laughs> I was like, um, how old were you when that happened, when the GCs was? So just like, then I can translate it because of how old I was, but I have to add two years to me because in UK you start two years earlier technically. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You start when you're 
five usually, but you could start at four and a half or five and a half, depends. But you very rarely you had somebody at four and a half in it, it but it depends on the, the age where you start. They can start if they they're four and a half when school starts, they can start or they could start the year later. So start at five and a half. So it's one of those ones it's you could you, your parents could choose if you're good if you're they think you're mature enough at five to go to school, at four and a half to go to school. But you've got primaries one to seven, so that's you up until about twelve. And then you've got secondaries one to four. That takes you up to 16. Yeah. And that's basically it. And then if you could stay on to six year or and get hires and stuff like that. If you so you, that was only up to your old grade. See, they called it levels and GCSEs. We didn't. It was old grades and egg, uh, hires. That was it. So is the, is the Scottish egg, uh, old grade was about the equivalent of the English O level. It's just to confuse it more for this tiny yes. little island uh, exactly uh, so it was just one of those things it was just the, the the way the schooling was slightly done just done differently there you go um cam cam said there you go in america if you wanted a quality education in a lot of cities you don't you went to private school they just going to play that huge partners yeah i've i've seen a lot of the stuff that the guys on like even Friday night tights talk about that. It's private school and stuff like that. One of my friends, two daughters go to a private school, but they are expensive. You're talking about you could spend between seven and ten thousand pounds per child per semester. And there's three semesters in a year. That's another thing that is a bit of a difference. It's uh, where where I went to school, or, or the, the way the school system was, school is on from January 12th-ish, depending on how the weekday lands, until June 16th. Then there is two and a half months off, 10 weeks yeah. summer, summer, summer break. Uh, uh, yeah. But then it's August to December 20th. Yep, it, the, right. the, they are. See if I remember correctly. You used it, to have is, the September weekend and the um, the Easter week, so you would have sorry the October week and the Easter week. So you would have the summer holidays, which was roughly June to August, and then you had the Easter week. You would have a week off at Easter, and you'd have a week off in October. No, yet, the, the, the Easter the was <laughs> just Easter, but there was earlier because the availability of snow so i think it's around february there used to be a complete week off supposedly meant for all winter sport activities to be able to be taken before snow disappears uh -huh. um, i haven't seen snow um, for a long time in sweden that they've had a few snowfalls I, my brothers keep sending me pictures every now and then but there is nowhere near the amount of snow i had as a kid growing up but that's a thing as well they always say where well, memory remembers all the good days but then forgets all the bad days well you you look at it see historically you look at all the movies white christmas yep do you know why a lot of these even things like um you think about it a, any TV show set around Christmas, even in the States, Europe, whatever, what always signifies Christmas? Snow. Snow. However, uh, historically, snow is not as common on Christmas as people believe. And it hasn't always been. The reason it is the signification of it was Charles Dickens, because when he was growing up, they were that was when the there was the mini ice age they called it. The it snowed near enough every year. The the Thames even froze where they could have bonfires in the middle of the Thames, and they used to have circuses in the middle of the Thames. The Thames froze up that much every year. But so when he was growing up for the six, seven years of him being a kid, there was always a, a really heavy winter. 
which means he grew up where it was snowing near enough every year at Christmas. So when he was writing these stories, he always remembered back to when he was a kid. And because his stories became so popular, more and more people associate snowing on Christmas. Yet historically, it's more, it's more likely to not snow at Christmas. <laughs> it's just weird. It's just one of those things. Um, yes, but I, I grew up pretty much within a stone's throw away from the Arctic Circle. I was constantly yeah. north of it as well. So we did have snow. It yes, isn't like a false snow. memory. Yeah, no, but the, the thing is, is you, you would have had snow, but it wouldn't have always been at Christmas. It would have been slightly before or slightly no, after. No, 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 no. We would have had, had proper snow from yeah, usually end of September of uh -huh, to, to April. Yeah, proper so you would snow. have had, but that's what I'm saying. So you wouldn't have associated snow with Christmas. You would have associated snow with that time of the year. For Winter, that those yes. three, four months, but what I'm saying is, a lot of people associate snow at Christmas, and it's because of Dickens. Yes, yes you've got countries that are going to have snow six months of the year. Some of them are going to have snow near enough all year round. They're they're obviously outliers to that, but I'm talking about a lot of the countries that snow is not as common, shall we say? Yeah, I don't know. So this is something I got used to moving this far south. Yeah. Um, it's it's surprisingly how little it is, but I do also recall it growing up because it was always English football on uh, the the TV stations during weekends. And yeah. it's like, you, you're sitting huddling around a nice open fire. Uh, the TV is in the other corner and you're looking across and it's like people in t-shirts um, and the football pitch is green. Everything is like, it, when they pan out and I show the city and everything, there is no snow around or anything. Yeah. Well, that's so, the thing. And but especially in Britain, Europe, obviously there's, you're going to have the outliers that are north. Even, even Scotland, the north of Scotland used to have a lot of snow because it's in, north in, the, in the northern hemisphere. That's why we get colder weather up here, whereas in London could have a, it could have really nice weather. We could have no snow, no rain, but it's still chilly because we are a lot more further north. But what I'm saying is the outliers, apart from the outliers, it's the same as the outliers in the more tropical countries, ne probably never see snow, don't know what snow is. Or some of them people don't have never seen snow except on the TV. But with Christmas, a lot of the countries that are not out with the outliers, and it's all down to Dickens because he has became so popular, his stories became popular, and every time he talked about Christmas, it was always snow. And it was because he was a kid during the mini ice age. It's really weird that because of that, but if you look historically through London or France, uh, uh, Paris and stuff like that. The major cities in a lot of this thing, if you looked year by year, you'll probably find that, say, in the last 200 years, say, right? So in the last 100 years, how many times have had snow compared to how many times have not had snow on Christmas? And you'll probably find that the snow would probably be like 20% if they're really unfortunate. And it's yeah, so, because it's all to do with Dickens growing up. He always had snow when he was a kid because it was the mini ice age. So there was, the 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 atmosphere was just colder. But for so, someone where, that grew up where I grew up, you wouldn't disassociate it. Uh, it. It would have been something that was always there, but it was more there because. It was already there. It didn't start snowing on Christmas. Yes. Uh, I, I cannot, for the life of me, think that I ever recall living there that there was no snow to December and then suddenly on Christmas it started snowing. Yes, yes it may have snowed on uh, Christmas Eve. <coughs> yeah, because but, but by that time we already time. had three yeah. foot of snow. Yeah, it's already been snowing for the, the last month or two. But yeah, but that's what I'm saying. But if you look historically for like, say even London, Paris, that type of thing, 
you look at things like that, those things, and you look at the history, it, it basically they'll, you'll, you'll find more likely to have not had snow round about Christmas than half snow. And it's, it's, but it's perceived that you expect it to snow at Christmas and it's because you grew up watching Dickens and stuff like that and the, uh, in school you used to read the books and stuff like that and it's because people are, are just so used to it because of the books that he wrote and it influenced other people who were writers when they were talking about Christmas they would write about snow it is really really weird yeah in effect yes he was so popular he created a mass false memory it's re it is, it's one of the see when he, I, I told that I thought nah surely not but uh, there is evidence out there that that's what it is because he did a lot of his Christmas stuff and it was always snowing and if you look at the history of the, those the countries especially in Europe it's people perceive it as that and then obviously you had a lot of people who the, the stories went over to the States. So there was a lot of places, yes, they had snow for large portions of those months. But the, the ones that didn't have it for large portions, they would have it there. It's just yeah. weird. Well, for me, it always felt a bit weird that the way the season seems to land, and there's something I do miss living here, uh, London altitude or whatever, longitude, it's there is really not seasons here not as distinct as where i grew up because you had winter you there was no mistaking winter for winter it's like it, this is definitely winter spring where suddenly nature just start turning that very very light light green where all all the leaves and everything is coming out and all the flowers everything you can definitely tell that that's the season. It is spring, summer, absolutely no doubt whatsoever. It's summer now. Later on, Big T, uh, thanks really for coming. Great. Thank you. Um, and autumn, holy crap! I haven't seen autumn in probably twenty years. As in the proper explosion of colors. Um, I've seen it on films. Yeah but I have not seen it with my own eyes since I moved to UK. Yeah, but this is, well, you look at, uh, there's a saying in Scotland, if you don't like the weather, hang around 20 minutes, because sometimes we can have four seasons in the one day. Yeah. It could be snowing in the morning, it could be snowing overnight, and then the snow clears and the sun's out, and then you'll get rain, and then you'll get wind, and it'll be, it's, you literally can have four different seasons, but people actually, as a, as a saying in Scotland is, if you don't like the weather, hang around 20 minutes, sure to change because we can have four seasons in the one the, the one day, it's really yeah. weird I have plenty of mates that grew up in Scotland and they, they all use that particular saying it's like, yeah. hang around uh, <laughs> it's bound it's, to it's change just, it's weird, 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 weird just a, a weird country Obviously great, but that's just me. It's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous place, although I haven't been around many places other than Edinburgh and Glasgow. But I did like the Gothic uh, cemetery in Glasgow. That uh, was, the, um, yeah. That's it's a bit run down, which is a shame, but... Yes, it's got the mausoleum and stuff like that, and they do actually guided tours, but you can't enter it otherwise. It yeah. is no law. It's a historical cemetery. There is no new... Uh, the mausoleum, I'm trying to actually, the John Knox Cemetery you're talking about, down at the Royal Infirmary next to the hospital. Yeah. That's a John, a John Knox Cemetery. It's basically, you can get the get guided tours, but it's not a, it's not a used cemetery anymore. No, but it, it was quite gorgeous there. Um, I'm just trying to remember. Must have been 2001. There you, there you go, Vermont. We've got foliage and snow still. Vermont, um, is that not in White Christmas? When they go, snow, snow, snow. They're going to Vermont. <laughs> Scotland, yes. But yeah, yeah it's... 
I don't know. It's just weather can be fun. It can be a nightmare, especially when it blows the roof off your extension with your man cave in it. That's what it did with me uh, okay. three months ago. And I basically had to get the insurance to do it, but the insurance are still not want to pay out. So it basically blew my car, it blew my roof off above my man cave, and we had to get it replaced. And the insurance are saying it was just it was rotten. It's and everybody says no, it was the wind that blew it. Oh no, it was rotten. It was falling apart. Well, our yes. roofer said no, and I bet he does the count. <laughs> <laughs> oh Mr. yeah, Peter I've heard right. plenty of stories like that. It's like the insurance company is going, oh no, no, you can't have that professional company. You can only have our approach. Aye, and who already says we're going to say no beforehand? The first thing they ask when they come in, how old is it? Uh, so you're basically wanting to know if you can actually say it's too old. We've got uh, we had the, their guy turning around saying it wasn't maintained and it has been patched. And he says, well, surely if it has been patched, it has that been means maintained. We maintained it. Oh, well, that's like saying your tyre blew out and you want a new car and your insurance should pay for it. We're saying, no, if my car got a scratch, I wouldn't expect the insurance to paint the whole car. I would expect them to patch the bit it was scratched. And yeah. no, no, it was, so that was they started off with. It wasn't maintained and it had been patched. So basically two things in the same sense, which were counter, uh, basically opposite. And we thought, oh, well, we know where this guy's going. So there, there is a blessing with all the smartphones that are available now. You can easily record high definition videos and photographs well, on your own. However, it's usually that people tend to be too distressed or panicking too much about the, the chaos that it, no, no, there. I, I did that. I believe me. I actually recorded the whole thing. I basically had it all recorded. It was some state, so it was my poor roof. <laughs> it was terrible. I'm actually seeing if I've got any pictures still of it. That's the problem. Let's try to remember. And, I, and it's typical. I can't actually find anything. Uh, it's bit it's I'm not fine well I'm not going to be able to find it because I was looking for it. <laughs> that is all right, it'll be a topic for the next time. Yes, uh, definitely. Well okay, it's basically twenty past two and have you been on for five hours? Yep, and um, well, my camera died about six minutes ago and my computer has never lived past the five hour twenty minutes. Yeah, um, which is a reminder that you should watch uh, boss level because yes, I you never get past that minute. I will definitely. I've got it in, and what I'm going to do is this weekend. Um, I've got a couple of things I want to watch tomorrow, but I want to. I've got um, last human red dwarf to do for Wednesday. Thursday, I'm going to watch uh, boss level. And then I'll watch it again. I can watch it a couple of times. First time I'll watch it, I'll just be doing other stuff in the background, the usual stuff. So I'm not thinking about it. I'm actually working away and I'm just checking wee bits and pieces out. And then what I'll do is I will watch it again on Friday, well, Thursday night when I can sit down, relax, and actually pay attention to it. Then yeah. um, I will do a review on Friday, and then it will spend the Friday night and Saturday to cut bits together so I can add it in. Because I basically, yep. that's what I did. I spent three days actually creating that video. <laughs> Oh, it's, a, it's a good strategy, good shape. Uh, the one thing I'm looking forward to is to see whether or not you will agree with me on that's the best use I've seen a hero stuck in a time loop make of his time. Well, I know fine well that um, the best time one, according to the captain, has been 12 Monkeys. The film or the TV show? The film he's talking about, I've not seen either. 
I've got it on my list because it was one of the DVDs I got. However, I still have to actually check it out. I I haven't seen it in a long time, but I do recall liking it. I have not seen the TV show. I'm aware that it exists. Well, that's the thing. It's I want to watch it, but it's the typical. It's getting the time to watch it. Yep, especially with all these. Oh, you need to watch this. You need to review this one. And mm -hmm. here's the suggestion list. Just like, oh, I haven't seen that. Well, in years. That, that, that is a, that is the big problem. It is I do like a lot of stuff that people have actually been recommending, especially the classic stuff. It's the new stuff. I want to try and see it, but I'm worried that if I do see it, I'll be a bit more. Uh, I'm not going to listen to that person again. Right, we, here you go. This is what I was going to share. Look, this is Cam. Cam is about to drop off. Thanks for joining us. Yes, yeah, Cam. Cam, thank you for joining us. We'll be finishing in about five ten minutes anyway. Thank you for spending the time with us, and I will catch you in somebody else's stream as we normally do. So good night. All right, well, I'm here. All right, this is. Right, that, that is basically some of the damage done in the roof, right? That is the damage. It literally ripped the whole roof over. And they were saying so, it's so because... It ripped it's, the entire, what was the, the lining uh, called? That, the, yeah, it's the, it's the tarmac, basically. It's ripped it all up. And they're saying it was because it was rotten. And the guys are saying, look, that's solid. No, that's uh, that's not rotten no, at I don't all. Mean, and that's what I'm saying, look. You can see it's clear. It, it literally ripped it all up. And it's just, it basically just bent the whole thing back. They were even saying, oh, this bit was rotten. And that's, you can see it's actually still solid. Yeah, that's not rotten. And it's just folded it back. And they, they, I mean, they, that's what they were coming up with, saying it was rotten. That's uh, the, the builders actually looking at it. And then that was us doing recording of it. And they were saying that is because the roof was rotten and patched and stuff like that. No, that's even not at that's all, metal. even close yeah. to it. It ripped the metal up and everything, and they're saying it is because it was rotten. How could it be based yeah, on Yeah, that? I see the pipe there. Uh -huh. it, bent, it, it ripped the pipe up, but even um, you can see all the wood there. That's not rotten. That's just all snapped yeah. because of the, the damage. But watch this bit here. Look, see the metal? It ripped the metal up, and they're saying it's because it was rotten. And they were saying because it was patched and stuff like that. It's just nuts. They were just no. at it. So they were. Uh, th th you actually have some really good footage there. You can Do I? It's still solid. Uh, the, the, the frame around that they were trying to say, if it had been rotten, it would have been soft bends, not sharp, like, breaks. Yeah. So, but that's the thing. It's basically they were saying, "No, it's the wood was rotten," and we're saying, "Look at the wood. You can see it's not just a case of ripped. It's literally been snapped where it's the wind has ripped it up and and folded it on itself." Because you and know, if it, it was rotten, really your thing. builder would also not be walking on oh, no. the <laughs> exactly. So, but it was the fact is that's what they were coming up with, and it's because and they said, "Well, you shouldn't have got it done until we." I says. It's above my man cave. If you want to spend the money to replace all this? We had rain for the next two months, solid rain. Luckily, we got the roof done before the rain started. And I'm sitting yeah. there thinking, so you're telling us not to get it fixed. Were you going to replace all this? Which some of it is irreplaceable. And no, uh, so, and, but they would have wanted me to actually leave the roof undone until they agreed to get it fixed. No, 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 no. You're on the clock when you are in a country, say, like Scotland, and you're coming into a more rainy season. So. Here's Matt sitting there. Look, we're Matt finishing up, Matt, shortly. We've been going for five hours, 17 minutes. We're aiming to finish at the 5.20 before Jim's machine goes bang. <laughs> oh, please don't, don't jinx it. Please uh, yeah, survive for a couple of more years. Cam, Cam, the insurance companies are a load of bollocks. I quite agree with that one. Yeah. So, but yes, uh, Matt, what you need to do is catch it all up because we've talked books, some really good books. We've talked movies, TV shows. 
Oh, there's a lot you missed. But and we did a round trip through the the fantasy genres, as, yes, and we we, we landed in the more religious ones, so Good Omens and um, Neverwhere. Yes, and uh -huh. that that took us in on the detour to the Terry Pratchett world, which yes. is sort of back to sci-fi, uh, uh, fantasy. Fantasy, yeah. Um, so yes, we have actually done a trip of books and movies and stuff. Yes, yeah, a really good book. Oh, and you would uh, probably not believe that the, the spread on the the recommended films. We could not have been further apart from the four of us in terms of genres. Yes, that's true, because mine's was comedy. Yours was psychological thriller. Yes, yeah, psychological thriller horror. Yes. And Wayne's was... I'm trying to even remember. Th Thunderheart. Thunderheart so, is uh, basically a, a, a Sioux Indian journey story. Yeah. And then Sad Sadaku had the anime, the Japanese anime, Dirty... 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 No, Dirty... Dirty Pear. It's uh, something. Uh, I think the conversation went into 42 or something. After I really thought 42 because we were talking about other stuff. So 42 was the guy. Um, what was it? He sent me the link to it. Do, do, do. Where is it? Where is it? Um, I've got it written down anyway. But I'm sure it was, it was Dirty Pear. It was basically about a pair of anime characters and it's they're traveling. It's. I'm looking forward to that one, so I will actually check it out. But I've got it written down. I've put my book away. But yes, we went across the board, all different things: anime, horror, um, um, American Indian history type, and comedy, Roman. So we went across the board, and the books. We did cover a lot of books, even though we were talking about Red Dwarf, which I'm finishing on Wednesday. We were talking Wheel of Time, the TV show. We were talking about that. We were discussing the book. Oh, you've got a lot to catch up, Matt. And you've got a really good book, so just one book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just a, just a really, really good, good book. book right? <laughs> hey, we've got, we've all got books here. Look, we're even actually talking about encyclopedias of Wheel of Time. So we're there. But yeah, but Jim, thank you again for joining us. It has been a pleasure as always. Indeed, and it has. I'm hoping next week, once I finish the Red Dwarf, I think the first one after Red Dwarf is going to be a Judge Dread. And Matt's just popping on just before you finishing you, boy. Yeah, no, I, I just thought I'd show you the book that I got. Right, show us the book. Go ahead. Is that a dirty book? Arthur Asky, oh, you lucky so and so. I hang up. <laughs> and hang up. Yeah, oh, yeah, lucky. I thought you might like that one. Oh, yeah, come this week from Amazon. So oh, it's only it's very very thin. It's very thin. It's got a lot well, of pictures. Well, I'll, I'll need actually from keep an eye out for that one because if it's on Amazon. I'm definitely. Oh yes, I love Arthur Asky. Yeah, I got. Oh, gosh, I can't I yeah, I, I can't remember the name of the guy. There's another book in the series. Um, my dad actually mentioned him. Jimmy Edwards? Jimmy Edwards, yes. I've he never heard of him. He was a bigger yeah. character, big, uh, a forked beard. Yeah, he, he had a moustache. Like a a, bit, a like, big uh, um, curly yeah. mutton, mutton chops type thing, yeah. Yeah, so I got the book for my dad to uh, – because he, he just happened to mention that he – you know, the book like I got Jimmy from my dad was so Ricky like Fulton. My dad loved Ricky Fulton. Don't know that guy. Ricky but then Fulton. again, I didn't know who Jimmy Edwards was. Either. The Reverend I, I am that. Jolly. If you put in Ricky Fulton in Scotch and Rye, and basically Reverend I am Jolly, you'll see Ricky Fulton. He's, <sighs> right. uh, used to actually every every New Year, 
there was Scotch and Rye was the, the name of the show. And it was a tradition in Scotland to watch Scotch and Rye, Ricky Fulton. When he stopped doing it, the new year was never the same. But Reverend I Am Jolly is hilarious. Check him out. I will. I'll see this. But Matt was my dad's favourite, so I, I got him the Ricky Fulton story and he loved it. So he did. I've, um, I'm, 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 I've put, there was a, I was doing some research and um, there was a thing on eBay that I've put a bid in for and it's a bit of, it's a bit of merchandise from Arthur Askey, Askey's time. Uh-huh. And I was I like, like, you know you what, know I what? think I, I may I'm be able, able to, um, to, to get that. So <laughs> I thought, oh yeah, it might be cool. So yeah. yeah. Hopefully, well, I've it, got a day to wait. So hopefully, there won't be any. You know, suddenly, um, everybody just it's piling in. Yeah, yeah, I did yeah. the same. But basically, the that. ones that I'm bidding on at the moment are <coughs> Magic the Gathering. And I've got there's uh, two there's two ones on at the moment, and I don't think I'm going to win them because one of them is called Portal, and it's an old, old, old set and one booster pack. At the moment, it's at thirty-five pound and still. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, they climb quickly. Yes, England, they, they... England, England ends up being um, really expensive as far as postage is concerned as well. And sometimes you can end up paying more for the postage than you can yes, for the. But, but, that's, but that's with from... anything in Australia, though. Anything and, in Australia, well, I'm you the same if more. I buy anything from the states, it could double mm. the price because I know. And I bought. Duty. I bought something for. Oh, I wanted to buy something. Uh, I, I like Mars Attacks, and I went to go and buy a Mars Attacks thing that was like twelve dollars. It was twelve dollars Australian. I was like, oh, awesome! And then it cost like eighty dollars for postage, and I'm like, are you serious? Exactly. It's basically it's just silly. It's um, I'm the same. I'll buy something. That's what I'm saying. I bought that a dice box. It was designed. I got it designed. But it cost me twenty five pounds uk right and it's a couple of pounds so from the states because you got the design put into it and it was something like 30 dollars plus postage and the postage was only five dollars so i thought that's not too bad that's roughly 30 pounds when i got it it a post i let came through the post saying i had to pay import duty of 35 pounds so it doubled mm. the price, and I'm, I, I've I've never bought in from the states since because I'm not paying import duty. Yeah, is that like a VAT? Is it a VAT tax, something like that? No, it's a, it's literally it's anything I, imported from the states. What has import duty on it? Mm. And I don't know why they started doing that because I used to buy stuff from the states all the time, but they, yeah. re they started it and I stopped buying stuff from the states. Which is unfortunate because mm. there's some great stuff every time I look. I think, oh, I want that. I, I, I just get afford. through. I just get stuff through Amazon now if I want anything from the states. You know, um, there are also a couple of places where they are only uh, they're exclusive, and um, that was you had to buy them straight from the actual store to um, get them. So that's yeah, you know, and it, 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 but again, it costs more money for for postage than it did for the actual item, and that's where you you know you, you kind that of stumble. That is definitely where it feels. Anyway, yeah. I imagine you coming on just in the last five minutes because yeah, no, I just thought I'd just drop in. I I was well, I'm, I'm sorry, actually glad I was you up did. late that last book, night. Look, I, that book looks. I mean, I'm going to actually keep an eye out for that one because <laughs> if it pops up in my feed, then came uh, out last year. Came out last year. Oh, I would like to see it's, a hold of that one. From from Beer Manor Media dot com. Uh, um, just copy paste the ISBN number if it isn't too long. You can buy it on. Um, do you do you get uh, Amazon Kindle? Yep. Well, I've got. I, I've got <coughs> a Kindle, but no. If um, I, you can actually like get the a copy of it from Kindle. Yeah. For Kindle. Yeah. No, I've not got a Kindle. I don't need that. The guy read. actually, the guy that actually wrote the book actually spent, uh, stayed with the the family. 
Um, I think it was his. I think it was his great grandson. I think, or his grandson. It was might have been his grandson. Yeah. And um, yeah, to 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 you know learn everything get. and get photos and that. And I think I'll need to actually definitely check that one out. I'm sure it'll be. I'm, I'm, I've got an Amazon account, so I'll check the Amazon. So. Um, yeah. Gonna... Well, um, another thing that I got. <laughs> uh, I bought the secret you got deck. The... <laughs> no, the sequel. This is the number two. Yeah, I, said, I, I, I was I spent my time with yeah, it's it's literally it takes up like five seconds after the first film. So um yeah, it's 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 really good. Yeah, so well, um the... and another one goes on the list. <laughs> yeah. I still have yeah. a wreck on the list from the last time. <laughs> so have I. Um the only the only ones I've managed to watch was Adjustment Bureau. I managed to get a hold of that. Somebody recommended Adjustment Bureau. Yeah, that, um, it, that was Ian. Yeah, and I got a hold of that. Mm. All I kept thinking all the way through is, well, I would step down. I wouldn't run to politics if that's what they're doing to me. I'll screw up their plans. That's all I kept thinking. That's what I would do, but I'm stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> so if they actually want to do that, well, I'll sit down and go and get a drink and just make sure I'm out of the running. Do you want to actually mess up my life? I'll mess up their plans. That's the way I was thinking I would do that. But then again, I'm a stubborn bugger. I'm Scottish after all. Yeah. Tells us what to do. And I'm an Australian. <laughs> uh, Nobody tells us what to do except my wife. I've been getting, actually, to be honest, I've been getting really riled up at all this crap that they've been throwing at Australia lately. Yeah, yeah I've seen and, that. Um, and I've, uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's all propaganda. It's all bullshit. And and they're using it to their advantage to try and prove a point. And the fact is that it's half that's it's half full of half truths, full completely and full problem. of half truths. People are actually putting a lot of information and, out there because that way you can use it whatever way you want. Yeah, and I'm watching a lot of these YouTubers and that you know use it as a, as a, a tool to. Um, you know, to get clicks, and it's really annoying the shit out of me. And some celebrities as well. Some celebrities, some American celebrities and that, I just want to, you know, deck them because, you know, it was like that they're just coming up with absolute bullshit. Yeah, because there's a rumour out there, and that uh, once the rumour's out there, then anything fits the narrative will go with the rumour. <clears throat> yeah. It's the same across the board. Scotland is bad. It's not as bad as other people are making out, but it is bad, but... It's... Well, we come right, and then then it gets to shit again because they they just don't think, you know. Yeah, because yeah, I mean, I've heard and we the, all suffer. I've heard the rumors know? that one case in Australia's lockdown. No, New Zealand. Is it New Zealand? Because of Thank you. You know yeah, we've just had um, nearly nine hundred, yeah, nine hundred um, people in Sydney today. So yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. There was my wife corrected me and says it's New Zealand. However, I says, yeah, I, I understand. However, and I showed her the article, and the article said Australia yeah. because they got it wrong. She blamed, she blamed, uh, it's actually Jacinda Ardern. She's she's a crazy, druggy um, politician, but like she's, she's, uh, she's just literally, she locked them all down and then she said she blamed Australia for it. And, that's, and it, that's that's how she got away with it, you know, the fact that she pulled it all locked down. And yeah, so she's that's what Scotland you know, doing. Scotland basically put you, uh, we're, we're locking this down, we're doing this, you're not doing that. Why are you doing that? It's not as it's the English uh, parliament that's doing it. Sorry, you've got your own rules and you're blaming them for what you're yeah. doing. It's that type of thing. I know it's crazy yeah. up here. But that's we're going to around it. basically, we're at five and a half hours. And guess what? Bursting for the loo now. All right. <laughs> I held can't it imagine. Uh, thanks I held for having me on anyway. Hey, I've had it held in for five and a half hours. I had a glass of milk. A glass I felt bad because I wasn't here last week. So, you know. Yeah, you know you're always welcome. You pop yeah, in anything. Thank you. But we literally we're, don't want things to break. And I am bursting five and a half hours. <laughs> I know it's like. I Thank you so much for the stream, guys. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have all my juice as well. Milk, apple juice, and I am brew, and I'm, I have my second bottle I am brew, and it's a case of I shouldn't do that when I'm streaming, or else I'll be streaming. 
Oh, you'll be streaming soon enough. (laughs) (laughs) But guys, thanks for having us, PJ. No problem, and um, thank you for joining us. And Jim, thank you for joining us. And I hope that camera gets fixed. I am working on it, but I think it might be my desktop computer. Yeah, I think what you need to do is see, there's a big thing called a mallet. See if you get that. I find that things suddenly stop stop working because they know fine well I'll take a hammer to them. It's amazing. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should move my toolbox a little bit closer to the to the computer just to give it a hint. Definitely. Look what you're getting, boy. But anyway, thank you again. And ladies and gents, thank you for joining us for such a epic stream. And remember, I'm not old, I'm classic, and PGA may be out and I'm going to try and do my outro before I, I finish so bye guys mm-hmm.